What's the most creepily intelligent thing your pet has ever done? When I lived with my ex we got a cat that would occasionally come make pitifully adorable tiny mews outside my bedroom door where my computer was when she wanted attention. Usually it was 50 over 50 wanting to be cuddled or wanting me to shake the food bowl so she couldn't see the bottom. One time she sounded a lot more urgent than usual. I went and opened the door and she ran off. Okay, not cuddles. I followed her down the stairs and she turned left into the dining room instead of right into the kitchen where her food was. Okay, what's up? She went to the middle of the floor and sat down, staring at a window. Took me a couple of seconds to realize the bird feeder usually suction cup to the outside was missing and she was very distressed about it. I went outside and put it back on the window and she jumped on the stool by the window to watch me do it. When I went back and I walked back into the dining room, she looked over her shoulder at me then jumped down, ran over, rubbed against my legs for a few seconds, then went back and jumped back on the stool again waiting for birds to show up. Edit she and the other two cats in the house were eating out of a pie tin. Can't get more shallow or wide than that without dumping the food on the floor. Quite often she just wanted us to stand there while she eats and watch her back. Not my dog, I have one, but he hasn't had any remarkable moment for now, but my neighbor's dog. He is old and frail and neglects him, even though he gave him a place to stay, he used to be a stray. He knows he won't get much food from his owner, if any, so he usually spends his days roaming the neighborhood and going to house to house. He knows specifically which neighbor will give him food and knows the precise time we all finished lunch. He used to frequent my grandma's house, waiting patiently at the front door for leftovers. If she didn't have any, he would leave with dignity, although he took a sheet in my grandma's garden as a revenge once. The most intelligent part though is his ability to sneak outside his fenced yard, and nobody knows how. Even with the gates closed, he would suddenly appear outside or inside. Once, I watched him closely as he was walking home to make sure I could see him. However, suddenly he stopped and looked at me, never breaking eye contact. I had to sneeze, and by the time I could look back at him, three faking seconds, he was back in his yard. The faker was clever to take the opportunity. He also is aware of the concept of traffic lights and pedestrian crosses over roads, as I've witnessed him multiple times waiting patiently for his light to turn green, so he could pass the street, and knows to look for cars any time he has to cross on an unmarked area. So I have this cat, Chairman Meow. He had to go live at my parents, because I was in the navy and my ship was deploying, and they started letting him go out, and come in as he pleased, which I was totally in favor of, he was getting chubby as an apartment cat. Then my mom started to notice something weird. Now, for context, she's in her 60s, and had just retired. My dad was still working for another year or two. With me and my brother grown and moved out, there was a lot of time home alone for her. Not that she didn't go out or have hobbies, but that's beside the point. What she noticed is that sometimes, she'd let the cat out, then 10 minutes later he'd walk by inside. She started worrying that she was having blackouts or suffering from something with early onset in the name or something. It was happening often enough that she started keeping paper logs. Then one day she went down to the finished basement for the first time in a while and stepped into a horror film like i said my brother and i had moved out and the basement was carpeted etc but was mostly being used to store stuff including apparently blood lots of blood staining the carpet dripping down a wall in the ceiling she even found a pile of entrails Turns out what was happening was, the cat had gotten up in the suspended ceiling, and found a loose brick in the foundation. He'd worked it loose. Being a cat, he still demanded humans serve him by opening the door, but he could go in and out as he pleased also. And he was bringing his trophies back into the basement. The entrails I mentioned? On closer inspection, it was a rabbit. Well, half a rabbit. And that's how my cat made my mom think she was losing her mind. Posted this before, not exactly creepy, but more damn they're smarter than we realize, but kind of in a good way. Used to live in a house with a long driveway, like approximate one eighth of a mile. Neighbor had a similar driveway right next to ours. 
I had two dogs, neighbors had some as well, both sets of dogs and fences pretty far apart, as far as I know the two groups never met this will matter later. Neighbors kept their dogs almost exclusively outside, kept mine almost exclusively inside, had a dog, Jidor and they basically only went out for bathroom. We'd sit in the den with the dogs all the time, and hear the neighbor's dogs bark. My dogs wouldn't react 95% of the time, wouldn't even lift their ears slash heads, would be like it wasn't happening, but if we could hear it obviously they could. But, in the 5% of times they would react, invariably it was, because someone was driving down my long driveway to our house. Always, without fail. Either a package or a friend visiting didn't matter, my dogs would react to their dogs barking a certain way, that meant someone's coming to your house not mine. And once we realized it was happening we pretty extensively tested it, saw multiple examples of their dogs barking for someone visiting on their driveway and our dogs ignoring it. So not just a bark that means someone is approaching, but differentiation between driveways that were side by side. That, my friends, seems a pretty sophisticated form of communication for over. I have a blind, born with faked up eyes, 150 pounds of solid muscle, American bulldog. He loves everyone. If he hears a new voice, the love wiggles begin. He is just a huge lover dog. Sleeps with my 4 year old every night. Gets along with my cats and other dogs. Just a giant sweetheart. Well, a work buddy of mine gave me a ride home once. Invited him in for a bit. We walk in. My pup starts his love wiggles. And stops. Ears fall. Tail droops. His expression changes from his usual happy-go-lucky self into the dog he looks like, a vicious monster. Well, he bears his teeth. Starts growling at my buddy, and when my son walked into the room, he went nuts. He lunged at my buddy, snarling, teeth barred. What the fuck? He never acts like this. Ever. I was so confused and embarrassed. My buddy leaves. I scold my pup. Life goes on. Fast forward a few months, and it turns out the buddy of mine from work is arrested for possession of Kitty Born. My blind beast who loves everyone, somehow knew to hate this guy. He instinctively disliked him. And when my son came into the room, he went into protect mode and tried to get the guy. Creepy stuff. My cat Nero recently passed away, but he was surprisingly intelligent. When my mom was sick, he stayed with her watching over her. He would put his paw on the younger cat's heads to keep them from annoying him. He basically had the neighborhood wrapped around his tail and would go visit an elderly woman who was sick and visit some other neighbors as well. He also brought over other cats to our home to make sure they were eating and taken care of. He also knew when I was upset and he'd come over and sit on my shoulder and just purr to comfort me. When we noticed he had a mess in his face, I asked him to show me and he did. I wish we found it sooner. I think the funniest and most intelligent thing was on the day he passed. Nero had a very aggressive cancer, hemangiosarcoma, and I honestly hope anyone who reads this never heard of it again, and due to it, he had a bleeding incident. My husband and I rushed him to the local emergency vet, and husband took a turn too hard and Nero popped his head out of the carrier to yell at him. He then grumbled to himself twice about my husband's terrible driving. He's been gone 3 months already. He would have been 16 this month. I miss him heaps. This cat had been rejected by his mother as a kitten, so my mom did what anyone would do, she bottle raised it, and she did it without the use of KMR. She had this cat years, before she had me. When she brought me home, he sniffed my car seat for 10 minutes, and decided I was his. He slept in my crib like a guard dog. If you were not direct family or trusted, you'd get ribbons for skin, if you tried to touch me without my mother's help. As I got older, he developed habits. He knew weeknight bedtime. At 7.30pm, this cat would appear at my playroom door, notifying me that it was clean up time. At 8, he would climb the steps ahead of me and go to my bedroom while I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth and wash my face. He would wait on my pillow until I went to sleep and then he'd go be a cat. By 7am, he'd be back on my pillow for when I woke up. When I started school, he paced when the school bus took me. My house had giant windows with a wrap around window sill. He paced the length of it all day, watching. When he saw the bus come back, 
he'd run to the front door. He eventually stopped getting so panicked and wouldn't pace, but he'd still greet me at the door. Cancer would take him when I was 6 and he was 18. This will get buried but it haunts me to this day, so in college like 20 years ago I had a philosophy class once a week at night. It was a 3 hour class and a lot of people took it because it freed up room during the day. That being said, almost everyone in the class would show up ridiculously high as the main subject was existence. So normally I would get a nice buzz with a friend in the class right before and then debate existence for 3 hours with stoners and a cool professor. Good times. Until I met Rebecca. Rebecca was an African grey bird. She was the beloved pet of a girl in class we will call Sally. We had been discussing self-awareness and how different animals have it or don't yada yada. So she's arguing hard for the animals a self-aware side of the discussion. She's like, you guys should meet my bird. So the professor is like, bring her in. Bird comes in for the next class. Rebecca greets everyone as they enter the classroom. Hi hey how's it going, that sort of thing. Class is amused. The professor starts class and Rebecca starts going what are you talking about? Sally? What is he talking about? The way the bird said it was so fucking weird. So Sally explains to the bird that it's a guest in a classroom. Then Sally says what are you, Rebecca? I'm a bird. What am I, Rebecca? Human. So as I mentioned we were all high and blown away, and then the bird does some tricks like naming the correct shape and color of things. All very cool. Then Sally says watch this. Sally steps out of the room. The bird starts freaking out. Where is Sally? Bring Sally back. Sally. Sally. We were all like Sally get your ass back in this room. Scared the sheet out of me. TLDR. Met an African grey while stoned in a philosophy class. Scarred for life over burb self-awareness. I was checking on my brother's dog since he was gone for a month. It was summer. Now, this dog is best doggo. Very smart and never barks. He sees me, welcomes me and goes up the stairs, standing halfway to the top. He watches as I water the plants and sort stuff up, and that he barks. A single bark, not too loud, but very uncharacteristic. What's up Kakarot? What's wrong? And he barks again, so I go up the stairs to check on him. As I do, he goes all the way up to the first floor and waits for me by my brother's room. I get up there, and he opens the door and gets in, so I follow. He sits in the middle of the room, looking up, looking back at me, and then back up, letting out a single bark. What's wrong Kakarot? And he does that again. Up, me, up, bark. And then it dawns on me. He is looking up to the ack. Do you want me to? Turn on. The ack? He looks back at me, back at the ack, back at me, and barks. Pretty sure this is what he wants. I turn it on for him. He yawns and stretches on the floor, very happy with himself. He's got an air-conditioned room all for himself. Kakarot knows how to speak, even if he can't articulate words, and has a good grasp on how his world operates. Kakarot is best doggo, and I love him. For such a seemingly goofy animal, my dog is scarily good at studying things people do, and then replicating the process. A few examples, she learned to unzip a tent by watching me close up the door before going to bed. I woke up to her with the zip pull in her mouth, opening the door. She popped out, did her business and shot back in because it was raining. Unfortunately she did not zip the door back up. She watched the way we open her wet food. It's like a plastic tray with a film lid and a cardboard sleeve. Came home one day to find her with a tray between her paws, gripping the tab on the film with her teeth and carefully peeling it back. The cardboard sleeve had also been removed intact. She did it with such precision when she could have just ripped it open. She hides her bones and toys from our other dog in the laundry basket or the bin. We always deter them from rooting in these places, so I guess her logic is that place forbidden to dog equals place other dog won't look for toys. She will also pickpocket and steal things from people's bags. I think this was something her previous owners taught her as she only does this when lots of other people are around like a party trick. She will then proudly display her loot. In another life she would have made an excellent therapy dog, but she's my little troublemaker and I love every second with her. This is actually my friend's pet. I hope it counts. TLDR at the end. 
On mobile. Myself and two friends were house sitting for a mutual friend and her then boyfriend about 15 years ago. We were all in the post-university hangover, at least I was, one had dropped out years prior, and one just told people he went to university. They had a lovely dog and a grumpy very old cat, I forget how old, but over 20 years, and we were just happy to live for a weekend in a nice downtown townhouse. We were told to walk the dog, but don't bother the cat. The cat will just sleep on our bed, and the food and water bowl is in there, it doesn't like people. Over the course of the weekend, I was walking to the washroom, past the bedroom, I hovered at the door, thinking grumpy, whatever, maybe I should try to pet it, or at least make sure it's not dead. As soon as I took one step beyond the threshold, it immediately screeched to syllables at me. I stopped dead in my tracks in disbelief, and then tried to reconcile what I heard with what I think the capabilities are of this super old cat. What the f did this cat just tell me to fack off? It then raised its head and turned around without getting up and just glared at me. I shook it off went to the washroom and didn't say a thing because I'm clearly crazy. This happened to me three more times. Incredibly crude but yet unmistakable fuck off finally near the end of the weekend. My one buddy comes back downstairs laughing to himself. I swear that cat is telling me to fuck off. He says still smirking to himself. Myself and my other friend freeze in place and look at him. I break the silence. So we all have heard this, right? We all nod. The owner gets home. We explain we broke a dish and dishwashed some glasses that weren't meant to be dishwashed. Also, haha, your grumpy ancient cat keeps telling us to fuck off, haha. The owner casually, while doing other things in the house oh yeah, the cat talks. I don't know where it picked up so many swear words though, me, and, my partner, don't really talk like that much. This was early 2000s, I wish we had a recording of it. TLDR old grumpy cat tells interlopers to fuck off, pretty regularly, crude, but unmistakable. My dog has done a few he has anxiety and there was a storm, while we were at the stables, and he was having a tough time. He kept pacing in the barn. Not a smart move with all the horses inside, I sat and have him a hug at one end of the barn, to help calm him down. It worked a little, and he went to lay down. In the middle of everything, I looked at him, and said you know you can't lay there, if you need a little time out to feel better, you can go in the tack room a small room, where we keep all the saddles and bridles, etc. I was mostly kidding, and was just going out go lay him down in there myself, but he got up on his own, went into the tack room and laid down. I never taught him what the tack room still at the barn. So there's a riding ring, and I taught the dog that he's not allowed in, if I'm riding which he's great about. But the impressive part is he has a stick. Not just any stick. That's his stick. And he keeps it up in the field outside the fence of the riding ring, to occupy himself while I ride. He doesn't bring it down, he doesn't use it any other time. But when we go up to the ring he beelines for his stick, and just chews it while I ride. It's been the same stick for about 2 years, he's not a strong chewer, and it was big from the beginning. The really crazy part is one time another dog brought it down. Not only was my dog a little upset, but got the stick back, and then put it back in the field last, but not least, if anyone is still reading. The same dog that took his stick once barked at one of the horses which is a big no-no. My dog left his post up near the ring to run across the fields to push the dog over then bark at him to say we don't do that then ran back up to chew that stick some more. My parrot was very clever. He liked to wave his foot in time with the classical music we left playing on the radio. Kind of like he was conducting the orchestra. My mother noticed this when she was, was hosting her grand bird at her home, while we were painting the inside of her house, because she left classical music playing to keep him company, while she went about her day. He also knew certain words for certain things. He wanted out of his cage. Tch 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 We did this to the cats, step up, when he was about to step onto a hand. There ya go, when we placed him back in, or on top of his cage. Om nom nom, when we were eating, or if he was begging for a treat. Give a cookie? Om nom nominative. Funniest thing ever, though, we are sure just had to be coincidence. When we first got him, to spend time with him, and get him used to being handled by us, I would play got your beak with him. 
gently grab his beak between my fingers, not unlike stealing a little kid's nose, and say I got your beak. I added in wing, foot, tail, head and tummy, gently touching the spot in question. He would actually sit there in his cage, reach up with a foot, grab his own beak, and said I got your beak, grab I got your wing, grab I got your tail, grab I got your head, grab I got your tummy. And then he would laugh. Ah ha 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 ha. It was a slightly exaggerated, slightly maniacal laugh. He would also reach out and touch our hand or our face if he was perched on a shoulder with his outstretched upper beak and say I got your beak and chuckle. He'd fluff out the feathers on his head to show his happiness. But one night, we were watching TV and changed the channel to see Fee, where they were playing some low-budget, medieval-era movie with a battle scene around the castle. Bird has been quiet thus far. Suddenly, the villain is beheaded, and this awful rubber prop head is seen bouncing down the stairs of the castle. Bert, who has been mostly quiet in his cage, suddenly barks out I got your head. Ah ha ha. I was playing on my computer later one night and had my headphones on. I closed my bedroom door and proceeded to watch a movie. During that time, my other flatmate went to sleep in the room next to me, while my third flatmate, with a room in the other side of the house, was making dinner. As she was making dinner, she went back to her room to do something, and her dinner caught fire. She was known to leave the stove on from time to time, and it was only a matter of time before she left something on the stove while leaving it on. It happened that night. So, a fire started in our kitchen and smoke started filling the house. This was also the day we discovered our fire alarms weren't working. My cat then proceeded to hang outside mine, and my other flatmate's doors meowing, scratching, and banging our doors until one of its heard him. It was my flatmate that hard first and went to the hallway to see smoke everywhere. He then came into my room and got my attention and we ran to the kitchen and defused the pan of rice. That was an inferno. We both yelled at our flatmate and ended up moving out that year. But the next day, aside from new smoke alarms, I bought a climbing frame jungle gym for my cat that he never uses. Thanks buddy. I have no idea what would have happened if you didn't wake my flatmate up. Once upon a time I owned a dog that was a genuine Houdini escape artist. The big goofball would stop at nothing to escape from the big fenced in backyard, just so that he could come up on the front porch and stare at us through the glass front door. It would have been really sweet if we didn't live on a busy street and there was such a risk of him getting hit by a car. Anyway, at one point my dad got fed up with the dog getting out all the time and bought one of those invisible fence things with the buried wire and the collar that sends an electric shock if you cross the wire. Dad spends all afternoon installing it. It was a pretty big backyard, but as soon as he comes inside and sits on the couch, whose goofy face face is staring at him through the glass door, the goofus himself. Now, of course this confused us as Rusty, the dog in question, was a huge wuss and would yelp if you step near his feet, so we were pretty sure he didn't just bowl through the shock collar zapping him. Only one way to figure out what was going on. Stake out. My dad and I look through a back window that has a pretty good view of the backyard to watch Rusty perform his magic and saw the most thought out and logical process I have ever seen from a dog. The kind of collar that we used had a safety feature where, if you got close to the buried wire, it would begin beeping to warn you that a shock was coming if you keep going. Well Rusty figured that one out right quick because he would walk up to where the collar started beeping and then he laid down and took a nap. Eventually, the batteries in the collar would die from making it beep and when the beeping stopped he could just walk across and jump the fence per normal. But how did he didn't stop there? After the collar stopped beeping, Rusty had the wherewithal to dig up the wire that was buried and bite sections out of it so that the electrical circuit was broken and it wouldn't work anymore. He then buried the sections of wire throughout the yard to make them hard to find. Then he hopped the fence and came bounding up on the front porch to slobber on the glass door. To this day I don't know what James Bond spirit my dog was channeling in order to pull off that escape, but I never saw him do anything that intelligent again. Not really intelligent, but I had a cat that was a vicious mass murderer. He was bigger than all the others with long teeth and long claws. We lived out in the country and took in all strays. I got moors as a kitten. 
This kitten was not your typical domesticated cat. He attacked other cats. At a young age, he was already trying to bang the female cats. He would stash his trophies on the roof and fight any other cat that went up there. Even our dogs respected him. He fought alongside the dogs when wild dogs and coyotes would show up in the night. He'd get pretty faked up sometimes. Some days I'd have snakes at the back door left for me. One time he left a half-eaten fish at my door. I don't know how the fuck he caught a fish, so I have to assume the neighbors. One morning I walked out to several dead baby rabbits. The next morning I walked out to a dead mama rabbit. The real kicker was when he woke me up at about 5am meowing really loud. He was super faked up, a bloody mess, missing hair patches, missing part of his face, claws missing, teeth missing, just a total train wreck. We took him to the vet and the vet said it was most likely a raccoon, and by his condition, he's probably lucky to be alive, and that he didn't understand why a raccoon would fuck his world up like that. We kept s'mores indoors for several weeks to bring him back to full health and finally let him outside. The next faking morning s'mores shows up half dead and a sheet you not, smiling, through bloody teeth and a disfigured face, next to a dead raccoon on our porch. We took him back to the vet and he didn't believe the story until we showed him pictures. S'mores kept killing things and fucking sheet up for the next year until one day he never showed. I can only imagine there's something immortal out there stalking those East Texas woods cause S'mores was nigh invincible. None of his spawn were as big or aggressive as him either. He was truly a one of a kind warrior. Last October 30th, my dog found my stash of Halloween candy. I came home from work that day to find an empty bag of fun size Kit Kat bars in the den, along with just 3 wrappers. The bag had contained 35 bars. So, I did some quick calculations on whether this situation required an emergency vet visit. It didn't. Then I hunkered down for an evening with a sick dog. When she doesn't feel well, my Sheltie usually cuddles up to me and just sleeps it off. But this time, she just walked off and wandered the house. I checked on her to make sure she wasn't getting sick somewhere. She wasn't. About an hour later, she returned with a single, still wrapped mini Kit Kat bar in her mouth. She dropped it right at my feet. This returned candy was, of course, duly confiscated from her. About an hour later, it happened again, and again, throughout the night. Clearly she had hidden her stash of candy somewhere in the house. When I tried to follow her, she just looked at me like, what? As if she were saying, I'm just aimlessly wandering throughout the house. I have no trove of contraband. Why are you following me? For a full 24 hours, I tried to find her stash, unsuccessfully. Still, like clockwork during her waking hours, she continued to bring me one intact candy bar every hour or so. This lasted through the end of Halloween night. I raised a cat from kitten to adulthood, and we were very attached to each other. He would cry at night if I wasn't home and slept with his arms wrapped around my neck, purring the whole night through. This cat and I were nearly inseparable. Unfortunately he died at age 9 of a stroke. I was home alone, caring for him after his first. We had no idea it was strokes until the second one, which killed him. We were convinced he had just hurt himself and that's why he wasn't using his legs. The vet found nothing wrong with him after his overpass visit. When he did pass I was sobbing on the floor, all I could do was watch. I desperately wanted to take his suffering away from him, but couldn't do a thing. After what seemed like an eternity I looked to my left, and my father's cat had been sitting by my side the entire time. That I wailed bloody murder as my own cat died. The next night he snuggled me on the couch, just as my own cat would have. He frequently would check on me in my own room afterwards as well. His behavior totally changed from family cat to therapy cat overnight. I'm not sure how I would have coped without his intelligence and empathy. My parents dog, Issa is a Boseran, so she's fairly big, but she likes to lay in my lap to cuddle. That being said, I have a really bad knee that can be really painful, so she has learned to cuddle on my lap while not touching my bad knee at all. She knows it's bad and avoids it very carefully while being completely hyper and cuddly. She knows how to use her body weight to pin me down on the couch for snuggles without putting any pressure on my knee. She is very careful while still being a full contact pupper. 
She'll even sit on my good foot when I'm standing so I can lean on her without my cane and use both hands to pet slash scratch her ears slash etc. She does occasionally like to lick my knee brace and look at me. I'm certain she's checking on it to see how I'm doing. One of my rats, Snowflake, has also taken to giving me her food if I haven't eaten in a while. Their cage is right next to my desk, so if I haven't eaten in a while, I'll catch her staring me down and throwing her food at me through the cage. She's also taught me to play fetch, that is she hides the ball and wants me to grab it and give it back to her so she can hide it again. This happened two days ago. I let my dogs out in the yard several times a day. They are trained to stay in the yard and very good about it. People think we have an invisible fence because they are so well behaved about it. That being said, I still worry about people or other dogs causing a stir when they are out, so I'm always in my little office off the garage with the door open so I can hear what's going on outside. So day before yesterday Odin starts woofing in the front yard. Just a quick woof woof. His little buddy Kato is a beagle and would normally be the one howling at the moon if something was going on, but he's not making a sound, so I'm not all that worried. Next Odin runs into the garage, gives me a woof woof then runs back out front. Woof woofs again, runs back into the garage, woof woofs and runs out again. Now I start to worry a little bit and get up to go look. Odin is running back and forth along the property line of or next door neighbor giving his woofs. My elderly neighbor, Bill, is lying on his side in his driveway and not moving. Long story short, Bill wasn't badly injured, but had tripped and fallen, and couldn't get up by himself. His son and I got him up, and into the house and he's fine. Odin is a hero. He recognized that Bill was in trouble, and came and got me to help. Kato the beagle is useless. A few that come to mind. My Malamute. 4.5 years, randomly decided to help me get my 10 month old German Shepherd inside, when he won't come in, he loves being outside, if he's out in the yard and won't come, she'll pretend to juke toward him, so he starts running toward her, then she immediately turns around, and runs in the door, and he follows her in. A few years back I had some chinchillas, took them in, since my sister's friend couldn't keep them when she moved. I had a tall converted bird cage I used as a cage for them, since it had lots of ramps, stairs, perches, etc. for them to climb. The smaller of the two kept escaping. One night I had enough, and when I put him back in the cage, I stood around the corner and watched to see if he'd try to escape again. I saw him lift up, with his paws, the little doors that were intended to be where food trays for bird would be slid. When I was growing up we had this super smart and loyal black lab. My dad had worked really hard with her to make sure she was well behaved and trained. One winter, when we had a foot of snow on the ground, my parents told me to go get the paper. I thought I'd just see how if went if I told the lab to go get it. To my surprise, she ran straight to the end of the driveway, grabbed the paper, and brought it right back to me. I went and told my dad what happened, and he insisted he never taught her to do that cat again. We had a black cat who was the smartest non-human I have ever had the pleasure to meet and love. Some examples. To get us up in the morning, she would make noise. First she tried flicking the metal spring door stops. When we got used to that and continued to sleep she would go into the bathtub, grab the suction cup bath mud with her teeth, and rip it upwards, repeatedly. Once she came in from outdoors and was looking left and right. I told her our other cat was in the basement, and she made a beeline for the stairs. She understood me perfectly. We had a no mice in the house rule. Once she came in with a live one in her jaws, just to show us what a good hunter she was. When I reminded her of the rule she dropped the mouse which scurried into our basement. She refused to go after it, so it took us days to catch it in a trap. When she was a kitten we had a small water pistol to try to convince her not to scratch the furniture. The pistol was only about 3 inches long. About 2 weeks after getting it, it disappeared. We found it several years later hidden under a low work shelf in our basement. This is only a small sample. I think she understood several hundred words. My wife and I love that girl. She passed away in 2010. My parents have a pair of young Siamese cat siblings who are way too smart for their own good. 
they figured out how to open doors, how to open Tupperware, how to dig out Christmas presents mom has bought for my cats and kept hidden from them, and recently they've taken to tracking down wherever their treats are. Mom gets the treats a few different flavors at a time, but usually only opens one bag and uses it up till it's gone and opens another, it doesn't take long. The cats got wind of the treats being on top of the refrigerator, so they would hop on the counter then up to the top of the fridge and treat themselves. As clever as they are they haven't figured out how to dispose of the evidence yet so their shenanigans are figured out when everyone gets home from work. So mom decides she'll put the treats in a high cabinet. Sure enough the cats open the cabinet and get the treats out. Mom thinks up the smart idea to put the bags of treats in a cookie tin how could you open that up if you don't have thumbs? Sure enough the little bastards found a way and were so proud of themselves that they decided to put a hole in every bag to sample each of the flavors and spread them all across the kitchen floor. Last I heard mom and dad resorted to keeping the treats in a tin that is then reinforced with multiple bungee cords. I have not asked if the cats have figured that out yet just because mom seemed a little exasperated by it or when last we spoke. I have a couple stories about my r slash Australian Shepherd. The first is about his kennel. I've always trained him that his kennel was always a safe place. Well one day he comes to my room and lays down facing away from me. I'm not paying attention, but I keep hearing a scratching sound. Eventually I get up to inspect and see that he's tearing apart a roll of toilet paper. I take it from him and scold him until he goes to his kennel, at which point I promptly stop. It's his safe space. As punishment, though, I lock it and make him stay there for maybe 15, 20 minutes. After I let him out, he leaves the room about 5 minutes later he comes back in and goes straight into his kennel and lays down. A bit suspicious, I check him out. He got another roll of toilet paper to chew up. He went to his kennel because he knows it is safe and I won't scold him there. For the second story, I had trained my dog to find the remote for the television since I always lose it. I'm looking for the remote one day and ask him to find it. He begins searching the floor, by the bed, around my computer, but neither of us can find it. I give up and go back to what I'm doing. He leaves the room. Shortly after, I remember where the remote is and retrieve it, but it is dead. He returns 5 minutes later and puts his head on my lap. I pet him, then realize he has a remote. He went to the living room, remembering seeing remotes there, and brought me one of those. The best part is that the remote is compatible with my TV so it works. Like, 5 years later I get a new TV, and I'm looking for the remote. He's never seen this one, but still finds it on the floor, and brings it to me, despite how different it is from the older one. This dog knows what's up. Alright, story time from a vindictive pet. A year or so, after being married I couldn't find my wedding ring anywhere it is usually on the bedside table. When I go to sleep every night, figured it was around, or on the floor somewhere. I had to rush to work, so I figure I would look afterward, at night. I couldn't find it at all. Searched every possible place in the house. Looked in covers of bed, under rugs, upstairs, couch cushion chair, sink, dog's crate, nowhere. Cat saw me looking for this the entire time by the way. So wedzam after a lot of lost sleep, I woke up early, did the same search again, looked at places I had already been, still nothing. Took a shower upstairs, I felt defeated and horrible, I told my wife I couldn't find it it's insured, I could get a new one made that day. I went down to put on my shoes, and on the bed, in plain sight there it was. The faking golem cat placed it back on the bed sheets and stole it the entire time. He knew I was looking for it and wanted to see me stress out, found out what I was looking for and give it back. That same morning and the night before, I completely tipped over the bed looking if it fell on the box frame where it appeared and where the cat put it. There is absolutely no way I would have not seen it. Evil smart cat. Still have not found his private stash of treasure in my house and a lot of shiny stuff has gone missing over the years. This was a comment on someone else's comment, but I thought I would add it here. We had a dog that would only drink from the tub faucet. It started because my parents would lock her in their bedroom at night with them while they slept. 
Sometimes she would want to go drink water from her bowl in the kitchen at like 3 a.m. So my parents being half asleep and lazy would just turn on heat tub and let her hang her head over and drink from the faucet. She was a large dog. Russian Wolfhound. One night my parents hear the creaking of the faucet handle and the familiar sound of the tub water running. They realize they are both still in bed. When my dad cautiously, a little creeped out at this point, creeps into the bathroom he sees our dog drinking out of the faucet that she turned on herself. She never drank from her bowl again, and she almost flooded the house a few times when the tub drain was left closed on accident. Part of how sitting for my rents meant that you had to constantly go into their bedroom bath to keep shutting off the tub water all day and night. If you shut the water off on her, while she was still drinking from the faucet she would glare at you, and then snottily turn the water back on again. So we have a bunny we took in a year or so ago, abandoned in the forest nearby. Quirky little guy, used to be very skittish, but he's grown much more comfortable with me and my family. Admittedly, it took probably two days for him to start acting like he owns the place, but now he doesn't cheat himself and bolt under a bed when someone sneezes. He roams the house and has favorite hangout spots around the place, places where he can get sunlight or watch us or catch some sleep. One thing we've noticed is that he loves to participate. When my mum's ripping up documents before recycling them, he'll sit right beside them and rip up papers with his teeth. My dad will be tidying a room, and he'll be picking things up in his mouth, and dragging them to random corners. So the other day I came home with a really bad headache, and my mom noticed me looking around for some Advil. She offered to massage my scalp, like she does for my dad sometimes, I know, my mom's awesome. While I'm sitting there, my mom's sitting on a chair behind me, I see Bunny sitting on a carpet a few feet away, facing us. I try to call him over, but he's in full potato mode. Pick me a snowy. Come here. I'll give you a back rub too. Snowy, stare. Come. No? Okay, you can sit there too. Single ear twitch after a bit my headache disappears, so I thank mom and get up. And as I head off, Snowy gets up and runs to my mom. She's about to get up, so he stands up and puts his paws on her knee. Mom, okay, okay, you get one too. He sits beside her, and she starts petting him. He gets all flat and comfortable, and his eyes slowly close cause he's loving it. He was waiting his turn. This was several years ago, but my parents had a black lab named Shadow and they were dog sitting my sister's dog named Chili, a Great Dane. They were both getting old, but loved running outside, so I decided to take them on a long walk up the mountain near our house. There were all kinds of dogs who lived up the hill. Shadow was cautious, but Chili was dumb and brave. I packed my pockets full of rocks to toss at any dogs who would chase us. For animal lovers who think this is mean, I never threw them to hit the offending dogs just near their feet to scare them. And how we are almost to the top of the mountain, and it seemed like everyone there had a German Shepherd that could have messed our dogs up. Chili kept trying to fight while Shadow would stick to my side. Anyhow, we got past the dogs and Chili took off before I could grab him. He went for a pack of dogs that looked ready to kick his ass. Shadow, despite being an old wimp caught up to Chili and immediately grabbed his leash and pulled him back to me, not stopping until the leash was securely in my hand. Chili was fighting the whole time to get away, but Shadow never let go. It shouldn't have surprised me, considering Shadow could open doors, but it really did. His situational awareness and knowledge to go for the leash still impress me to this day. And for the record I'm not a dog lover at all. I'm a cat person, but that dog was a blessing from God, and so full of love it was impossible not to like him. My dog, Brandy, has always been very well behaved since the day I brought her home. In 7 years, she's had two accidents inside, one of them was when we moved, and the other was when an old apartment flooded and we had to move all of the furniture and stuff into the kitchen. I say that just to highlight that she's a real good girl that knows dogs aren't supposed to go to the bathroom inside. My sister's dog, Rooney, however is a little sheet and cheater. He does the excited peeing thing, where he pees all over your feet when you first get to their house, and he has accidents inside very regularly. The first Thanksgiving I had brandy, we were all at my parents house for the holiday, and left the dogs in the kitchen, 
tile floor, while the rest of us were all in another part of the house hanging out. All of a sudden Brandy starts barking up a storm, so naturally we went to see what was going on. We walk into the kitchen to see a nice, fresh, little pile of poo sitting in the middle of the floor. Brandy is still barking up a storm, looking at the pup, and then over to Rooney, with a look that clearly said, it was him, not me. I was so proud of her, that not only did she not embarrass me by having an accident, she tattled on her cousin, to make sure we all knew it was him. Yes, she got some turkey. Attempted murder by intentionally leading his victim into the middle of a swamp, and leaving them for dead. First, let my explain a little backstory of old Captain Briggs, Labrador Retriever. He had to have been one of the smartest dogs ever and very clever. We got him when I was 10 and trained him as a hunting dog or at least he started out that way. Eventually we allowed him into the house and then he was basically a house dog, but he was very well trained. Stealthy and cunning, it was as if he always knew exactly what was going on in the house, where everyone was, who was coming down the driveway, and especially where the unguarded pizza was sitting on the counter. I'd seriously check three times, if he was in the room, and then somehow he'd be right there, and this dog was 100 plus lbs of raw muscle, so he wasn't a little sneaker. Turn your back on him and boom, your sandwich was gone. Briggs reigned as king of the house for 8 years, before we got a second dog, a female lab named Ruby. We got her as a tiny little pupper, and she was so damn cute. All around she was a great dog, but she lacked one thing. Intelligence. I don't know what it was, but she was not smart. Running into doors, getting stuck under chairs. She just found herself in all sorts of predicaments. Now Briggs hated her. He never showed aggression or bore his teeth. But you could tell he didn't like this little imbecile following him around. He constantly walked away from her, or tried to outmaneuver her, or would jump into the back of dad's pickup w slash the tailgate down, a height that she could not reach. This was his only escape from her constant nipping and playfulness. He just didn't like it. So our house was seated on 48 acres of wetland property, only about 8 acres were grassy, the rest all swamp. We could barely ride four wheelers out to the middle it was thick. We really didn't ever need to chain the dogs up either. Before Ubi, we'd let Briggs outside, and if he wanted to wander he would, but he mostly kept watch on the front porch. He'd always be there in the morning, and we'd let him in and out whenever he wanted, he had a bell that he rang. Anyways, one day, Briggs did something he didn't normally do. He let Ruby catch up to him. He toured her around the yard for a while playful with her, like he had never been, and you could tell it's all she ever really wanted, but deep down he was plotting. Scheming. Eventually, he had her follow him out into the swamp, and he let her get stay close as they pushed out into the thickest part of the swamp, where there was a small clearing. This island in the middle of the swamp was to be Ruby's eternal grave. Or so Briggs thought. Briggs, with his super dog intelligence, purposely lead poor little innocent Ruby out into the middle of the swamp, and left her for dead. As soon as she wasn't looking, he bolted out of the swamp. So there we were outside, and we see Briggs, but we don't see Ruby. We of course ask Briggs, and he does a dog shrug, and goes to his favorite spot on the front porch with a sneaky dog grin. My dad listens closely, and could faintly hear Ruby crying for help in the distance and we realize that she has no idea how to get home because she was focused on following Briggs. Before jumping on the four-wheeler, my dad signals to Briggs to come with him out into the swamp, a request that would normally be followed with Briggs' eager enthusiasm, is instead ignored as this saving private Ruby mission goes against his motives to dispose of her. So dad goes it alone and heroically saves Ruby from her demise all the while, Briggs sat on the porch thinking how he almost got away with murder. My cat is creepily smart, sometimes it freaks me out. Like sometimes when I ask him if he wants a treat and he nods. He also knows lots of commands like, sit, up, down, and if you say, can I have a kiss, he sticks his head up to your face until you kiss him on the head. We didn't teach him that, he just started doing it one day. He can open doors, and the only place the cat treats are safe from his marauding ways are in the microwave. He hurt his throat once, and meowed really hoarsely for a while. I gave him lots of soft treats, because I felt bad for him, and now whenever he wants treats he does that hoarse sounding meow again, to try to trick me into thinking he's sick. 
it's been like 4 years, and he still does it. The first time I realized how smart he is, was the day he escaped from a house, and got stuck up in a tree. We didn't have a ladder, and it was late at night, and I was freaking out as to how I would get him down. He was probably 20 feet up and there was no way I could climb that high. My sister and I grabbed a blanket, and held it under the tree like firefighters and that little faker jumped down onto it like something out of a cartoon. I've never seen a cat do something like that before, it's like he knew that, if he jumped on the ground he could get hurt, but that jumping on the blanket would break his fall. Not my dog, but I was always amazed by this story, a buddy of mine had a really big yard and a big golden lab. The dog would spend almost all its time outside so instead of fencing the entire yard, they had bought an invisible fence that came with a shock collar. For those who don't know, basically, you set up posts around your yard to make a perimeter and the dog gets a shock if he gets too close to the edge of the yard. This particular system was pretty advanced and would beep at an increasing rate the closer you got to the line. Basically, your dog didn't get random shock because it learned that if they hear the beep they have to turn back or they get a shock. One morning, my buddy is lounging around and he hears an increasingly fast beeping sound. He looks out the yard and his dog is standing far away in the yard, inching closer to the edge of the fence. The beeping is practically just a constant bee at this point. The dog sits down and waits. Curious, my buddy decides to see what happens. After maybe 10 minutes, the collar stops beeping, and the dog immediately gets up and runs out underscore of the yard past the invisible fence. The faking dog figured out that he can kill the battery of his collar by making it beep long enough. Might be a bit late to the post, but here it goes. My girlfriend and I went on a weekend vacation and left the cat alone in the apartment. Our front door has a deadbolt and a latch. The latch can only be locked from the inside. Think similar to a bathroom stall latch. Needs to be pulled down, slid toward the door, then pushed up. When we got home at 1 in the morning I unlock the deadbolt and go to push the door open. And to my surprise, it doesn't. I double check the deadbolt is unlocked and it is. Meaning the latch is locked. My mind starts racing that someone broke in and locked it as not to be disturbed during the act. The last thing I could think of was the cat did I. I call our maintenance staff who is a little over an hour out and in my mind I still don't know how he would get the door open besides taking the door off completely. During this whole time we can hear the cat meowing on the other side of the door. After about 45 meters I can hear her jumping at the door and hitting the latch. I decided to check the door and it opens. The cat managed to lock the latch, knocking it down, and siding it over, then unlocking it after a while. To this day I still believe she locked it, she watched his do it every night, because she was mad then after our punishment of waiting, unlocked it for us. Also it was fun telling maintenance never mind, and it was the cat all along. I have a cat that thinks it's a dog, but that's beside the point. He doesn't want my dad's dogs next door to be happy, and they hate him, so he'll follow me everywhere outside, at my heel, then sit just out of range of the dogs, while they go absolutely batshit. He does this for sheets and giggles as often as possible. Also, he loves to perch on my computer desk whenever I'm working on something, but absolutely hates the smell of cigarette smoke, so if I light one, he jumps down and takes the couch. We have a rudimentary form of communication, so he'll chirrup or meow if he needs water or food and yowl at the door if someone's pulling up. Lately, he's taken to doing one of the two, waiting for me to get up, and while my back's turned he steals my lighter and hides it. So, I started having extra lighters stashed. He escalated matters two weeks ago by taking the whole faking pack of smokes and hiding them. To anyone that wants to beach about my smoking, please just save it. Smokers are self-aware. We know it's bad for us, and the effects of secondhand smoke. My dad has cancer for fuck's sake. I know what the fuck I'm looking forward to if I don't quit, and don't need a lecture I haven't already gotten from 50 million other people. Thanks. I have had plenty of intelligent animals through the years. Prince German Shepherd was very protective over me according to my parents. Any time an adult came near my playpen he would get extremely defensive. Or a cat, he would play fetch with his favorite toys. 
One day my dad noticed him bringing the water dish closer to the dry food dish and Aurea would pick food up with his paw, dunk it into the water and eat it. This is how we found out he had a tooth infection. At night if my dad stayed up too late he would pull on his pant leg to get him in bed. In the morning, if he missed his alarm Aurea would wake him up by bopping his head. If he still didn't wake up, he would pop in the shower to tell my dad he's got to wake up. He even knew when my dad had off the next day. Violet cat, whenever I would sing she would come up and bite my nose and make me stop, my voice can raise the dead. At sunset she would also start biting my dad because she wanted to play with the reflection from his watch. Bubbles cat had ways of stealing food from you and you wouldn't notice. Her signature move was running around the room to distract you to pull the meat from a sandwich or bopping your mouth until food came out. EI or cat, Tigger's brother. Passed away at 4 years old, blood disorder, caused nasty seizures. When he knew he was going to have a seizure he would relocate himself to the floor with towels and have his seizure there so he wouldn't mess the couch. He also knew how to tell time. Even when he was at his worst 5pm was dinner time and daylight savings didn't screw with him. Loki was very standoffish to humans until Aurea passed away. My dad was extremely depressed and Loki warmed up to my dad to take care of him. Only my dad though. He also pulls food out of the bowl like Aurea, but mostly because when his sisters eat, they take up too much space, so he just gets what he wants. And last but not least, Macau. I found her when I was living away 3000 miles away from home. On the drive back home, it was just me and her. I would nap in the car, and if someone came near, she would cry and wake me up. One nap she was really going crazy, but no one was around. This was in Oklahoma, and I napped again. Five minutes later she starts again, and I turn on the radio and there was a tornado warning where I was. We took shelter, everything was okay, but damn cat saved my life. A few times my dog wouldn't leave me alone to the point where I cursed at her because she was being so goddamn annoying to find out the cat had gotten out. Felt like a first rate as hole. Now I listen to her all the time, but she gets back at me once in a while and freaks out over absolutely nothing other than that she wants a treat slash is hungry. She even stomps her front paws and does this weird mouthy thing where you hear her inhaling like she's going to bark but doesn't. My younger dog used to slip out from underneath the temporary fence we had and go screw around in the creek behind our house and I one day figured out that he could tell when the back door was being opened and would run up the bank underneath the temp fence as if he had been in the yard the whole time. He was soaking wet though which was always his tell. Then there's the cat whom I've caught doing some insane sheet when he thought no one was looking such as pushing open the window screen to slap the dog in the face from inside the house. He has also been known to stick his paws underneath doors in an attempt to pry them open. Several times he put his paws under my bedroom door and literally shook it to get my attention because he needed his litter box cleaned. I live in a house with creepily intelligent animals. My dog was good friends with one of the dogs down the street named Sadie. Sadie was a really sweet Labrador retriever with a panshan for jumping the fence when the owner was away, so her owner used to keep her tied up in the backyard, close to the gated entrance to the yard. One day, my dog just started going nuts for no particular reason, pacing back and forth by the front door, alternating between whining and barking at us. She was clearly trying to urgently get outside, but we had no idea why she had never acted like this before. So I open the door and she immediately bolts out and makes a beeline for Sadie's house. I look over and I can see why. Sadie is dangling over the fence by her rope and is slowly strangling to death. I take off after my dog and I'm able to free Sadie and calm her down. My dog is just beside herself, worried for her friend. The owner, of course, is not at home. She rarely was, so I left Sadie in the garage and wrote the neighbor a note to let her know what happened. I never got so much as a thank you or acknowledgement for saving her dog and they moved a short time later. I loved my dog, though she was a Malamute slash Shepherd mix that lived to be 16 and was one of the smartest dogs I knew. She was one of the sweetest, most loving dogs I knew too. She had several dog friends on the street and I loved watching them chase each other in the common grounds area of our neighborhood. 
My uncle had a black lab named Skip that we went goose hunting with as a kid. One trip on the eastern shore of Maryland my uncle winged a goose with his 1950s Browning semi-auto 12 gauge cannon and the goose landed in the field about 150 yards away from the blind. Uncle Brian said Skip get the goose. And Skip took off like a shot. Well that goose saw Skip back a death coming and started honking and flapping trying to get into the air. By the time Skip got close it had managed to get about 5 feet off the ground and was trying to fly for all it was worth. When Skip got a couple of feet away without breaking stride and in one smooth motion jumped, grabbed the goose in his mouth and as he was landing very deliberately broke its neck killing it instantly. He then proceeded to meander back to the blind looking very proud of himself and dropped the goose at my uncle's feet. He then sat down and looked at us with the most sheet-eating grin and plain as day you could see him saying, did you idiots really think I was going to drag that honking flapping biting thing all the way back here? He had never been trained to do this, he just did it. Another skip story skip knew exactly how the world worked. First the decoys went into the truck, then the shotguns went into the truck, then skip went into the truck and we would all go goose or duck hunting, and that was the way it had been since he was a puppy. One time, and one time only, the decoys went into the truck, the shotguns went into the truck, then the people went into the truck and left skip. I should preface this by saying my aunt was in the Air Force and they lived on base housing at Andrews Air Force Base. Well my aunt came home and came in the door and Skip was sitting there glaring at her, clearly saying you will never do that again. As my aunt went into the house she discovered he had peed on every rug, he was 100% housebroken, had chewed the stairs, tore up the rugs, and generally did as much damage as he could. After that they never dared go goose or duck hunting without him. Let me tell you about Eric, an old roomie's cat. One night after the roomie had come home from a long night of drinking, Eric shocked the roomie by jumping on him from the couch in the dark. Roomie jerked and ended up redirecting slash throwing him, causing Eric to fall to the ground hard and hurt his front right paw. One after hours vet visit later confirmed that Eric's paw, while bruised, didn't require any medical treatment and should be fine in a few days. Eric then proceeded to milk his injured paw for months. Any time he was in the living room and hungry he would slowly limp towards the kitchen where his bowl was holding his front right paw left up and crying pathetically until we moved his food closer. Any time we had company over and he was tearing up the furniture or trying to climb into the kitchen cabinets and we yelled at him to stop, Eric would raise his front right paw and limp over to our guest to rub up against them and act super sad until they got mad at us for being mean to Eric. The final straw was about 3 months after Eric was originally injured. He had climbed up on top of a display stand we had in the living room and knocked over some books early one morning. Rumi and I came out of our rooms to see what the problem was and saw Eric standing in a pile of books. Before we could say or do anything, he raised his left front paw and started in on the injured act before stopping, putting the left paw down and raising the front right paw. Rumi and I shook our heads and went back to bed. He never played the injured poor card again. Cats are manipulative bastards, but I still love them. When I was younger, we had a dachshund named Darkseed. She was obsessed with food and was always trying to get something off your plate if you looked away, etc. You couldn't leave any food within reach of her unless you were currently sitting in front of it. Point one time, my parents and I went to a nearby town for a few hours and she was left at home. We had a trash can in the kitchen. It had a piece broken at the very bottom about 2 or 3 square inches in size where the bag was exposed. Anyway, when we got home from the trip we weren't greeted excitedly by Darcy as we normally are. So, worried, we started to search the house until we heard a faint whimper. It was sort of a please help, but I really don't want you to see me because I'm in trouble kind of whimper. We found her inside the trash can which we found moved to the side of the couch. She had, apparently, bit through the hole at the bottom of the trash can and gripped the bag with her teeth. Then she somehow managed to drag the trash can over next to the couch arm. From there, our guess is that she pushed the trash can over. So it was leaning against the couch arm and jumped up to eat out of the trash. I guess she got greedy and reached a little too deep which caused her to fall in and knock the trash can back upright. It was one of those actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. Moments. 
My dog gets the concept of weekends and me going out. On weekends I go to my mum's house, and I always bring my dog with me, so she knows that. On the weekend, if I'm about to leave, she senses it's time for her to come with me, and jumps to be carried, a tiny baby sheep who. She also recognizes when she won't come with, and won't jump on my legs to bother me. Another is when we're taking walks. She ends up being lazy and just sits down, and doesn't budge, until I approach her, and put my hands up, a signal for her to stand up, so I can carry her. Lazy bum. She also knocks on doors, by sniffing really loudly into the doorway until someone opens it. Edit. Boyfriend's grandparents also have dogs. A ton of strays. One of them today we saw on the street, who recognized the car. I watched as his head turned left and right as he watched us drive by and started running after us to his grandparents house where we were going. Smart Dodi. Another edit. Both of my dogs also seem to know when I'm just about to take pictures of them. They are camera shy and they walk away or look away just as the camera app turns on. Good damn it. Late but here's mine. We used to live in a house that had a mirror wall. We didn't put it up, and didn't plan on living there more than a year, so we never took it down either, but the right side of our bedroom was entirely a mirror. Anyway, a couple of months, after we move in, and we notice, that our kitty is sitting in front of the mirror, and staring at herself for almost the entire day, easily more than 4 or 5 hours. She wouldn't do anything but, when we came into the room she would always snap back to sitting or standing position. A couple of weeks later we noticed her fur was falling out, and her skin was rough, and irritated in big spots. She was grooming, when she was in there alone, but she would snap back to normal position, when we entered the room. I'm still not sure why, but she wouldn't let us see her obsessively groom. This starts to get bad so, before we take her into the vet we tried something stupid first. We bought her an expensive new leather collar with a nice charm and at least, once a day spent a few minutes telling her how pretty she was. Within the next few days, the mirror staring ended immediately with the overgrooming shortly after. We think she was feeling whatever the cat version of self-conscious was. Another short funny story, she always has to supervise when I clean her litter box, sitting just at the edge. One day I was joking with her and told her I was harvesting her pup because that's where her kibble came from. She immediately looked back at my wife in abject horror. After a day and a half went by with her not even touching her kibble we ended up having to buy a new brand. My now deceased cat, Peter Faking Steel, chose me. He was this homeless kitty in my neighborhood, the huge, black, gigantically bullsack mancat, who used to prowl around the deep bushes surrounding my apartment building and a nearby hiking trail. It was this little oasis in the city, and it was his. Somebody who isn't me was running dope for my triad boyfriend slash boss slash landlord slash driver, and I worked on call as an escort 24 over 7 to fund my scorching heroin addiction. The point is, I came and went from my place a lot, usually about 5, 8 times per day. I told my neighbors and family I was a mobile hairdresser and had an off-the-books driving service, both of which I also did, but to a way lesser degree. Every time I came home, Stee, who I hadn't named yet, he was just mancut to me then, would come tearing out of whatever bush he was lurking in, streak across the parking lot towards me meowing his ass off, then either launch into my arms, or drop to the ground and writhe around, demanding belly rubs. This was even before I started carrying little snacks for him in my purse. Usually chunks of teriyaki beef jerky, or leftover sandwich meat. I came downstairs for a smoke one sheety, rainy night, we weren't allowed to smoke on the balcony, this was circa 2010 ish, and there was my buddy, running towards me. I scooped him up, and took him upstairs. In the elevator, there was one of my neighbors, a 50 something year old woman with a funky haircut and cool glasses. She asked, is this your cat? I thought he was homeless, and I was just coming down to take him in. I said that I had beaten her to it, and that if I didn't find his people, or wasn't able to keep him, I would call her. We exchanged numbers, but I never gave him up. Every time a person would come over to see if he was their lost black cat, I would seriously pray to whatever deity was listening to please not let this be his person. The first night he was upstairs, I was getting into bed. 
The lights were off, and my bedroom door was open, so he could come and go to the litter box. I was lying in bed, and he appeared at the bedroom door. He chirped, with a definite question mark behind it, asking if he could come in. I said, sure, buddy, come on in. He approached the end of the bed, and asked, out loud, again if he could come up. Again, I was like, come on up. He approached me, put his left paw on my knee, and Chirp asked again. Sure, come on up, let's snuzzle, I said. He crawled on top of me, stretched out on my torso, belly to belly, put one paw on either side of my head, and stuck his loudly purring face into the crook of my neck. We slept like that the whole night, embraced in each other's paws. It was adorable. How could I not keep him? How could I not fall madly in love with this cat? He became my world. I named him after the recently deceased singer of Carnivore and Type O Negative, because there were so many physical similarities. Black hair, green eyes, tall, lanky, giant balls, charming, intelligent, amazing vocal range. My Peter's motto was slightly different from the other guys, though, if you can't eat it, or snuggle it, then kill it, he would eat anything. He would beg for the onions in my salad, and devour them, like they were all steak. He ate lettuce. He was really crazy about his food. If he could see the bottom of his dish, he'd come get me, lead me to his food, and stare at me, until I fixed it. He figured out how to open every cupboard and draw his treats were in, pull the temptations out of said receptacle, tear open the bag, and decimate the contents. He loved temptations. I would buy him the best treats at the pet store, the raw food ones you had to keep in the fridge, the chewy, high protein ones, and if he had temptations, he would go wild. He still ate the fancy ones, but almost grudgingly. Bring the temptations out, and it was insanely happy psycho cat time. My then boyfriend, the guy who came after the triad guy, and I taught him to do tricks for treats. He did all the standard dog tricks, sit, lie down, roll over, heel jump up to shoulder height and catch the treat in his paws, holding it until he hit the floor, letting it go, and snuffing it before it bounced once. I also got clean for about a year and a half because of him. I didn't ever let him see me use, I always shut myself in my bedroom. But, he would meow at the door and beg to be let in. I slowed down my use because I hated the sound of him being left outside. He was so heartbroken that I had shut him out, it killed me. Later, when I relapsed, he would stand guard outside the bathroom door, training my other roommate's cat to do the same. He was also the captain of the nap. We would sleep together during the day and the night. We snuggled for hours. We had big fights about him being able to go outside. He wasn't happy or fulfilled being just an indoor cat and loudly let me know it many times with P. So we made a deal. He always comes home no matter what, be safe around roads, not kill too many birds, and his giant, luscious, fur-covered fake tail boobs balls would have to go. I couldn't let him run around and produce a bunch of babies that would be other people's problems. He would have had beautiful babies, though. His teeth were gorgeous, even the vet was like, whoa, look at his teeth. So off they came. The nuts, not the teeth. He had so much skin in his crotchless region, though, that it still looked like he had balls, just normal sized ones now. We installed a cat door in a painted sheet of plywood and stuck it in the window of our ground floor apartment. He had friends all over the neighborhood. He made daily rounds and charmed the fuck out of everyone. We would walk together to the store and people on the street would be like, is this guy your cat? He's so awesome. He comes to visit every day, and he's so cuddly and friendly. Is it okay that I always give him treats? Sure, go for it, I'd say, he's not mine, I'm his. Or maybe we are each other's? I'm happy to know he's spreading the love around. Later, when Foggy, the sheety couch till rumored slash poly boyfriend's other girlfriend's cat came on the scene, Steve would take him on his rounds. Two black cats cruising around the neighborhood. Foggy was shy, though. He was badly abused as a kitten, then neglected by his awful human. That's another story, suffice to say, that when she and my boyfriend went to jail later, I adopted Foggy and spoiled him rotten for the rest of his life, bringing him out of his shell quite a bit. Things were going pretty pear-shaped in my life by this point, and the happy home we had started to deteriorate. 
Stee developed a skin condition from the stress. Then, one day, he didn't come home. I was beside myself with grief. I put up posters, checked the flex, finding lost and escaped cats, fassa book page multiple times daily, put up Craigslist and used, city, ads, hassled the SPCA, anything I could do. I canvassed the neighborhood and learned the sheer scope of his daily interactions with people, some living several blocks away. I heard so many stories, oh, no, that is your cat? He's so lovely, he comes and visits me in my garden slash on my patio, comes into my house plays with my kids slash whatever every day. I hope you find him, he's amazing. We call him Blackie slash Shadow slash the walking stomach slash Bob slash whatever. I loved hearing from everyone how he had brightened their day in so many ways, but it didn't bring him home. A woman I had met on Flex, I had gone to see if the black cat she had found was Stee, suggested I go to an animal psychic. She told me they could douse a map and find the general area the missing animal was, find out if they were alive or out of the body. So I called the first person I found on Google. She was amazing. She told me things only he and I would know, down to him being left handed. He did everything with his left paw. She told me he had been chased by a dog out into traffic, and she was almost 80% sure he was not in the body anymore. Since she wasn't 100% sure, she didn't charge me. She did two readings for free. It was crazy. Why would she make sheet up, then do it pro bono? What would be her reason for doing that? That's why I believe what she told me, even though it flies in the face of all that is rational. She said that he and I had a pact to help each other out a dark time of both of our lives. That all animals have specific special areas of strength, like humans, they have a job they are good at, and that Stee was a healer. Kind of an energy worker. She said that she has this vision of him, on the other side, that he's sort of, not famous, because that's not how things are there, but we'll respect it known for his ability to heal wounded souls. She said she saw a long line of souls, and one by one, Stee would put his left paw over their heart, and they would explode with joy, like energetic fireworks radiating out from their hearts. She said she wished she could paint or draw it, because it was so beautiful. She said he was so grateful for my love, and for our time together, and when asked what his name for me was, he simply said, my best friend. I still cry, when I listen to the mp3s. Anyone who wants, I can give her name to you. She does charge for her work, of course. I can't tell you why she didn't with me. Maybe she felt my desperate on, or saw that I had relapsed and couldn't afford it, or whatever. It was a really healing experience, though. I still kept up the search, but never found him four years later. I still think about him every day. I know he'll be there to greet me on the other side. He's come to visit a few times, ghost cat style. I've told that story, as well as the saga of Couchtel on here recently. Anyway, that's the story of my amazing, smart, sweet, very missed man cut. He's just generally smart. He knows my work schedule, and is totally cool when I leave. But if I pack a bag for a day trip, he loses his sheet. Somehow he knows I'm not coming back the same day. He understands why he's being punished, and that he is. If I tell him he's banned from the bed, because he was bad, he does not even try to defy me. My husband is more likely to give him snacks. If we are eating a meal, he sits next to him until his last bite, then immediately without delay comes, and sits next to me. Then after I'm finished he will go to his full bowl of food to eat. We have a pet cube, so we can watch him. He's not supposed to be on the couch, and he knows this. He will be on the couch sleeping soundly, then steps before we get in the house he jumps off and goes and pretends he was sleeping on his bed. He just shows conscious intent with what he does. It's weird. Disclaimer that he's a husky and I think that's relevant. Eater. One time he ate an entire crock pot full of barbecue chicken without making a sound when we were 10 feet away from him in the other side of the counter. We put up retaining wall stones along the perimeter of our lawn so he can't dig. He moved them one by one until he had enough space to stick his nose under. He's never gotten out, just likes to dig, and he gets his paws really dirty. He turns chip bags inside out to lick their contents. I don't know how, but he does. I'm sure there's more. We are getting another next month, so I'm excited to find out how he'll be as an older brother. 
Not creepy. Rather quite interesting. I used to have a lot of rats. I mean a lot. At one point I had 50. They were all my babies, and about 15 males had a huge environment to live in. A 4 foot cube I built with plexiglass walls and plenty of fun things to do inside. I sometimes fed them raw spaghetti as a treat, broken in half, and it would be fun to watch it slowly disappear into their mouth, as if on a conveyor belt. Anyway, one time while handing it out to everyone, they one by one found a spot and began chowing down, except for one. Instead of eating, he would take each strand of spaghetti and drop it next to his companions, and did so equally. At first I thought it was weird, why wasn't he eating, instead he's literally ran up to each rat, and checked to see how many they had, and equally dispersed them. I kept handing more and more, until he saw, that everyone had enough and finally began eating for himself. I don't know, if he had wanted to ensure his buddies had enough to eat, before eating for himself, or if maybe he simply didn't want anyone trying to take his food, and wanted to load them up, so he could eat in peace. Whatever his reason, I thought it was remarkable. He had a motivation to distribute food, and do so equally. He actually would stop and look, and if the other rat already had enough, he'd move to the next one. And the idea that he did this showed that he was also thinking in future terms, planning that he planned on eating, but before doing so, he wanted to do something else first. We recently moved to a new house, where we share a garden with our neighbors and their dog. She's a lovely but hyper Belgian shepherd who is over the moon about having a 4 month old puppy as her new playmate. Unfortunately, ours is not so thrilled over the constant super energetic playtime buddy, but rather she prefers just sniffing around and stealing the neighbor dog's food. Neighbor dog girl lives outside in the yard, while ours is an indoor puppy and only comes out to pee and play. I think the neighbor's dog is feeling quite lonely a lot of the time, spending almost all of her time in this fairly small and closed off garden. She is always hugely disappointed when we bring the puppy back inside. One night, neighbor doggo wanted playmate back out and consequently dragged her metal food bowl loudly across the paving to our side, spilled the food all over the place and sat down, making her invitation for puppy to come join her abundantly clear. Honestly, I broke into tears. Good girl just wants a friend. And our puppy just wants the food. My cat warned me that there was an intruder attempting to break into my home about 10 years ago. Okay, maybe I just saw it that way, but here's a story. My cat's not very talkative. She hardly meows except for when you're pouring food into her bowl. Well late one night, she comes bolting into my room and stands by the door meowing. And I'm like, what the hell is your deal all of a sudden? So I get up to go over to her and she immediately turns around and runs toward the sliding glass door that leads to the balcony. I lived in a second floor apartment. So I follow her to the door where there's a big curtain and she just stands there and I can hear something. My balcony didn't have stairs or a ladder it was just built into the side of the building and the only way on it was from the inside of the house. So, I grabbed this old metal pole I had lying around, and swung the sliding glass door open with the force of a thousand scared teenagers, and I was face to face with a freaking monstrously huge dude. I didn't even hesitate, I just swung the pole in terror, and I sheet you not. This dude just vaulted over the railing. I didn't see where he went, but I know my timid swinging did little to no damage, so he was long gone before the cops showed up. My cat knew something was up, and pulled a lassie. TLDR my cat warned me of someone on the balcony trying to break in. Our miniature Yorkie needed, I drop some cream every night, in his advanced years, with occasional drops during the day. Can't have been pleasant for him first day he had no idea, and suffered through the process. By the third day, as soon as I had the cream in my hand I had to chase him around the coffee table with all the room doors closed. By the fourth. He knew the shelf we kept the cream on, and as soon as I walked towards it, but only at night, he started trying to hide. After the first week I eventually saw sense, and started bribing him with his favorite treat immediately, after applying the cream. Within a couple of days, he could be anywhere in the house, but had learned the word eyes, and would come running in anticipation of the reward. He leap onto the sofa, suffer the process, then jump down, and sprint to the kitchen awaiting his snack. By the second week, 
he'd occasionally start rubbing his eyes with his paws, as if they were hurting, and shooting us sideways glances. At first I though he was actually in pain, and gave him the eye drops along with a treat to avoid spooking him. Then we realized he was faking the whole thing just to get the treats. Unrelatedly, if he was out for a walk and a bigger dog even tried to be friendly, he'd cower behind my legs until the second he calculated they were far enough away that their leash length put them just out of reach. Then he'd start yelping and snarling at them. I'll never meet another dog with a better intuitive grasp of trigonometry. I have a basement and four cats. Extremely rarely, a foreign wild creature will breach our home's defenses. A bat in the bedroom, a squirrel down the chimney. All escaped, with human assistance. One time a headless mouse was discovered. We never found the head. Anyway. In the corner of our basement is an ottoman. It's low to the ground, maybe an inch, and maybe 3x3 foot wide. The cats can't get under it, but a mouse did. We discovered there was a mouse under it, because my four cats had surrounded the ottoman, and refused to move. I hatched a plan to save the mouse, but I needed to distract the cats first. So I went upstairs, and grabbed some catnip and shook the bag. The cats love the sound of that shaking bag. They always run to it, wherever they are, and whatever they are doing. They eat what they can, and roll around in what they can't, and generally bask in lazy joy for 20 or 30 minutes after. But this time, two cats came up. I shook the bag louder, but no more cats came. I frowned, but gave the two who came a small pile. They finished it relatively quickly, 5 minutes, compared to their usual 20, 30 minutes. Then they went back to the basement, and I thought about making a new plan. Then a minute passed, and the other two cats came up. I was confused, and gave the other two cats their own pile of catnip. While they munched on it, quicker than usual, I pondered what I had just seen. After all, I only shook the bag once, and these two cats hadn't come, so why did they only come up after the other cats had left? And then it hit me like a wave. They had taken shifts. Two watched the mouse's hiding spot, while the other two took a nip break. Then after the first two had their fill, and returned to duty, the other two cats came up for this. My entire life, I had cats for pets. I have never once seen them work together. They always acted independently of each other, and often got in each other's way. But not when there was live prey, I suppose. The sudden emergence of group tactics to ensure the prey couldn't escape was literally stunning. Especially in the face of treats. Defeated, I came to the only conclusion I could. That mouse is faked. I rescue. Last year I tried to rescue a pitbull who has been living in the neighborhood for over a year. I would go to the place he lives, and I would leave him food in a big cage trap. This dog would wait for a cat to go into the trap. If the trap didn't trigger, he would chase the cat out and eat the food. When I realized that he's too smart to trap, I started bringing my big dog with me to show the stray dog that we can be friends. My big dog is a Rottweiler German Shepherd mix. She loves other animals and gets really excited when she sees another dog. I knew that her excitement was no good for trapping this dog. I calmly said to her, just once, Dala, be calm. We don't want to scare this dog away. That was about a week before we actually gained the dog's trust enough for him to follow us home. The entire week of us going out there and this dog coming closer and closer every time, Dala remained completely calm and knew exactly what we were doing. I was so proud of my little 120 pound baby. And this one is not as intelligent as it is just creepy. As I'm sitting in the living room watching TV late one night, Dala and Dexter. Dexter is a pit bull I rescued in the story above. We are both sleeping in the living room next to me. Then, in complete silence they both woke up, as if they heard something. This is normal, because we live in an apartment and there are often people in the hallway, who I can't hear. But this time, they both looked at the door, and then followed something across the room with their eyes and actually turning their heads simultaneously. Scared the piss out of me. I got a cat, so that if anyone ever whispers in my ear, when I'm alone or fills the bathtub with blood, I can find comfort that it was the cat. But this was no cat. Honestly, one of my cats is a total idiot and the other is a snarky brat. The idiot cat has made the, somewhat accurate, connection between us cooking and the fire alarm going off. 
We set off the smoke alarm maybe one out of every three times we broil steak, which we do maybe once a month, at most. But he's got it in his head, now that if we're cooking, he should be wary, and if we turn on the stove fan for anything, that means the smoke alarm is gonna go off and he'll hide. Want circulation of air in the kitchen and turn on the fan. Hero hides. Burner smoking a little? Hero hides. The smart cat is a brat. She specifically gives us looks slash reactions, because she's fully aware of what she's doing. She hates closed doors, and will listen to us closing them to make sure we tug on them a little extra to shut them. If she thinks we haven't shut them all the way, she'll go shoulder check them like a football player, and beat them open. It doesn't help that she's a bigger cat to begin with. Punk also knows when we are saying her name, and when she's in trouble. She knows she's not supposed to be on the counters, but will sometimes get up there and looks unimpressed when we yell at her to get off the counter. Until we get up, in that case, she was done up there anyhow. Oh, Punk also looks for Hero. If Hero sleeps too long on the couch with me or under a blanket, she'll start checking for him. She doesn't like him, but she needs to know where he currently is. So she'll check on the couch spots he likes to sleep, in his cat tower, in the bedroom. And if he's under a blanket, she'll sometimes come up and tap it to double check. Then yells at him to remind him she hates him and wanders off. It's weird. I don't think of Punk as a creepy intelligent cat, more just like another weird personality I live with. Hero is definitely the typical dumb pet. He's more dog than cat. Our family always had dogs, since I could remember. Honestly, nothing much great. Just your regular dogs. But about 5 years ago we had a big dog break. So our parents bought in a span of 2 years about 3 cats, and saved another 4 from shelters. We have big cats 3 massive ragdolls and the rest are normal, but bigger than average, mostly fat. So about 2 years in their crazy cat parents phase, they decided to also buy a dog. So they bought this little mix between Dachshund and something else, don't know what. Anyways this dog, Amy is basically a cat, and really clever one. Within a first day at home, she learned that cats littler boxes for peeing and pupping, never pupped outside, that I could remember. We have this large jungle gym for cats at home. Amy learned how to not only climb, but jump from a bottom right to the top in one leap, and that is about 2.5 meters, about 100 inches. She routinely sits at high elevation points around the house, on wardrobes and such, and occupies the most common cat boxes in the house. Sometimes we let our cats go outside, but as some of them are dumb as rocks, we have to watch them, so they don't escape, and don't go under a car, or in a road etc. And likewise we have to also catch them, when we decide they should go home now. These little fakers usually find some shrubbery and hide from us, or jump outside the fence and we have to go on cat hunt. Well Amy somehow understood this, and helps us herding cats home, when we are starting to catch them. Not even aggressively, she just find the cats, nibbles at their feet and or otherwise annoys them, so the cat starts to slowly wander home, while Amy follows and keeps watch. She doesn't stop, until all cats are home. I once saw Amy climb this huge walnut tree we have behind my grandparents house. She seemed to have no problems whatsoever. We often have to clean our cats. If you're gonna have 7 cats together they will start to have various annoying hygienic problems. For example one of our cats constantly suffers from huge amounts of earwax discharge. We have to clean it almost every other day and apply various drops in the air. The cat absolutely hates it. He goes ballistic if he only suspects we are going to clean his ears. You literally have to force his paws into judo deadlock so he won't escape while scratching you. When Amy got here, she started to lick his head whenever we started to clean his ears. And it miraculously worked. He just sits there, purring and doing this closing the eyes slowly while letting us to clean his ears without much problems. Literally the most amazing thing of animal psychology I have ever seen. I always tell this story to friends and I think it shows the dynamics between my pets really well. I'm also on mobile, so I apologize for the formatting. So as a child I had a black slash white fat cat named Rosie and a super hyper husky named Kira. We had Rosie first who was not happy to share the house with a dog, especially one that always wanted to play. He was used to being the ruler of the house and wanted nothing to do with her. 
so about a year or so, after living together they tolerate each other, and they occasionally interact without growls and hisses from Rosie. One day Kara has an accident and sheets on the floor in front of the door to the backyard. My dad is very displeased, and does the classic nose in the sheet punishment. Rosie watches from a distance and things go on as normal. However the next day there's a sheet in the same exact spot. But, as my dad grabs Kara to once again punish her, I notice she's digging her heels in, protesting and whining like, I didn't do it. Right before her nose touches the sheet I notice that wow, that's pretty tiny compared to yesterday's sheet. I realize at that time, that Rosie is watching nearby with the smuggest look on his faking face and I can only imagine him thinking oh yeah smell my sheet dog. Later confirmed this by comparing sheets from his litter box, but I'm impressed by Rosie's planning and execution. I adopted a beagle that I think was secretly a ninja. Started with breaking into the trash, so we got a heavy duty trash can with a ceiling lid. Took one day alone to break into it. We attached it to the wall, so you had to lift the barrel to unlock it, and he broke into it that night. We had a bread drawer with a sliding cover inside the drawer. We thought we were smart by putting a child lock on. Took him one day while everyone was gone to learn how to push down the lock and open the drawer. We had no bread that night, but empty bags with hole just large enough for his head to fit through in each one. A second child lock was installed, and he broke both of them to get in the next time. It became a pan drawer. He would push the chair from the dining room to the kitchen to jump onto the counter and eat everything he could on the counter. We only figured this out as one day my brother came home early and watched him push the chair back into the dining room after he had eaten everything. He was smart enough to try push a chair 20 feet with a small lip that it could tip over on without it falling and then taking the time to push it back to cover his tracks. Like I said we thought he was a ninja, but then I learned beagles are willing to do anything if it means food. I have had beagles, three pairs so far. Beagles are usually easygoing dogs, a bit hard to train, because they just have other things to do, sleepy, maybe a bit stupid. One in particular was amusingly dumb, but my current pup is shockingly brilliant. He has that beagly drive for any food he can get into his mouth. He's also shockingly amoral. When my husband would be snacking at his computer, the dog would go into the kitchen and make noises like he was getting into something. Husband would go check, dog would steal his stuff. Did it all the time, despite me lecturing husband to not let a little dog outsmart him. He watches us and plans. I have seen him intentionally drag a bag forward from the pantry so the door doesn't shut all the way so he can get in. Once we taught our kid how to move a chair to reach things, he now moves furniture too. He studies my hands while I open doors and undo child locks. He can now turn a knob but not pull a door open. He can manage zippers. People have commented that he has an almost human stare and he does seem to be watching and evaluating you. The food is a strong enough reward we can't make him stop and with a hungry little kid around, I can't easily lock up all food. We keep him active and a healthy weight with great effort. I won't get the shock collar my dad, mostly, jokingly suggests. I can see the look on his little dog, Jai face that any punishment I can give him is worth the crime. He's gentle with children, my snuggle pup, and otherwise a lovely dog. Best bad dog ever. Not so much creepy, but our bedroom has an in-window ack unit that juts out a bit on the outside, and two doves occasionally land there. We keep those blinds closed, so it's hard to see them, but my cat loves when I gently pull one slat of the blinds up so she can look at the birds. One time, she and I were in the living room when we heard the characteristic dove coo begin. We both looked at each other and then ran to the ack unit in unison. My cat jumped on the ledge and I ever so slightly pulled the blind up so she could get a look before they noticed us and flew away. We've also learned that when I speak in a super nasal Y Midwestern register, our cat interprets it as some kind of call and will come running to me and meowing. If I say I need you beneath a blanket in this nasal register, she will literally claw me out out of the blanket. She'll run to me whenever I make this sound, no matter what room I'm in. I think she might think I'm distressed when I make the sound, so I try not to do it that often, though it's a great party trick, especially for people who insist cats don't come when called. 
Just as a forewarning, this one is kind of sad. So up until a few years ago I had a parakeet named Tiki. I got Tiki in his twilight years from my great aunt, who had him 15 years before she got too old to take care of him, which is pretty crazy, given that budgers usually live about 10 years at most. Like the old man he was, Tiki was very set in his ways and absolutely refused to have anything to do with anyone who wasn't my great aunt, including me. As such I never was able to finger train him, and any attempts to get near him resulted in furious squawking and tiny ineffectual bites to my hands. That said, we did develop at least one bit of camaraderie every night I would cover his cage, and every night he would make this specific chirp noise, chip. It was the only time he made said noise, and afterwards he would settle down and go to sleep, so I took it to mean goodnight in Tiki. I had him for another 3 years after that, but eventually time got the better of him, and he started slowing down. Then one morning I found him at the bottom of his cage still alive, but unable to perch on anything, and I knew he didn't have long. So I took him, still weakly protesting at being handled even then, and held him for a while, waiting for him to pass. That's when he did something I don't think I'll ever forget. He looked up at me, let out his goodnight chirp, then closed his eyes and passed away. I've always wondered if he in some way realized his own impending death and decided to say goodnight one last time or... I don't know. It just seemed like a freakily self-aware thing for an animal to do, even for a parrot. We used to put my cat is put in my girlfriend's bathroom at times as we aren't sure how she gets along with my girlfriend's dog when we aren't in the apartment. We kept realizing that the door would unlock and the cat would be chilling outside, but just assumed we didn't close the door completely. Then one day, yesterday to be specific, after my girlfriend closed the door with a snap, the door opened within a minute while we were both still in the unit getting ready to head out. And I thought, HMM that's so weird. So I went into the bathroom, closed the door, and tried opening it myself by pushing it. Wouldn't budge. We then put a remote camera in the bathroom and closed the door to see what happens. After like a minute of meowing, the cat started pushing with all her weight against the bathroom door for a second or two, then moved a little to the side, then pushed against the door and so on, from one end of the door to the other end. And voila. After a while, she opened the door. We immediately went to the door to see how that was possible, and for whatever reason, the door opens when there's enough pressure applied on a specific spot in the bottom corner of the door handle side. She has gotten faster and faster at opening the door that now, the dog has to be put in a crate when we are both outside as we have given up trying to put the cat inside the bathroom. TLDR, my cat found out how to open the bathroom door by pushing herself in a specific spot of the door. Not sure I'd call it so much creepy as I would hilarious, but my Dax and Lucas is highly dramatic and accordingly he is also a skilled actor. There are two notable examples first Lucas would constantly try to steal my girlfriend's elderly dog Jackie's food. What was most impressive is not only how complicated his schemes got, but also that I could see them evolving over time point dashing madly at the food bowl doesn't work. Sneak close and wait for the opportunity. Get sent away, if spotted near the bowl. Pretend to be interested in some smell that is close to the bowl, but stay faced away from the bowl point his final technique was, I kid you not, to pretend to drink water out of his bowl so as to stay close to Jackie's bowl, but not be spotted. How does a dog pretend to drink water? He would stick his nose into the bowl and push his tongue out into the water and back again slowly and deliberately, but never cut the tongue to actually lap up water. Second. Lucas is not interested in playing with other dogs because he's usually not the dominant animal. Once, while talking to another dog owner within a fenced dog park, another small, 30 pounds, dog was trying to get him to play and jumping all around him. After a few minutes of hopping around and leaning on him, the dog hopped up and planted its front paws on his back close to his right shoulder. After a second or so, Lucas yelps like he was just injured. The same yelp he uses when he breaks a nail suddenly. He then proceeds to limp piteously, keeping the injured paw aloft and circle around behind and between my legs for protection. The problem was that he was limping with his left paw. 
He kept this up steadily until the other dog was gone, and then suddenly he put his paw down on the ground and resumed his favorite activity, running from smell to smell with no visible discomfort. It was the moment I fell in love with animals. I always realized animals were sentient feeling creatures, but I sort of considered them to be something like fluffy cute machines. I saw them respond to things like hunger, pain, pleasure, etc. in a very simplistic and straightforward way. I didn't dislike them, but I didn't appreciate their inner lives or personalities. My then girlfriend had a dog, a lesser apso named Rena. And Rena had this habit of, when she was hungry, knocking her bowl around. So it made that wobby bowl noise and alerted us that her majesty needed food. One night, after already feeding Rena her dinner, my girlfriend and I put on a movie. In the middle of the movie I start hearing the bowl getting knocked around. I turn around and scold her, no and she leaves it. Ten minutes later, bowl wobbling again. I'm fed up, so I get off the couch and go pick up her bowl and put it on the kitchen counter where she can't reach. No I say again. And I'm not kidding you, she looks up at me, then turns and walks right to the front door of the apartment. And she looks back at me to make sure I'm watching, and while locked in eye contact with me goes to town swatting at springy doorstopper. Of course this makes a lot more noise than the bowl and I have my mouth wide open, and I'm laughing miles off, while my girlfriend is trying to figure out what's going on. I understood hunger and pain and pleasure and warmth and cuddles those were all very basic accessible feelings. But that was when I realized an animal could feel spite, which is an incredibly complicated emotion. It really made it apparent for me how rich their feelings and thoughts could be. My now 12 year old Great Dane has been with me since college over 10 years ago. I went through a brutal breakup with a long time girlfriend, found out she had begun going out with some new guy within a 48 hour period of the breakup, let's face it, meant it had been going on for a while, and immediately slipped into a deep depression. I was struggling daily to do simple things. I slept a lot. My Dane began walking slowly around my apartment, hunkering her head low to the ground, and peeping into rooms to look at me, ears tucked and always looking through her eyebrows at me. One day I had been in bed most of the morning, simply unable to get up. I heard someone fiddling with the door handle, rolled over and say my great Dane peeping into my room holding a mouthful of several of her toys. She cautiously walked into my bedroom, lifted the covers up with her snout, slid under the covers, laid down between my legs with her head on my chest, dropping the all of her toys onto me, and letting out a long, hard whimper. I grabbed her tightly, and sobbed deeply for what had to be an hour. She never moved, except to occasionally lick my face and whimper. Good girl. Was living with my ex at the time. She had a beagle mix, dog, 6 years old, that we both already knew was pretty smart, easily caught onto words, commands, etc. At the time he was about 35 pounds, short little legs, and not exactly a kangaroo, when it came to jumping. Anyways, one day we come in from running errands, and he isn't there, to greet us at the door, and there was a faint smell in the breezeway as we make our way in. We had only been gone a couple of hours and always check to see if he has to pee slash pup before we go anywhere, plus it would be very unlike him to go in the house. As we get into the living room he is laying on the couch, allowed to, and looking super guilty slash ashamed. We leave him be, so we can find the mystery smell. About 5 minutes later I go into the bathroom to find he had pupped a very messy runny hash to in the cast iron, very tall, bathtub, which sits right beside the toilet. This dude, instead of just pupping wherever, in his state of emergency, knew that we did our business in that room somewhere and tried to do the same. Plus, he managed to jump in and out of a tub that would have been slippery and difficult to do without getting any on himself. I must have praised and congratulated him for half an hour afterwards. My dog used to go on a specific route through the neighborhood and forest nearby with my dad, because he had figured it to be exactly a 6 mile run that way. Once when no one wanted to take him running my dog started going through that route by himself and got pretty far before one of us drove up to get him. My cats were all pretty smart growing up. They used to follow my mom on her morning, walk with my dog, every morning at 6am. 
they would wait for her by the front steps outside at that time point right now my mom only has one cat who is about 12 years old, I'm the only person who can hold him for an extended period. Everyone else he immediately fights to get away from, or he bites them. I used to be interested in cats as a kid and I read in a cat book about how they like to be held, so I guess I had tried that with him with good results. I moved out on my own about 10 years ago, but whenever I visit he immediately follows me around and waits for me to pick him up. He loves having me tote him around the house and only reluctantly jumps off when I'm done holding him. Little guy has a darn good memory. I used to have a sociopathic golden retriever named Hannah. I tried to convince my parents, but they never believed me. We almost always had two dogs, but Hannah was the only one to die from old age. The other six met unfortunate accidents. Two were hit by cars after Hannah led them into the street. She was found lying on the edge of the road both times with a big old grin on her face. The other four were all led into the woods never to return. Almost every time, Hannah came back with some kind of injury, either porcupine quills or slashes from a raccoon fight. But what cemented it for me was the one she didn't kill. When we moved into town, we had a fenced backyard that our newest dog would dig under, so my parents installed an underground electric fence about 4-5 feet inside the actual fence line. The catch was, since Hannah was older, almost 14 years at this point, she didn't get one of the corresponding collars. Within about 3 weeks, she had moved all of the puppy's toys to other side of the electric fence and would just sit along the line so the puppy couldn't bother her. One day, we came home to find the puppy gone again. Hannah had dug up a spot in the back corner of the yard, under a bush, and chewed through the underground fence so that the puppy could dig free again. Fortunately, she was found, and we picked her up at the pound. We finally had to put Hannah down at 18 years old. She was riddled with cancer and had all sorts of joint problems. While she was a sociopath, I loved the hell out of that dog. My family used to have a black lab named Shadow that was the best hunting dog you'd ever seen. We never lost a bird, he wouldn't stop for anything when it came to hunting. He flat out ruined hunting dogs for me because no other dog I've ever hunted with could compare. Well at about a year old, and after a couple hunting trips, Shadow learned that on windy days the birds, pheasant, fly really low for the first 20, 30 feet while they build up some speed to fly. So what he figured out was that he could flush a bird up and then he could jump into the air and grab a pheasant mid-flight and bring you a pissed off and probably terrified live bird. First of all, this was problematic because people had to get used to not shooting a bird until they were 10 feet off the ground. A couple close calls, not fun, otherwise you risked shooting the damn dog. Other problem is with pheasants you can only kill the males. Well Shadow didn't understand that you only wanted some of the birds he found. He was indiscriminate in his pheasant collecting and would bring you hens and young roosters that had no color yet. A more ethical hunting no go. The first couple of times he did this they were roosters and it was really cool to get a bird and not even have to shoot it. Picking pellets out sucks. However, one day it was really windy and Shadow brought four hens to me in a row. The first one I acknowledged his efforts, but let the bird go, and it took off again and flew away. He didn't directly see it, and listened when I told him it was gone away. Repeated this process with the second hen. On the third hen he gave it to me, and then sat down in front of me, which he never did. He delivered a bird, and went right back out looking for the next one. Well I mistakenly let this hen go right in front of him, and he gave me biggest look of betrayal I've ever gotten in my life. Like I personally offended him, but he went back to work and brought me a fourth hen and sat down again after I took the bird. I didn't really mean to let this one go with him watching, but I didn't want to hurt it and it's flouncing around like crazy, so I just let it go and it flew away. Shadow got up and I thought he was going back to work. About 50 feet later we realize the dog isn't with us, he's not responding to calls and no one knows where he is. I finally turn around, and he's out in the middle of the little stock pond we are hunting around swimming and playing with a stick he'd found. This was also one of the very few times he would not come, or heed my calls, my dog was officially over my sheet, and gave up. Semi follow on story. One morning we were just having bad luck and he flushed probably 10 hens in a row. 
I don't know how he figured out that a gunshot equals dead bird plus humans helping, but no gunshot equals humans not doing their part, but after the last bird flew away Shadow walked over to Big Shade Tree and laid down. He wouldn't budge, and it took about 30 minutes to get him to get back up and try again. We learned that day that every third hen or so to just shoot into the air. Missing was forgivable, but to not shoot was an egregious offense. We live on an acreage. We have five outdoor cats. Well fed, well housed little dirtbag ruffians. I love them. They have a fully enclosed porch, kitty door, multiple beds, scratchy posts and it's heated in the winter. Anyway, three of the cats are still fairly young. Piper, Cod, and Sturgeoplex. Piper is tiny, half blind, just over a year old. Her brothers are Cod and Sturgeoplex, which are regular size. Piper got babied when we got her and when we realized she is almost blind. So she doesn't wander far and is obsessed with my husband. She figured out which window is closest to the living room and would sit there meowing for hours sometimes. Note, she has never been let in through this window. Ever. One day, we hear a very distinct, hello. It confused the hell out of me. So I went and looked out the window to find Piper. Satisfied she had got my attention, she chirped and purred and rubbed on the window. Fast forward to last night. I hear not one, not two, but three different meows all going, hello. I go to the window to see Cod, Sturgeoplex and Piper all sitting there. My one cat not only figured out how to say hello, but also taught it to our other cats and now all our freaking outdoor cats do, is sit at various windows doing this. A while back I had a roommate who had two cats. At the time, he worked a normal 9-5 shift, and I was working 9pm to 5am, and the app was big enough that we could go for days without seeing each other, even if we weren't on opposite schedules. So the cats would greet me at the door when I got home, hang out with me, sleep on my bed, and they'd be there when I woke up. After a while, I began to feel kinda bad that they were spending every night with me since they were his cats, so the next time I saw him, I mentioned that if he was bothered at all that the cats were spending every night in my room instead of his, I could just close the door at night. He answered by looking confused. He said they spent every night in his room. After a bit of thinking, we figured out that when he went to bed, they went to bed with him. When he fell asleep they'd head back into the main room and do whatever until I got home. They'd then go to bed with me, wait until I fell asleep, then go back into his room, wait until he went to work, then back to me, so they'd be there when I woke. The plissichous little bastards. So my former cat puss died years ago at ripe old age of 17. To a dog attack equals underscore equals, anyway, was an evil mastermind. He was giant, was a crossbreed between a Maine Coon and some other large cat breed. He was a small panther basically. Scroll to bottom for actual thing he did, but I'm gonna give some context. Anyway he was wickedly smart. He used to bully the neighbor's cats, but he never ran after them. He casually walked after them cause he knew where they were going. Neighbor used to say, if you run from puss, you just die tired. One time a rottweiler chased him, and rather than run he jumped on it, and then dragged his claws up its face, then hopped back into the bush he was sleeping in. He'd wander around the neighborhood, find dogs in backyards and sit on the fence staring at them as they went insane barking at him, no that's not what did him in. Now when we had him, my older brother still lived with us, and we shared a room, and had a bunk bed. Like all good cats he had us trained. Cause he was big, and getting old he didn't like jumping down from the chest of drawers next to the top bunk. He'd sit there waiting for someone to lift him down. However he was perfectly healthy, and jumped when no one was home, he was just being lazy. Due to his laziness, he was very dedicated to getting his way. One time he scratched at my door to be let in, and, I didn't want him in, he sat there for 3 hours scratching every few minutes, when I finally let him in he just casually strolled in, like he wasn't desperate for company. Now onto the main story, one time he was sitting on the dresser waiting for someone to get him down. I was laying on my bed, the bottom bunk, very tired and I didn't want to get up, just to help this fat old panther be lazy. So I pretended to be asleep, but still watched him. So what does he do? He searches the dresser for the nosiest thing. Not knocking anything off, just lightly batting things, 
to see what noise they made, finds a set of keys. He then picks up the keys, hooking the ring over one of his claws, and holds his paw out over the edge of the dresser. Then he looks directly at me, then back to the keys. He retracts his claw then quickly snaps his head back to looking at me, before they hit the floor, to see them wake me up. He might have been the animal mafia boss of the neighborhood and a fat annoying evil genius, but I do miss him. My mom had this little dog named Suds, before Suds lived with us. He had been raised in a somewhat abusive home, and so when my mom took him in he could not contain the immense amount of love he felt for the woman who showed him so much kindness. But love has a dark side too. Anytime someone else got too close to my mom to hug, for example, he would lose his cool real fast, and so my brothers and I took to calling him Scuds, like a Scud missile. Anyway, this is the story about the time he sold out my mom for some pizza. I had a friend over one day, and it was getting close to dinner time, we were the only ones home and, so it looked, like we would be fending for ourselves that night, so we decided to pool our money together, and get us a couple back quotes as. During the course of our feast, another friend had called and wanted to hang out, we told him to come over, and that there was some pizza left, but he didn't know where I lived, this was before google maps and smartphones, so we decided to go and meet him. There was a problem though, Suds was also home. Now in retrospect, I could have found a better hiding place, but I knew Suds was smart enough to climb onto the kitchen table and the counters, if he wanted to, and that we would be gone only 5 minutes. So, I thought I was very clever, by leaving this box of pizza right in the middle of the living room underneath the coffee table, it was low enough that the box could not be opened enough to get inside, and I knew that Suds knew that if I saw the box was out of place, when we got back, he would be in trouble. Fast forward to us three walking back in, the box is exactly where I left it, however, when my friend went to grab a slice he gave a kind of had a very funny response. He thought we were messing with him, because the box was completely empty. Suds had covered his tracks well, too well. I thought there was no way that he could close the box with all the lid flaps inside and return it exactly where I left it. It must have been one of my brothers. So we went upstairs to my brother's room to investigate. Turns out we were still home alone. And yet, lo and behold, resting in the middle of his bed was a pizza crust. Aha. That bastard did come home and eat our pizza, but even so, he's not such a slob that he would leave food on his bed like that. In my room, nothing, same mess I left it as. In my mum's room though, we found the mother load. Three slices of pizza with just the cheese eaten off of them all placed in the middle of her bed. That's when I knew he had opened, closed, and returned the box, eaten the pizza, and framed my mom and brother by placing the crusts on their beds while leaving mine alone. Honestly I was stunned, I couldn't even punish him, didn't know where to start. If anything, I respected him after that, it was the perfect heist. My dog son, a chewini, is not the smartest dog on the planet, but he is very sweet. My dog Ta, a chocolate lab, is a very very smart dog and she routinely reminds us of her intelligence. Since she is so much bigger than my son, she is very gentle when they wrestle or play with their ropes. On many many occasions, the Chewini will steal a rope from her while she's playing with it. She will then pretend to see or hear something at the door. Which alerts the Chewini, and while he looks away for a split second, she quickly gets her rope back, which then pisses the Chewini off until he pouts to me. She also expertly reminds us of what time it is 15 minutes before breakfast and dinner. She sits and stares us down. She will then proceed to gently pour at us, put her head in our laps, and lick her hands. It's seriously weird, as I have never taught her how to read a clock. My Chewini is more creepy than smart. He stares at me when he pops, just to make sure I see it happening. He stares at me when he humps his robes. He sits by the bedroom door about 20 minutes before bedtime, shivers uncontrollably, and stares at me until we all go to bed. After we are in the bed, the shivers stop and everything is right in the world. He's a weirdo. I had an Australian shepherd for a few years that demonstrated freakishly high amounts of empathy. There was one time in particular when I was going through my divorce that caught everyone's attention. My sister was watching him for a couple of months and he would spend a lot of time playing in the yard with a stray kitten, very underfed. 
He always liked things that were smaller than him. One day as my sister was smoking a cigarette she heard the stray howling in the backyard. Cassie perked up from his afternoon nap, sauntered over to the backyard, and came back holding the kitten by the scruff of its neck. He proceeded to set the kitten by his food bowl and nosed him until he started eating. He would also frequently let himself out of the gate and stroll exactly two times around the block before coming back, closing the gate behind him and taking a nap. This was by report of the neighbor. He was very lazy and would often use me and my friends as pillows when anybody would lie on the ground. We had some other younger dogs at one particular house and if he was laying on you, he would swat away the puppies trying to harass his pillow. He never did like fetch either, but was very big on frolicking. He'd only chase the ball two or three times before getting bored and prancing through the grass or snow instead. I had to get rid of him post-divorce, but I still think about him every week. Best animal I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. I'll always miss you Cassie Dolphin Head Jones. I locked myself out of my house one day and tried checking all the side windows and back doors to see if I left any unlocked. No dice. All the while my dog was running around excited to see me, watching me through the doors and windows to see what I was doing. Went back to the front door, ready to admit defeat, when I couldn't reach through the litter box up to the handle, when my dog decided he'd sort out the problem. He jumped up, grabbed the door handle with his paws, and pulled it down, unlocking the door. Not only that, but he then backed up on his hind legs to pull the door open before promptly returning to all fours and barreling out the door and excitedly towards me. Not only did he save me 4 hours of waiting in the cold rain for my dad to drive over and use his key, but he also began to understand his paws could be used for much more than digging in the garden and wrapping around my neck for bear hugs. He began opening my bedroom door at night when he was lonely and frequently dragged food and toys anything he looked fun to play with off of tables and counters with his toys. Hell one time, after eating a freshly baked Victoria sponge I left on the kitchen counter to cool while I went out, he threw up in the dining room and then managed to close the dining room door before hiding by the back door as if he was hiding the evidence of his cake theft. Thankfully he was a good boy and learned his lesson after the third attempt of getting away with food theft and evidence concealment. So one Victoria sponge, one roast chicken carcass, and a pepperoni pizza later. From then on he used his powers of paws for hands for good, or basically knowing to open the front door for me and my family when he saw us at the front door. I had a cat named Rascal. Aptly named, could open most doors, would push food off the counter for the dogs. If he wanted inside, and you didn't hear him at the door he would find the room you were in, and latch himself to the screen, and yowl until you opened the door. In spring he would eat baby rabbits by the door, leave the tail on top of the doormat, and scoop the nasty bits underneath. We didn't find it till the doormat slid out from under my feet, so oh gross. Then there was this dog dipstick, a Parson Russell Terrier. Violent little guy, got banned from every feed store in the county, because he would always get out of the truck and raid cages, and kill every duck, chicken and small creature he could. Across the country he got banned from the entire state under threat of euthanasia, because a neighbor child let him into their house, and tried to introduce Dip to his guinea pig. You can imagine how that went, and that happened to be the assistant Dia's kid, so he went to a different state. Almost immediately he got out, escape artist he was. Owner thought he was trapped in this massive bramble patch, because he could hear him freaking out in it. Bowers of thorny struggle ensue, until eventually the fire department was called. Now at this point it's been hours of panic and worry. Firefighters get through the bramble patch and eventually realize he isn't caught in the brambles. They could still hear him but no one could find him. Turns out he was underground slaughtering a whole family of groundhogs. Everyone involved thought this dog was very badly hurt, turns out he was living out some murderous dream. Now Dip was my dad's dog, and after he passed away Dip got passed around to whoever could care for him. He would escape, no matter how you tried to stop it, and he would run much further than I would expect any dog to. We would get calls from miles away within 15 minimum of him getting out. So one day he gets out, and goes far is found by someone, and taken to the nearby animal sanctuary. What happened next was horrible. He broke out, broke cages and killed things, and escaped again. 
ends up in another state at a Russell Rescue Center. Realizing they were much more capable of caring for him, the owner released care to the lady there, who had fallen in love with the little guy. Now he never runs away, because he found his new person. I had a cat that was way too smart. Here's a couple examples. Back in high school, my cat would wake up my mom in the mornings about 5 minutes before the alarm clock went off. An early warning, essentially. One Saturday morning, I was still up from the night before, I watch the cat as he saunters into my mom's room. After a minute, I hear my mom say what are you doing? It's Saturday. Soon after, the cat calmly sauntered back out, jumped up on the couch, and curled back up for more sleep. Like he knew what the weekend was, and that it wasn't food time yet. One time, he got into a fight with a raccoon. The raccoon lost, but still got one good swipe in. We didn't have a cat flap, so the cat sat outside the door, and meowed for us to let him in. My dad opened the door, and the cat limped in, sat down just far enough inside, to let the door close, and held out his right front leg. Sure enough, there was a huge gash all the way to the bone, where the raccoon got him. It was like the cat realized he needed help, but instead of panicking, decided that dad could help. My dad took the cat to the bathroom to disinfect the wound before taking him to the vet. The entire time, the cat didn't make a sound and let dad do what he needed to do. Even the vet remarked that he was incredibly docile during that time and took it like a champ. It wasn't until he was in a kitty cast and back in dad's car on the way home that he started wailing. This may not be a creepily intelligent pet story, but it's still a fun story and shows a little intelligence. He was having fun playing, by hiding behind a wall then jumping out, and startling my mom. He did this about 4 times, obviously enjoying the reaction, until my mom decided to get even. She hid behind a wall, after he had just taken a snack break, and was looking for her again. She jumped out and startled him, causing him to go straight up. My mom was laughing, of course, but the cat had this look on his face of anger that quickly went to realization. He didn't jump out and startle mom for a long time after that, he learned his lesson. My so and I adopted a young kitten a couple of years ago and named her Ain. She was listed at 8 weeks old, but I'm sure she was a week or two younger than that. We picked her out of the litter because she ignored her brother and sisters playing to play with us. One of the first things I had to do when we got her home was give her a bath because her siblings were fond of playing in the litter box. I hold her up to the sink and mirror to show her everything, and the very first thing she does is look me in the eye through the mirror and then turn her head to actually look at me. I held her up to the mirror and she did the same instead of trying to play with the other kitten as I had expected her to. Most kittens that young don't yet understand mirrors, and I didn't think she had had any previous experience with mirrors before. Since then she's done all sorts of things. She's a strictly indoor cat, and she would get out of our apartment into the hallway of the complex and run as fast as possible back and forth, making us chase her. Now she specifically asks in certain ways for us to play with her, and depending on who she goes to, and how she asks, it means she wants to play tag. She also like playing catch, where I'll roll a ball to her, and she'll hit it back to me. If I don't touch it, and it comes back to her, she won't hit it again, and she'll just stare at me, until I actually do my job. Oh, and she knows exactly where the red dot comes from. She also wakes me up in the middle of the night for food. She used to try biting me and such, but I'd just hide under a blanket. Then she realized just sighting on me, and purring worked better. Then she realized, that sitting on me, purring, and delicately sticking her paw in my mouth works the best. She's also found that, if she reaches her paw out, with only the fluff delicately touching my eye I wake up even faster. She also learned that knocking sounds wake us up, so she'll slam the door shut, and then push on it to make it sound like someone is knocking. As soon as we're awake she stops. She has very clear and specific meows for food, for water, for certain types of play, and she's pretty clear about the types of pets she wants, and you only get one warning, if she doesn't like what you're doing. I love her. Had dog one, as we'll call her, for about three weeks, after adopting her from a rescue shelter. 
drove to another state to pick up dog two from relatives who had gotten the dog for us when previous dog was sick and had now passed away, hence the arrival of dog one and dog two in our lives. Anyway, we were driving home with both dogs and they were in the back seat since we had just purchased food at a drive through Dog 2 was still a young dog and hadn't been taught many manners yet and was trying very hard to get into the front seat for the food. I repeatedly told her, no, and gently pushed her back to the back seat. Dog 1 seemed to understand and was sitting patiently where she was supposed to be. Dog 2 persisted, I continued to tell her no and move her back to the back. After X amount of times, Dog 1 barked sharply in the face of Dog 2 and Dog 2 retreated to the far corner of the back seat and didn't move a muscle until we were finished eating. Another time, Dog 1 also saved Dog 2 from choking by alerting us to the situation. Final example, Dog 1 was thirsty while on a trip. There was a bottle of water and a bottle of Mountain Dew on the floor of the truck. She clawed at the bottle of water until we gave her a drink. For the record, I don't think we ever had used a water bottle to supply her with drink in the past. Had two bitch and fries, small, very fluffy white dogs, who were half brothers, but completely different in personality. One was incredibly smart but grumpy, the other was very affectionate, but could be a little dim. One day, we took them both on a family outing to the seaside, where the humans got fish and chips. We stop to eat at a row of benches and the dogs get fee scraps. Affectionate dog laps up a couple of discarded bits of fish and gratefully nuzzles owners, whilst the grumpy one takes his portion to the other end of the bench, lays it out in a line and hides under the bench. A little odd, as grumpy dog loves fish, smellier the better. All of a sudden, a seagull swoops down and tries to grab the fish and grumpy dog springs out of his hiding place, like a trapdoor spider, and barks madly at the seagull. Doesn't hurt the bird, not sure he would know what to do with one, if he got close to it, they were about the same size, but gave it a bit of a fright. Grumpy dog finishes off his fish, and seems very impressed with himself. He hated seagulls. In addition, all of the above occurred as he was losing his eyesight. We lost both of them within a year of each other best friends I've ever had. Not sure if this is more hilarious than creepily intelligent, but once my cat tried to wake me up in a very interesting way. At first he tried bar loudly meowing repeatedly in the most annoying way possible. I just thought he was hungry or bored and I just tried to ignore him and go back to sleep, so I just kept pushing him away for several minutes, not even opening my eyes. Which was a huge mistake, cause if I had I would have probably been able to foresee what he was gonna do next. This little fact just walked right next to my head and started to piss right onto my pillow, next to my face. I must have been like 8 years old when this happened, but I still remember it so vividly. In the first few seconds of the great pissing I just heard a strange noise. Until I finally noticed something next to me was wet, which made me open my eyes to this faking cat just squatting next to my face and using my bed as a giant litter box. I just remember screaming, both angry and super confused. The reason he did this? He had a faking fly paper trap stuck to his tail and, but that he couldn't seem to get off himself. You know, these gluey long papers that flies would get stuck on. This idiot really sat down on the fly paper trap we had installed on the balcony and now decided to piss next to my head to wake me up and fix it for him. The combo of piss with some dead flies in my bed was definitely appreciated. Just something about the fact that he must have at some point consciously decided to now wake me up by just doing the most disgusting thing possible makes it so hilarious to me, and it's pretty intelligent, if you think about it. R.I.P. Maximum. I'll love you forever you little sheet. Grew up with two cats, one who was a stray kitten when we found him, and the other who was full Siamese and was Declawed when we got her. I lived in a pretty rural area with some fields and woods nearby. The cats stayed inside, but we let the stray go out fairly often, since he could hunt and fend for himself. The Siamese, however, got remarkably fat over time, and considering she was declawed, we didn't really let her outside without some sort of supervision. One day, the back door to my house was accidentally left open, and the Siamese got out and legged it. She made it pretty deep into the woods where we couldn't really find her. The stray was hanging around nearby, and my mom, frustrated, looked at him 
and said something like go fetch her, would you? The cat must have caught on somehow, because he made eye contact with my mom, let out a single meow, and proceeded into the woods. About a minute later the Siamese comes bolting out between the trees and into the house. Somehow the stray had understood that she needed to be brought back inside, so he deliberately chased her back. My mom and I were blown away. I haven't looked at that cat the same ever since. TLDR had a cat that wasn't allowed outside that escaped and got lost in the woods. My mom casually told my other cat that was allowed outside to go chase her back inside and he obliged. When I was in school I lived across the country from my family, so over the summer I would often fly back home for a month or so to visit. At the time I had a roommate who didn't leave town over the summer, so naturally I asked him to babysit my sweet and very well behaved kitty. They got along very well, and he was quite fond of her, so I assumed it wouldn't be a problem. While I was out of town, I checked in with him frequently, and he would assure me that everything was going well, and kitty was being a good girl. I returned home at the end of summer, and was very excited to see my little fur kid. As soon as I walked in the door, she ran right up to me, meowed, and looked me straight in the eye, while she took a huge sheet on the floor right at my feet. I was shocked, because she had never done anything of the sort before. She then led me to her litter box which was literally a solid mass of fesses. So disgusting. My roommate admitted he hadn't cleaned her litter box at all the entire time I was gone, and the poor girl had to just keep sheeting on top of her old mess, but being the good girl she is, she kept using the filthy box. She had waited until I got home to show me exactly how displeased she was with the situation. To this day, that was the only time she didn't use her litter box, and her message to me was very clearly relayed. I still feel bad thinking about her using that filthy box. Needless to say I never asked my roommate to take care of her again after that. I had a Pomeranian that we put down last April at almost 18. I'm 27 now. I still believe in general that large dogs have better rods of being smarter, but this 8 pound princess, she would sigh or sneeze in exasperation. I used to just talk plain English to her, no commands, and she would give me attitude back. My grandparents lived in our guest house until she was about 10. Whenever the ambulance would come for one of them, she would pile all her toys in the corner out of the way then sit in one of the porch chairs so she could check the action. When the dog was 13 my mom had a heart attack. When my sister and I got home from the hospital almost 24 hours later she had not touched her food or water. Drained both and took a big nap as soon as we got home. When my mom was able to come home she had to sleep in a temp bed downstairs for a couple months. The dog would sleep with one paw touching the mattress. Anytime mom would wake up or be unsettled she would run to whoever else was staying in the house and drag us back to mom. Eventually my mom recovered fine, but still takes a couple pills at breakfast and bed. If my mom forgot with breakfast, or was more than 15 minimum late at night the dog would bark at her, until she took them. For the rest of the dog's life, whenever mom would cough or sneeze the dog would get up to come inspect her. If somebody else was in the house she would bark about once every 10 seconds, until we came to check. During the only serious hurricane of her life she refused to sit or lie down for the entire retty of the storm. We were all on pallets on the first floor and she paced from person to person for about 8 hours. I used to have a cat who hated it when people knocked on the door. If you were a close enough friend to just come in, no problem. But a knock was terrible and she'd do that slow slinky runaway thing while growling, seeking a hiding spot. She was really fond of some of my friends. So I thought the association with knock then dollar sign g-o-o-d-p-e-r-s-o-n might break the fear, but it never did. Years later, I started working from home, and then as now I got a lot of deliveries from Amazon, or whatever. She still hated the knocking, but now she had a whole different pattern. See, she loved to work with me, I kept a decoy pile of papers on my desk for her to use as a bed, and she'd spend most of the day there. Except, sometimes, she'd randomly do the runaway growling thing. And then, 30 seconds later, there'd be a knock at the door. Turns out, she'd learned to associate the sound of ups trucks with knocks at the door, and was behaving accordingly. I couldn't hear the trucks, but she could. Once I figured out what was happening, I used to freak out the drivers by opening the door before they knocked. 
Do you have cameras? Nope. I'm pretty sure my dog was smart enough to be a bit of an asshole, because she was smart in so many other ways. Opening doors that went outwards, opening doors where the handle was turned 90 degrees and many other things. However the asshole thing she sometimes did, was when she wanted to play fetch. Everyone knew she was hyped about the game, and since she was a border collie noon thought twice about it. And she'd come dragging with whatever she wanted you to throw. Rocks and sticks and stuff. Then she managed to dig into a box in the garage where my dad kept some old training gear for athletics, mostly javelin and shot put. The javelin was alright, made of plastic and a weird chunky design that was made so it only flew more than 2 meters if you used the right technique. She would also bring a 3 kilogram shot put ball of iron and demand you throw it. The real kicker though were the plastic balls filled with sand weighed 1, 2 kilos and yellow or blue. Looked like a regular ball. My cousin learned the hard way that this was not a regular ball when he kicked it kicking a 2 kilo ball filled with sand hurts. He swore loudly, she wagged her tail. Another my dad told me is that in later years, whenever he and my stepmom decides to go for a longer walk the dog goes mental. At first I figured she heard the sound of their clothes or something, or whatever, but he refuses. She goes mental, before they're out of their chairs, having changed or anything. He really can't understand how this happens. I taught my dog Jasmine, Jazzy for short, a command to pick it up teaching her to pick up certain objects for a treat. This came in as a necessity, because Jazzy was always in the laundry on wash day. She would steal socks, underwear and shirts and run around the house with them. I figured, I'll teach her to pick up these items and hand them to me for a treat, that way she will be helping me with the laundry instead of stealing it. She learned the trick very quickly, and we were happily doing laundry together in no time. That is, until Jazzy decided to take it one step further. She started picking things up that I didn't ask for and bringing them to me for treats, like my shoes or my pills bottles. At first, I was giving her treats every time she did this saying thank you Jazzy, but I didn't ask for this, but it became clear that Jazzy was getting too many treats and I had to stop giving her treats for things that I didn't ask her to pick up. Well, Jazzy was upset by this, and here's where things get devious. Jazzy decided that if I would not give her treats for the things she brought me then she would steal things that were important, and then hold them for ransom for treats. This means she steals my belongings, and then lays on them with all 100 pounds of her body until a treat is given for their safe return. She has gone beyond stealing just my things and now no one who walks into our house is safe. She steals shoes, purses, pill bottles, clothes and anything else she can get her paws on from anyone, and holds them for ransom. TLDR, my dog holds things for ransom for treats. Edit, change blackmail to ransom. TLDR, cat knows how long a minute is, and can count them. We chaperone our cat, when she goes outside into our, mostly, fenced backyard, to make sure she stays in the yard, a previous beloved cat was hit by a car. At night, I'll often give her a time limit, 10 or 15 minutes, say, because she'd stay out there for hours, if I let her. What does she care? She's a cat. When I first started doing this, I'd tell her the time limit, then count down from that number to 1. 10 minutes of failure. 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1. Then, as each minute elapsed, I'd announce the new time remaining, and do the full countdown again, stressing the new time, like, 9 minutes left, OP. 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1. 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1. For each minute, I'd do the count. After the final minute elapsed, I'd tell her it was time to go in, and to the door she would run. She's a god girl. After a few times of this, she'd already be coming to the door to go in, about the time the last minute elapsed, but before I called her, I started abbreviating my countdowns. Just counting down from the number of minutes left, instead of the whole series. Sometimes I'd forget to announce a minute or a few, and pick up with countdown at the actual remaining number and to the door she will come when time is up, even if I fail to announce the last few minutes. These days, I can just give her a time limit, and they vary, based on how I feel, from 30 minutes to as little as 5 minutes, and she'll be coming to the door when time is up, without a countdown or a call. 
Sometimes even when I'm browsing Reddit and forget to keep track of the time, she's pretty close to right on the minute. It was in the evening in my room at, and I was standing in the kitchen and making dinner it was pretty quiet the TV wasn't on. Phones were on vibrate the house has two cats and one was asleep in my room at's room the other walked up to us. My cat has severe anxiety issues she wasn't abused, but has always had issues interpreting other cats social signals, and is terrified of all of them. I took her in as an older kitten from a friend, and she was even terrified of her own sister. So she ignores the other cat in the house and only really interacts with me she's fairly quiet, only really meowing, if you have a fancy food she wants, and hissing to tell other cats to back off, if she gets scared. But I swear to faking god she made such a weird sound, when she walked up to us that day I looked down at her and said hi, and she replied bulbul, while looking me in the eye just this bizarre sound I'd never heard a cat utter in my life, and I've been around cats, since I was a kid. My rumor just turned and looked at me and I looked at him and then we looked at her confused as hell and started teasing her like yeah, is that so, Cassie? We still tease her about it and make that sound at her it did sound just like human speech. The other cat knows how to open and turn door knobs. I also had a mare press me into the wall to shield me from a wasp swarm and take the brunt of the stings herself while quivering in pain, standing very still so she wouldn't crush me. There are so many things. My brother's old cat, Heathcliff, could open doors. My old cat, Spices, thought I was quite stupid and would very obviously drag his food and or water bowl across the floor when they were empty. I have never been permitted by any cat to go to the bathroom without an audience. But a more recent one. I had a cat, Mischief, who I lost last year. But a short time before that, I had gotten one of those blanket scarves in my FabFitFun box. Well, Mischief decided that was obviously for him, so he took it. I took it back. He looked me in the eyes, maintaining eye contact that said, No, this is mine now, and took it back from me again. So I was told. It became his. For some reason he liked to tear at it with his teeth, though. Slightly less intelligent behaviors, Spices used to jump off my balcony, wearing his leash and harness, and then howl for me to come and get him. Luckily it was just a fourplex, so the apartment was close enough to the ground. He did this repeatedly, apparently never learning that he was not going to make it to the ground. Maybe he enjoyed being rescued, I don't know. Oh. This is probably the best one my dad told me that this dog we had, when I was really small, Demon, had been to my grandma's house in my dad's truck once. It was in another town, but close to our hometown. Apparently one time my mom was in the hospital and my dad asked Demon, where's mom's name? So Demon went looking for her and walked all the way to my grandma's house in that other town that he'd only been to once before. Silly dog went past the town that had the hospital. He also demon was a big Russian or German. I forget. Wolfhound. We also had a Pomeranian named Buttons. Buttons once stuck his head in demon's mouth when demon was yawning and demon looked horrified as he spit him out. Edit. Oh my god I have more. Used to have a dog. Cuddles. You'd give him a treat and he'd eat it really fast and then look around like he lost it and of course you'd have to give him another one, right? I mean it's not his fault it disappeared. More for mischief and spices. Spices used to like to play chase. He liked to be chased. One time he woke me up at 4 in the morning and I had to explain to him that no, we were not playing chase just then. I think mischief was afraid of the dark. Their litter box used to be located in the basement. One night, Mischief woke me up and made it quite clear that he needed to be escorted to the litter box and have the light turned on for him. I was permitted to sit on the landing and wait. But yes, I had to wait until he was done and back up the stairs before I could turn the light off and go back to bed. I don't know why he only did that once. But the reason I think he was afraid of the dark, besides that time, was because once the lights were off, he would cry, and when I would call him, he would haul us and get to me as fast as he could. My dog clearly understands more than she responds to, if the word back quote belly is mentioned, she rolls over for belly rubs. Especially entertaining when discussing a pork belly recipe with my in-laws. 
She has this playful growling behavior, she's a chatty husky, and sometimes when she's tired it gets deep and sounds less friendly. I raise an eyebrow at her, and she wags her tail twice, collects as many toys as she can carry, and puts herself in her crate for time out. Same thing if someone says she's being grumpy or a tired furball. On weekends, she picks up two of my sneakers and leaves them by the door, and always 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 right on the left and left on the right, they're usually mismatched. I have a large collection of van slash converse with her leash and a bull while I shower. Only on weekends. She's trained my 18 month old niece to ask to give her a cookie every time she visits, 5, 6 times per week, multiple cookies. Mayor also knocks her toys off the deck into the play yard below, so she can get released to run down the stairs and check if her backyard best friend can come out to play. Oh, and she's recently taken to pushing the knobs around on the grill, that one has me puzzled. My sister's cat is obsessed with our dog's food, not with eating it, she doesn't care about that. But for some reason she just wants to tear into the bag and make the biggest hole possible, then proceed to scatter it all over the kitchen floor. Obviously, we are not a fan of this. In the last month, she has learned how to open the cabinets, climb inside, and drag the food out. We moved the food to a higher cabinet over the fridge and moved a box in front to stop her from opening it. She pushed the box off the fridge, opened the cabinet, and then proceeded to throw the food off the fridge. We moved the food into the same closet we put our recycling in. Every time I would go into the kitchen, she would wait for me to open the closet and try to sneak in without me noticing. This worked once before we moved the food again. We moved the food to the pantry. The pantry has a door handle which had to be turned, so problem solved, no, nope. She learned how to use the door handle because nobody locks it, got herself inside, tore into the food, left it scattered in the pantry, then closed the door again on her way out, so we didn't see it until we went to feed the dog. Now we are keeping the food in a plastic container. Let's see how long it takes her to work around that. My girl, Chio, likes to play this game she made up when she wants to play, and that person she wants to play with is walking around the house. She runs off ahead of where she anticipates you're headed and waits for you to walk by, then she jumps up, grabs you, she was declawed before I got her, and runs away. Reminds me of a cuter version of Tag, where no one slaps a sheet out of you. Up until recently, she really only did it to me, and occasionally my sister, but she did it to my boyfriend a couple weeks back, and scared him so bad he was mad at himself for nearly socking the sheet out of her. She's really sensitive to how people feel and him being upset ruined her game, so she's been playing it less lately, and hasn't done it to him since. Lol. But, when we had other pets, she's really good at suckering them into doing things that get them in trouble and leave her innocent. She's spoiled and I had to get her in trouble too, so she wouldn't do it anymore, but she still tries sneaky stuff sometimes. She also comes to find me and rolls around, trying to be cute if I'm sad, sometimes before I even realize something is wrong. She's just smart. Obligatory not my pet, but Togo was one of the heroic huskies who led a dog sled team during the historic 1925 gnome serum run that made Balto famous for being the last one over the finish line. Togo's team actually took the longest and most dangerous stretch of the delivery. Togo was incredible. There was a time before the serum run where Leon had Seppala, his owner and driver, was separated from the mainland when an ice flow broke free setting him adrift in the arctic waters. The reins had snapped in such a way that they lay across the water, still attached to the sled, but not to the dogs. Seppala said that Togo frantically jumped on the opposite shore as his master began to float away. A look of determined focus overtook Togo's expression as he searched out the reins of the sled in the snow, still resting on the near bank. Togo lifted the reins in his mouth and pulled mightily, but the current was moving the ice flow further out to sea. Without missing a beat Togo gave another massive tug, turned around and flopped to the ground. He rolled in place and wrapped the reins around his chest twice, then three times, until they felt secure. Using the full strength of his legs with the reins now firmly affixed to his torso the sled dog hauled the ice flow back. Once close enough, Seppala hurled the sled to shore and jumped after it finally reaching solid ground once more. 
Togo had never been taught to wrap the rope around himself like that and had clearly figured it out on his own in the panic of the moment. Later on, Seppala and Togo took the longest stretch of the Gnome Serum Run, or 325 mile round trip, through blinding whiteout snowstorms and deadly shifting ice, to save the Alaskan village. While Seppala was dismayed that Balto received the praise and the press for a 52 mile run simply because he was there at the finish line, while Togo went largely unnoticed by comparison, Togo and Seppala did appear in a Lucky Strike cigarette commercial. Togo did leave his mark on the world in a big way. Togo was the father of the modern husky breed and nearly all huskies today are related to him. I used to have a chocolate lab named Kisses that was pretty dumb, except when it came to finding his way home. We lived on a large plot of land, and whenever we'd go on walks, he'd find his way back. I took him on a long bike ride once, and he ran off near the farthest point, about 50 miles away. I was really worried and spent a few hours searching. I called all the local pounds and told them to call me if a chocolate lab came in or if they heard about him. He was chipped and had my phone number and address on his collar, so I figured I'd get a call soon. So I went home with plans to come back with my car. He was sleeping on my front steps when I arrived but that's not even the most impressive thing. A couple years later I went camping with kisses and some friends. This was about 300 plus miles from home. You can guess what happened next. Little bastard disappears. I waited for him for hours, then decided to have faith. I did the routine with the pounds just in case he got picked up, but then I went home. He wasn't there. The next day I called all the shelters. No dice. The next day the same. Still nothing. Same the next day. I was going to drive back the following day, but I was awoken by scratching at the door. Little bastard scared me, but found his way home, after running an ultra marathon, somehow evading the fuzz. After that I got him a GPS collar. He died a few years back. I miss my kisses 8. Wixid. She was a black cat, and was incredibly intelligent. She had this way of meowing, that was imitation human speech. Stops, vocal tone, and head movements. Obviously the cat couldn't enunciate, but it was adorable carrying on a conversation with her. Put a leash on her. She would lay down and not move until it was removed. Show her her own reflection in a mirror. No reaction, no hissing, growling, or trying to figure out what was behind it. If she wasn't fed, she would steal food from the dinner pile, but she did it like she was just getting dinner like we were. She was jealous and did not make exceptions for my girlfriends. I loved that cat. T anyway, my mom had the bright idea to bring home a puppy. Normally, Wixit would be nice to babies, but this puppy was as big as she was. She got down low to the floor. She pulled her ears back flat on her head. Then she growled except she spoke. Go. Away. It wasn't clear or concise, and I thought I was high and hearing sheet. I smoked a lot of weed back then. Then she did it again. Twice. We got rid of the puppy. My cat, or is this a rumor thread? S'mores. My family had two puppas and a cat. Cat's litter box was in the garage. She could get to the garage via pet door. The problem is that the puppies could too. Mom decided the puppies didn't really have any good reason for going into the garage aside from causing trouble, and she talked about it with my stepdad. They ended up jamming a screw into the pet door to prevent the puppies from getting into the garage. Problem solved, now they won't go in and try to get into the trash or the litter box. Right. 10 p.m. Smalls is running around the house in a frenzy and starts meowing at my door. I guessed she wanted to play, so I let her in my room. She starts running around and crying some more for attention. But even with rubs, she doesn't stop. I soon give up and go back to lying in bed with my laptop. Smalls jumps in bed next to me and gets right beside me. Hey, is she squat I know that. I quickly get out of bed as she pups all on my bed. I'm bewildered and angered as to why she'd suddenly do that, and I have her put into the garage. As I'm throwing things away and cleaning crap, I see it, a screw in the pet door. Why is there a screw in the pet door? Yeah, turns out she did that, because she was trying to tell me that she couldn't go to her litter box. I have a cat who is insanely clever, but only uses his powers for evil. 
he is currently recovering from surgery and is stuck in an e collar, cone of shame. I took pity on him and got him a soft one, rather than the typical hard plastic, which he had weaponized and used to clear a surface of its contents in record time. We have flapless cat doors in a couple places in the house, like the laundry room, so the cats can access litter boxes, but the sheet-eating dogs can't. They are arched and look like cat-sized mouse holes. Within 2-3 days he started appearing some Z collar constantly. It's only held on with velcro, but each time, when we found the collar, it was still velcroed shut. We began to notice that the collar was almost always found next to one of the cat doors. I theorized he was getting stuck in the door and freeing himself from the collar in the ensuing struggle, but others in the house swore they saw him use the doors without issue, the collar just flipped like the frill on one of those Australian lizards, and he didn't have trouble entering and exiting Cubizo's cube cat beds. Finally he was caught in the act he was deliberately sticking his head through the cat door and pushing forward just until the collar popped through, then using the frame to provide the leverage necessary to pull his head out of the collar. Unfortunately he's not clever enough to realize that by escaping the collar and licking the wound, he's delaying healing and thus making himself have to suffer the collar even longer. My white German Shepherd was the stupidest smartest doggo ever. She was accidentally locked in our basement once, and I didn't know. I go out to the backyard she is sitting there wagging her tail. I'm all like how'd you get out here? I didn't let you out. Then I see the screen to our basement well window on the ground and the window open. These windows are 4 feet above the basement floor, always locked and screened. She unlocked it, opened it, pushed the screen out without damaging it, and hung out in the backyard till I found her. She learned how to open our front door by hitting the deadbolt with her paws and biting the doorknob and turning it. Our sliding glass door in the back, she pushed the lock open with her nose, the board along the bottom of the door that was locking it, she pulled out with her mouth and then bit the handle and pulled till she had enough room to nuzzle it open. She was put in boarding with her brother once when we went out of town. I get a call from the doggy daycare at 2 in the morning. I frantically pick up thinking something horrible happened. Nope. The owner called to let me know she opened her cage. Then her brother's cage. Opened the hallway door to the front office by biting to knob. Did the same to the next door and set off the burglar alarm. The police arrived. Look in the window. And she is standing there with her brother. Both wagging their tails. And waiting to play with someone. She was so incredibly smart, yet I could not train her independently for the life of me instead she learned all her commands by watching her brother. She was the best, and it was almost scary the level of logical thinking she was capable of. My dog wears a harness for his walks. To put it on, I would have to physically grab each foreleg and place it through the loops of his harness, before pulling it up to his chest and fastening it behind his shoulder blades. The only problem is that he would get so excited for his walk that he couldn't sit still for long and would step out of his harness if I didn't move fast enough. One day I was in a foul mood and extremely impatient. He wouldn't sit still for me to put on his harness. I became exasperated and threw the harness down on the floor and said, fine, you do it. Would you believe that he looked down at the harness, used his nose to arrange it on the floor, and stepped into the loops, and sat waiting for me to fasten it? Calm as could be. It made me question every unkind thought about his intelligence, and sent me into a bit of an existential crisis, in contemplating his sentience and the slave-like dynamics of our relationship. The next day I tried it again, and that flash of brilliance was gone. Same old dumb dog. I've tried it many times, and he has never recreated that behavior. I still think he is more intelligent than I give him credit for but there is an insurmountable communication boundary. I'm way too late to the party, but I have a tuxedo cat named DB Cooper. Cooper is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Plus, although there's nothing wrong with him, he fatchts constantly. He's also unsure how to interact with humans, so he follows us and guests around the house 5 feet behind us ducking around corners, and if you look at him as go Cooper, he responds with a hearty mutt mo sound. Cooper loves earplugs, I guess they are small and squishy, perfect toys. My husband has been working nights street home, so I've been wearing them to bed. We start seeing Cooper with lots of earplugs. My husband asks 
Did you put the box away? And I'm like I guess. He proceeds to go to the closet and slowly and dramatically show me that the earplugs box gets closed. The box gets stuffed into the front compartment of his camping backpack. The camping backpack gets zipped up. The backpack goes into the closet. The closet door is then shut. All of these steps are demonstrated with slow, exaggerated movements. One hour later Mudmo. Cooper has a bunch of new earplugs. We look at each other and head towards the closet. The backpack is unzipped. The box is open. Here's the kicker the cat closed the damn closet door to cover his tracks. I'm starting to think he really does live a double life. Our boxer is aggressive to people coming in the house. In particular he is aggressive to my youngest sister-in-law, who is a stereotypical selfie taking 18 year old girl with a daily beauty regimen and a horde of neighborhood kids who all look like Disney Channel clones of each other. The dog is more aggressive with her, where he will jump and even snap at her sometimes before calming down. My theory is that this is actually because of parties she throws every weekend. They are loud, house shakingly loud, and the house is full of 20, 50 people every weekend. We now keep the dog on a leash in the house during this and often take him with one of the family to a particular room, but he can obviously hear the chaos throughout the house it's right outside the door he's behind. After all, my theory is that he was initially locked up alone in a room for the first few of these by my sister-in-law. The rest of the family does not believe me that she'd ever done such a thing, but I know that before we worked out a good system, she would lock the dog in a room, not for long in terms of cruelty, but long enough that he knew he was stuck in there. TLDR, pretty sure our dog is terrified of the chaotic parties my sister-in-law has every weekend and realizes they come from her, so tries to scare her into leaving whenever she walks in. My dad's friend had this awesome saltwater fish tank. As a kid I'd always ask to go see it, because it had the coolest fish and anemones and stuff. This dude eventually gets an octopus for this tank. Not a huge one, but like adult man's palm sized one. It was cool, but always hid, so you never saw it. Sometime after the octopus is put in the tank, he starts having all this trouble with the fish tank. He'd been waking up to low water levels and just could not find how or where it was leaking. Filter motor kept needing to be replaced because it was breaking, etc. The guy was getting fed up because it was killing his corals and he was losing fish due to all this. So he is talking to my dad about it and going a bit crazy monitoring this fish tank. They are super expensive, so I can see why he was getting manic about his sheet getting faked up. One day, he stops over the house to talk to my dad. Turns out he solved the mystery. Octopus boy has been sacrificing limbs to the filter motor some nights in order to fack up the water flow and cause the water to squirt out of the tank instead of back into it. He was doing it on purpose to lower the water level. Once the level was low enough, octopus would come out and pick off the fish in the tank and eat them. Mother faker was strategically losing an arm every once in a while so he could wholesale slaughter fish easier. Not my dogs, but my friends have two rescue dogs. A Wesji and a Zuchin. Bitchin fry slash Shih Tzu cross. They had the Wesji about 5 years by the time they got the Zuchin. This Zuchin was bought by a Russian couple. We assume it was a handbag dog for the wife, based off her FB and what we were told about her by the vet. This Zuchin is very fluffy and incredibly loyal and loving, so would have been the cutest fluffiest tinny puppy. Then she grew up. She is no bigger than the Wesji, but she is incredibly strong, like knock you over strong, and she requires a lot of attention and a lot of food, and has seemingly unending energy she became too much to handle. They barely fed her, locked her outside, she loves the outdoors, but she is very much an indoor dog, and gave her no attention. Eventually they abandoned her on the street. We believe she was wandering the streets for days trying to find her owners. She is the loyalest dog I know. When found and brought back to the couple, they brought her to the vet and abandoned her. Literally changed numbers and moved away. My friends adopted her, and she is insanely smart. I bring food from work to them all the time. I always carry it in my bag. So she very quickly learned how to unzip my bag with her teeth. She got neutered, hated her cone. She went out to the terrace and used the fence to pull off the cone and was back inside within 2 minutes. 
The most intelligent was when she smelt the ham that was defrosting way out of her reach. She will do anything to get food, given she was barely fed as a puppy and had to fend on the streets, it's understandable. With her owners asleep in the next room, she somehow silently pushed her chair with metal legs across a tiled floor against the counter, used the chair to jump up onto the counter, and push a delf bowl off the counter, falling four feet onto a tiled floor, without damaging the bowl, so both her and the west he could eat. And they managed to eat the whole thing. We were so amazed that the owners weren't even mad. I had a bearded dragon as a pet when I was younger. We did this thing where we would take her out of the cage, set her on the floor and let her run around the house a little bit for exercise, since her cage was fairly small at the time. Plus it was fun to watch her run around the house as quick as she could. We did this about once a week, and we had a couch set up in an odd spot near the bay window. It was odd because of the shape of the couch and the wall there which made it that it was impossible to approach from the top except for small bugs or sides and was pressed all the way down to the floor as well so no gap. One time we let her out and see her run over towards the sides of the couch, clawing at it like she tries to get in. Typically we would put her away after that because we didn't want her to ruin the furniture. One day we let her out and she does the exact same thing. So my mom and I get curious and move the couch a little and she bolts into the little space behind the couch. Four spiders come running out and she chases them all down and eats them. We look behind it and there was a nest of spiders behind our couch and she was trying to get to them for weeks. Needless to say, she had pretty good eats that day and slept the rest of the day away in her cage. My cat likes to lick and chew plastic bags. I don't let him. For the same reason you wouldn't let your baby play with plastic bags, but he's really intent on them, and he particularly loves harder, more crinkly plastic. One time, not long after he was maturing into an adult cat, I had one of those sweet factory bags, and was nibbling at some candy, while watching TV in my living room late into the night. Tom, the cat, kept jumping up, and trying to grab the bag from me, and I kept gently reprimanding him, and putting the bag various places coffee table, nightstand, tucked into couch, etc., but he was dead set on it. Finally, I've had enough around 1am and decide to go to bed. Tom has also essentially given up and was laying in the living room, not facing the kitchen, when I got up and moved to the kitchen to put the bag away. The cat didn't follow me, but stayed completely asleep, or so it seemed, in the living room. I put the bag away in a cupboard, but then, thinking better of it, I had a weird sixth sense he was gonna try to find the bag, decided to put it even further away, in a cupboard above the sink, never used before by me or anyone else in the house. Then, I went to bed. I had a usual routine of brushing teeth slash washing up slash reading a book, and turning on my night light slash white noise combo, and all of that took around 15 minutes. I was laying in bed for a further 5 or so minutes when I hear the distinctive thump 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 of something jumping onto the kitchen countertop and a cupboard being open slash closed. I think to myself back quote no faking way and get out of bed to find my cat happily crouched over the sweet factory bag on the countertop, crunching away. To this day I think that Matherfica waited purposefully for me to be in bed before he tried it. My two dogs worked together to steal the Christmas ham, Tilly, a golden retriever, and Zala, our Odesian Ridgeback. We were hosting a Christmas party at the house, my dad and I usually does the cooking, whilst my sister and mum greeted guests. During events at home, we usually put Zala in her room, her cage filled with toys and pillows. Because we were afraid she would knock some of the children out due to her sheer size and energy, we let Tilly roam around, but this Christmas she set up camp in the kitchen, her eye on the ham. A family friend came by to say hello to my dad and I, so we left the ham unattended on the counter whilst we greeted our guests. Meanwhile, Tilly was smart enough to firstly realize that she was too small to reach the ham on the counter, to then figured out that Zola was big enough to steal it, to then somehow open her cage, to let her out whilst my dad and I were distracted. We assume this was what happened, because no one else was near the cage slash kitchen. My two dogs then stole the Christmas ham and ran through the house, past all our guests, into the garden, and shared the main dish. 
I have dog puzzles that my first dog couldn't fully figure out, or it would take her a really long time. I got a new puppy almost a year ago. When he was 3 months he figured out how to do the expert level puzzle in 5 minutes. That's when I realized how smart he was. I guess this isn't too creepy, but I took him over to my parents' house for the first time. I forget his age, I'm sure it was less than 6 months though. My mom loves spoiling pups, so she gave them a treat immediately when they got there. It was only one treat. We had to leave them, my two dogs my my parents one dog, alone for a while. When we came home there was one cabinet open. It was the one that held the treats and other food too. Only the treats were sprawled across the floor, and it looked like all the dogs had a feast. Considering my first dog had lived with my parents for a while, and had visited many times at this point, my parents' dog obviously lived there, it had to be the new puppy. He knew which cabinet it was, and got the treats for them all to enjoy. He also was really good about staying in the yard. He's shy so he preferred to stay by me. One day he snuck out of the yard. It became a pattern, so we ended up having to put him on a lead. I decided to follow him once, because he would always leave and come back. It was never a wild chase. Well I found out he knew each of the neighbors that put cat food out for strays. When he snuck out he would go to each house, eat, and come back. He's a genius and he mischievously uses it to his advantage. I got a fence installed. My dog has creepy patience. A friend came over to watch a movie with my then girlfriend and I and he hopped up in his lap. Not unusual. My friend is sitting in a chair next to the corner with the end table between the chair and the wall. My girlfriend and I are on the couch that is in the opposite corner about 10 feet away. The friend starts laughing after 20, 25 minutes and I look over and the dog has crawled up behind his neck and is just making himself a comfortable neck pillow. This, this is unusual for him. About 45 minutes later I look over, and my dog has slowly stretched his way out, and retrieved a singular teddy gram without making a noise. His eyes shoot wide the fac open, but his body is frozen. I call out, slash you slash Gralia's dog. The mother faker proceeds to flip the teddy graham up tear up my friend's shoulder a little bit with a frantic scramble, catch the teddy graham in his mouth, while swan diving onto the table, to explode the remaining box of teddy grahams. And drink before doing that hilarious dog that lost its footing on a slick floor scramble before darting to his bed and acting like I didn't know what the fact just happened. He will also go fact with something in another room to distract you from something he wants in the room yeah, in that he isn't supposed to have. Then he runs back into the room you were in to get the thing he really wants. He also does this with other animals and toys he'd like to play with. When my dog bug is in the room, my bird Vameda will toss pieces of his food onto the floor and wait for my dog to come over to eat it he then does and tries to attack bug because he is a terrible creature when eating dinner, bug will bark at nothing and then run over to me acting all proud like he did something and expecting a treat which I give him because I'm weak. At night, bug will get up and scratch at the door. When I get up to let him out, he turns around and steals my pillow. Bug knows the difference between his stuffed animals and mine. He has never destroyed a stuffed animal that didn't belong to him. And he doesn't do it by smell, because he does it with new ones too I never taught him this. It's just something he's done. Since he was a baby Bug will also remember where we put his toys to hide them from the other dog. He'll sit in front of the door to the cupboard, or whatever and just wait until we open it so he can grab his toy. This normally happens several hours slash days after we put the toy in there. Meda also likes to scream bloody murder because he's a bird. Normally I ignore this, so he's taken to being eerily quiet, so I go check on him, and the little faker hides from me. So I open his cage to find him and that's when he runs out and dives into my shirt. This'll probably get lost, unless you're really bored. My dog growing up had a really creative way of getting our food. When we were eating, she would find the narrowest point between the kitchen where the food was, and the place where we were eating, and lay across it, so we had to step over her, and I'm assuming she washed hoping we would trip over her, and spill the food. If we were eating in a different room that day, she was in a new position. If we rearranged some things and there was a different narrowest spot, she changed to that new spot. 
I don't know if it ever worked, but hope sprung eternal for that dog. On a different note, my last dog would get really excited when we got home and grabbed her nilla bone to chew on. Of course, if I were coming home from work, she would inevitably need to go to the bathroom, so I'd let her out into my backyard. Well, she would pick up her nilla bone and go. While she was peeing, she would get distracted and drop the toy and therefore return empty-handed, mouthed, when she was done with everything. All I had to do was look at her sternly and say her name, and she'd go right to where the bone was, grab it, and come back in. My dog knows I'm home before it should be possible for her to know this. Only for me and no one else, despite others in the building or hallway. So I'm not sure whether this is intelligence or some freaky animal bonding stuff going on. My dog will without fail get out of bed or her chair and will be waiting at the door at least 15 seconds prior to me entering the hallway. The hallway to our floor in an apartment building. I park below the building and live in the top floor. There is a door leading to the hallway from the elevator slash stairwell and my wife will hear the door open. This door is 150 feet away from our apartment on that floor, and without fail my dog will already be waiting by our door, before the hallway door opens. Every single time I come home, and my wife is already there, she says the dog has been waiting there for up to 30 seconds before my wife hears the whole door. Oh and the dog never gets up throughout the day, if she hears the hall door open, she consistently does it once, only when I come home. She doesn't do this for my wife, only me. I initially thought she could smell me, or hear my footsteps, but my wife says the dog is waiting too far in advance for that. My dog is super communicative. I can tell what he wants pretty much all the time. Wants to go outside? Jiggle the door knob with his nose. Not near the front door. He'll jiggle any door knob because he knows it'll make just enough of a noise to wake me up. Thirsty? He'll walk over to the sink and stand in front of it. He's a great Dane, so I'll let him drink straight out of the faucet sometimes. If I don't recognize he's standing there he'll start licking it which makes a noise loud enough for me to know what he's talking about. Hungry? He'll walk to the bowl, walk back like he's asking if I saw him walk to the bowl. If I ignore it, he'll go back and forth. If he wants to play, but can't find any toys he'll grab a shoe, bring it over, and spit it out in front of me to let me know to get him a toy. I'm not sure how he learned this. He knows the sound of my keys versus other people's keys, and what that means. I have a louder engine, and he knows the sound of my car and the difference between mine, and my two cowalkers who have similar vehicles. When I come home at night he's at the window waiting, because he heard my engine. He also knows the sound of my roommate's car locking, and has started to recognize my boyfriend's car door shutting. It's crazy that we have such a good communication with dogs. I know he understands what I say, and I can understand what he says, probably 95% of the time at least. We are two incredibly different species with no similarities in language and we can still effectively communicate, and I think that's awesome. Our dog, Benny, has a lot of little quirks. They first became apparent on Christmas Eve. We went out for a Christmas dinner and came back to our Christmas cookies on the floor. All of them, except 10 were taken. We instantly questioned the dog, who now had a belly that dragged the ground. Benny was usually very healthy. We dragged him out and scolded him, and he just sat there in ignorant bliss high off his cookies. Well now we decide to take our conversation to the living room, and my brother sits on the couch. We all hear a crunch. There was a cookie behind the cushions, hidden by pillows. We also found one behind the couch itself, out of sight, perfectly intact, and three behind the chair, with the same pristine care. We hunted cookies down for an hour. We found 29 both upstairs and downstairs, all of the doors closed, no trace of knowing where they might be. We found some on New Year's, and even one in the vent on Valentine's Day, along with one in the kitchen drawer, that we rarely use. Our dog might be an evil mastermind. TLDR our dog hid 40 cookies around the house in 2 hours. All intact, with no trace of a dog even touching them. My cat had ear mites, and had to wear one of those cones, to keep him from scratching his ears raw. One day about a week into it, he came sauntering into the living room like it was any other day. But he seemed particularly happy with life on this day. So much so that I greeted him, 
Hey cat, what's up? It took a minute or two before I realized what was wrong with this picture. He wasn't wearing his cone. I thought time was of the essence, because if he scratched himself badly it might make for another very costly trip to the vet. I ran all over the house looking for it, and after close to an hour of frantic searching, I finally found it behind a door of a room that he never went into, where the door was always open. It was impressive enough that this little howdeny had somehow escaped his cone, but not only that, he had also hidden it in the very best spot in the house. He was such an awesome cat, the best I've ever met. So smart and full of personality, and just all around cool. He was a Russian blue for anyone wondering, are they all like this? He also sat at the table with me and my dad every day for dinner, just his adorable face peeking above the edge of the table every single time, like he was any other member of the family. My cat is very responsive to certain things. No so much creepy though. If some other cat is inside the house, we have a cat door, she'll come to me and look toward the door like someone else is there. Like she's pushing slash herding me toward where she wants. If someone is coming to the front door, she can hear a car door slam or someone walking, she'll start growling, she hates people. Usually before I notice. If I start yelling and cursing at random sheet, I live alone, so she's the only one who hears it, she comes to me and starts meowing to try to calm me down. I come from work and she's usually waiting for me by the door. I go to sleep and she sleeps with me on my pillow. She wakes me up when it's time to wake up. I'll forget to feed her when I get home, so she'll stand by the doorway near her food and just look at me a certain way, like forget something. She loves catnip a bit too much. If I just say the word she knows what it means. She also pushes me toward her cat scratch post a lot where I put her catnip. There's probably more, but I can't remember right now. I'm currently a dog trainer and have worked in a couple of different doggy daycare facilities. The last place I worked had a regular named Teddy. Teddy was a goofy golden retriever who loved pranks. One thing Teddy would frequently do was open the gates to different yards which would then merge groups of dogs that shouldn't necessarily be together and he would sit back and smile while we frantically ran around separating them all again. Eventually, we got these little hooks that would prevent the gates from opening. Naturally, Teddy watched us with the hooks, figured out how we were using them, took one out himself, and proceeded to open the gate with no issue. He was very proud of himself. The smartest, most annoying thing he did, however, was indoors. We had a big bowl of water sitting next to the sink, and it was always a pain to mop up after super messy drinkers and pups that liked to go swimming. The owner was super strict about immediately mopping up any water, she was also strict about literally any and everything, but whatever, so, in order to avoid getting yelled at, we would clean up spills really quickly. Teddy noticed this, thought it was funny, and came up with a great idea. On multiple occasions, Teddy would puncture a hole in a tennis ball, carry the tennis ball to the water bowl, fill it with water, then roll it around the floor, leaving long streaks of water. Then he'd stare at us while wagging his tail and holding the stupid, broken ball in his mouth. He thought it was hilarious. Teddy made my life so much more difficult. I miss that little sheet. When I was a child my parents made a plate of vanilla crescents for Christmas and left them on the high dining room table, think bar stool level, thinking it was safe from the puppy. Dad woke up in the middle of the night to the dog sitting square on his chest and burping in his face. When he smelt vanilla on the dog's breath he ran downstairs to an empty tray on the dining room table. Turns out the dog followed the cat's path up onto the table and ate all the cookies. Oh. Another one. One time my parents' friends came to visit from Europe and the wife was staying longer with her two oldest kids while the husband was flying back earlier with the youngest. Well, my parents decided to leave all us kids with the wife while they drove the husband back to the airport. The dog, seeing my parents packing up suitcases into the car, decided that they must have forgotten him. He promptly went through a hole in the fence to the backyard and walked the two I'm across trails and some large intersections to my grandparents' house. When they weren't home he walked down the street to their friend's house where he found them having coffee. He also used to walk himself around the block every day at 330. Man I miss that dog. 
I have three cats. My one cat is a lovable Maine Coon who is shy, introverted, and keeps to herself. The one other girl is a princess and loves the attention, and then I have a young crazy male. The shy girl has this thing with her collar. Like it's her collar and a part of her. If you take the collar off to really brush or pet her she has this mini freak out. Like you can see it gives her anxiety. That some part of her is missing, or she is incomplete. Our male cat could never wear a collar, because he always manages to get it off, but the other female has worn one, just as long as the shy cat. One day the other female is missing her collar. We can't find it anywhere. We looked everywhere or so we thought. Then one day the shy cat uncharacteristically strolls into the room with my fiance and I, jumps up on the couch between the two of us, and drops her sister's collar that we couldn't find between us. She looks down at it, looks at us, gives her guttural meow, receives pets, and returns to her loft. It was so cute. Like she knew somehow that when her collar is missing she feels incomplete, and on some level it gives her anxiety. That of course that means her sister must be feeling the same with her collar missing, and that the humans are the only ones who can fix the issue. So she put her social anxiety away, to make sure her sister wouldn't worry anymore. Honestly so friggin cute. My best friend in the world, R.I.P. Lex, was a 65 pound rescue pit who I found in a shelter when he was 3 years old. I adopted him, and eventually we ended up in New York City together. Because he loved to run around, but there was no open space for him, and the dog runs always freaked me out, because he was a bit confused about how to interact with other dogs, I bought this 50 foot leash, because I found a spot in Central Park, where a lot of people didn't go, and with a long leash he could get the feel of running free. Well, the first time I put him on this 50 foot leash he took off sprinting, and unfortunately didn't stop, until he nearly pulled my arm out of socket, and he ended up with a hell of a lesson, that 50 feet was exactly how much room he had to run. After that first experience, a week or so later I took him out in that same leash again. He ran nearly 49 feet at a full sprint, stopped on a dime, turned and looked at me, and then ran a full circle without stretching the leash out further. There were many times after that day that I took him to the same spot with the same leash, and he never again ran to a point of full tension on that leash. I don't know how, but he learned a permanent lesson from that first experience. My dog is everyone's immediate best friend. Everyone. Imagine Chris Treacher in dog form. The most friendly happy dog ever. She works with disabled kids, and is incredibly patient, when she gets accidentally gets hit by kids with little control over their limbs, I had never seen her not try to make out with, like, all passers by. So, when she started to get visibly upset by a man standing near us at a train station, I was pretty concerned. Something wasn't right. I hadn't even noticed him. She was pacing, and whining. He approached us, and asked if he could pet her. As he extended his arm to touch her, she bared her teeth and growled. I've had my dog for almost a decade, and had never ever seen her act like this. I pulled her back, and told him he probably shouldn't pet her. He walked away. We had a bit of a wait for our train. The man returned after a bit, and started screaming at me. I'm a beach, cunt, ho, etc. My dog wasn't having it, and barked her little face off. We ran over to where more people were. I watched as the guy turned into an alley, taking swigs from a flask. Then he started taking off his pants and looked at me. I didn't stick around to see what was going to happen next, and we found a security officer. This was a few years ago, and nothing like this has occurred since. If it does, I'm going to trust her and just start running. I have another story about another cat I've posted about elsewhere, but it fits here too, and deserves to be remembered. I had a cat who was a total beach, to me and everyone else in the house, including a dog and another cat. Just a mean cat who would take your kindness, and convert it to hatred and spit it back at you. When Yvette told us she was probably crusty, because she had some bullshit rare condition and some of her back teeth were bothering her, we paid over a grand to have them taken out. Probably a scam by the vet, but whatever. We even had her on some form of kitty prozac for a while, but her personality never changed a bit. She had done something bad one day, while I was about to go to work, probably knocking over a garbage can to root through the garbage like an idiot, and I was standing there telling her sternly not to do it again. 
Suddenly she hissed and leapt at me, except she sucked at jumping and latched onto my thighs with four sets of claws faking ow. Oh, I was pissed. I threw her off and chased her up the stairs, yelling at her to never pull that sheet again. She actually seemed apologetic, I thought. Like she knew she had crossed the line and went too far. Then I went to work. It was a Friday, and when I got home, I threw myself into my big ol' favorite chair to discuss plans for the evening. We settled on watching a movie at home, so we were just about to go out to rent a movie. Yes kids, that used to be a thing, and before walking out the door I slapped my ass out of habit to make sure my wallet was in my back pocket. My hand felt wetness. Well that's weird, I thought, and brought it back around to look at it, and saw that it was covered in, what, was that, melted chocolate? Then I smelled it. No sir, that was sheet. I looked on my chair, and there was a giant puddle of liquidy sheet all over it. The faking cat had shat all over my favorite chair, completely on purpose. I seriously stayed away from her as much as possible after that. Like, I thought, if I take this to the next level now, and try to scold or punish her somehow, what would she do next to take it to the next next level? Whatever the cat version of faking nuclear is, I was afraid she would bring it down upon me without mercy. What can I say? I surrendered. I'd been beaten by a faking cat. After attacking the dog unprovoked one too many times, she became an outdoor cat with a comfortable outdoor cat house that included a bed and heating pad. We did our best to try to make that cat happy, but she was always just a beach. She was definitely happier outside though, because then this cat, that had never seen the outdoors, since coming home with us is a tiny kitten found her true calling, murder. She'd had no other cat to tutor her in the ways of cold-blooded murder. She was born with this bloodlust imprinted in her brain from birth. She loved killing things, birds, chipmunks, anything. I suspect she liked to look right into their eyes while she killed them. Then we moved houses and we took her and her cat house along with us, but after a couple of days at the new place she disappeared and we never saw her again. I still see her in my nightmares sometimes though. Basset hound donors will be able to relate here. My dad never had a high opinion of our Basset. She was kind gentle, unassuming, and completely trusting of our family, and she rewarded our love and care with 12 blissful years of companionship and love. But she wasn't very bright my dad's default example would be how he would coo at her in a gleeful cheery tone, but say things like I'm gonna eat you, you're a stupid dog, yes you are, instead of the typical who's a good girl, she would get from the rest of us. As time went on, my dad became more brazen. He would leave gates down or doors open because she was too stupid to realize she could go those routes to navigate our house. One day, we had company over. My dad decided to block only one route to the kitchen because a dog is too stupid to use the other route. We are eating dinner and the talk shifts to our dog and my dad gets in his element. Starts talking about how dumb the dog is, how she doesn't know simple things. He finishes by saying look, I've even left the one hallway open. She will never use it. As he says that, a tiny basset hound head pokes through the doorway and stares right at him with this heard you were talking sheet look. It was perfect. I've never seen my dad more shocked. Don't get me wrong, my dad loved our dog as much as the rest of us. He just didn't think highly of her intelligence. Until that day, of course. One day, my dog yelped and came into the house to get me. I ask what he wants, and he points at the door. I assume he wants me to close it, he prefers the doors to be closed when he's not using them. As I stand, he positions himself so that I'm between him and the door. He does this when he wants me to investigate something. I go outside and let him steer me, he has a good herding instinct and he pushes me until I can tell the object of interest is a wasp nest, he keeps looking at it as we walk. I say, oh, that, and point. He freezes and points. I buzz at him like a bee, and he turns and sprints to the house. I tell my wife about it, and when it comes to the part where I buzz, I get curious and say, watch this. I get his attention and buzz at him. He starts jumping and turning in circles, frantically searching the air behind and around him. He realizes it's me, and gives me this look. It was oddly human. This look, like he got the joke and was laughing. 
Over the next couple of days, I play this joke on him where I buzz like a bee, and he leaps around searching for one. It always ends with this look, like, ahaha, you got me. One day, he's sitting next to me on the couch. The house is mostly dark, and the wife is at a conference in Boise, Idaho. He perks up and looks down the hallway toward the bedroom door. Just left of the bedroom door is a door to outside, and I think he's maybe looking at that. I pause our show and listen hard. Nothing. He gets up and goes to the edge of the hallway, pointing hard and growling. He looks over his shoulder at me, and so I get up to investigate. He gets behind me, but close, so his shoulder is basically against my calf as we walk. I check the handle to the door to go outside. Locked. He hasn't taken his eyes off the bedroom door. He's still growling low. I get to the bedroom door and put my hand on the knob. I turn it, and as I start to push the door open, he sprints to the other end of the hall. I turn on the bedroom light and see nothing. Looking out, he's at the end of the hallway giving me that same laughter look, as if to say, gotcha. I have three cats. One is allowed outside, one is not, because she's far too friendly and has no fear of cars, and one is sometimes allowed because he goes through spells of wandering off for a few days, but is fine other times. My German shepherd works out which cats are being kept in at any one time, and if the back door is open she'll let cat hash one out and herd the others back in, unless she's seen hash 3 be let out recently, in which case he's allowed outside too. Otherwise she blocks the doorway and nudges them back. Edit for more clever things I forgot. If we get the brush out to brush the floor, she jumps on the couch out the way without being told. If we get the mop out, she knows she's not allowed to walk on the floor till it dries, so she goes to her bed instead. Also taught herself commands she likes to lie on people when they watch TV with her head on your chest. Except she has really tall ears, and if she lifts her head up you can't see. My mum used to try and peer over her ears whilst moaning to me or my dad about how the dog wouldn't put her head down. So she was missing the film happened a couple of times and then the dog had taught herself to lie flat when someone says, put your head down. She's a good dog and does not want to inconvenience her humans. Bit late to the party so this will probably get buried, but I think it's a good example. We have two dogs, Wheatley, a Sheltie, and Corin, a Pitbull. We adopted Wheatley as a puppy, but we just adopted Corin in October. She's had a rough life and is finally learning how to be a dog. For context, Wheatley is the most food motivated animal I've ever seen. For example, he will pretend to care about pet store employees until he realizes that they don't have treats, then he walks away as though they insulted him. He's not deprived or anything, and the vet says he's totally healthy. He just likes to eat. As such, he inhales his dinner, hardly chews, even though we buy kibble with big pieces, to encourage him to do so. Corin, on the other hand, is a slow eater. She won't eat, unless you are in the room and continually praise her. She also chews every single piece. It takes her almost 15 minutes to finish her bowl. Wheatley is done in under 2. He's like a vulture perpetually ready and waiting to dive into her bowl and steal her food if she's distracted. My husband usually gets home around their dinner time and they always greet him at the door. You can see where this is going. Lately, Wheatley will finish his food, casually trot out of the kitchen, then sprint to the front door and bark as though he hears my husband coming in. Corin runs out to greet him, and while she's looking for him at the front door, Wheatley sprints back to the kitchen and eats as much of her food as possible. She's catching on though, because now she waits a few seconds before leaving her food. She gets him back by intentionally flopping in doorways, so he can't get past her. She'll just give him the side eye until he starts poking her with his muzzle. They're an odd pair, but are both incredibly smart. My old cat Bozer was basically a 3 year old in a cat's body. One time he wanted to cuddle and had a pupy butt. I said you know your butt is pupy. He cleaned his butt. We would go outside for walks. I would just tell him where we are going, where not to go. He didn't listen because he's a cat. He understood well enough to wait till I'm not looking. He knew when I told him it was time to go in. He knew the property lines because I told her where to stop. When we went outside in the rain I told him we had to dry him off. 
No training required. I told him to jump up on the washing machine. He did it, and I blow dried him. He wasn't thrilled by the noises first, but got used to it being routine. If he got wet, he always wanted to cuddle after going for our walk, so I didn't want to cuddle a wet kitty. One time we were outside and my dad was watering the lawn. He didn't really care until my dad jokingly said he would spray him, then he got the fuck out of dodge lol. I still wish I could have explained to him why we had to put him to sleep. I wish I had said goodbye, he probably would have understood. BRB gonna cry a bit. My new cat is a big fluff, and he often waits for me to get home, so he can join me in my post-work bathroom stop. One day he ran in and I said, but I don't have to go. And he ran back out, and ran into the other room I usually go to. Seriously people, talk to your cats, they learn, they're very smart, if you give them a chance. We had cats, dogs, fish, even had a rabbit, when I was young, and importantly here, I had a parakeet. Parakeet round one was awesome used to take him for walks, where he'd follow me around. He'd climb as high as he could, and then glide past me, clipped wings, and repeat, repeat, repeat. Climb on me whenever he could. Well, he had passed, and he was my bird not the family's, not my little brother's, mine so my mom talked me into getting another parakeet. Bird round 2 was not so pleasant. First interaction with this alien was it biting me, and clamping on like a snapping turtle. Had to actually smack my bird engaged hand across the wall to daze the thing, and make him let go. This bird did not spend much time out of the cage. Now one of all cats, a tabby with the disposition of a miniaturized lioness, and one of the dogs, Cleopatra reincarnated in the body of a 50 pound husky, got along as well as cats and dogs. That is to say, a thin veneer of acceptance over a whirlpool of despising each other. Neither much appreciated the screeching hell spawn that occupied all living room. One day, I walk into the living room to discover the two of them together like each of them on the floor, at the same level, within striking distance, and calm, never happened before or since. Between the two was the bird cage, and one dead parakeet. I figure the cat knocked the cage off the pedestal and the dog ripped open the cage. Only time they ever cooperated on anything. Have a small dog, rat terrier slash jack russell mix. He's uncannily smart. If I tell him it's time for his bath, he'll hang his head and almost belly crawl to me, unhappy but willing. First few years, after I got him, I lived on some acreage in an old farmhouse. He would go visit the neighbors who kept livestock. Apparently the neighbors had a flea infestation with some of their animals. He came home from visiting one day and started staring at me every time I looked at him asking what. He'd hang his head and belly crawl to me. I finally asked want a bath. He jumped up and ran to the kitchen and sat at the sink, which is where I generally bathe him. So I scooped him up, started bathing, quickly realized he was freaking eat up with fleas. That was the first time he did that. Since then anytime he gets itchy with something or into something, he'll literally come ask me for a bath. He'll be turning 9 this year. I also carry him with me places when I can, and we have simple names for everyone he knows, so sometimes I'll tell him a certain name, if I'm going to that person's place, and if it's someone he doesn't like, he'll decline a go right offer. He really likes most everyone, but he doesn't care to go places that aren't very doggo friendly, and where he'll be bored quickly, as a no fenced yard, when we get there, or no other dogs to play with. I've just never had a dog that was so smart he could understand more than single syllable word concepts, and this one understands a huge freaking vocabulary. I even have specific names for specific toys, and after giving that toy a name, he'll pick up quick on which toy that is, and I can have him go get about three dozen different toys by name from his toy box, and he'll pile them up beside me. Also, and this is crazy, he also has a tell for me when he doesn't quite understand me. He'll side eye me and scratch his left side with back leg while standing if he doesn't get it and then sit and turn his head as if saying let's try this again. We have a Siberian husky who will destroy anything and everything if we leave her alone with free roam while we are gone. Obviously we learned this the hard way so we decided we would try crating her. After a week or so, she decided to start cheating in her crate and hiding it under the bed slash blankets we had in there for her. 
We thought this was her attempt at telling us what she thought of said crate. So we thought maybe she'd behave again outside of the crate. Fast forward another week, and my wife and I went to work and left miscellaneous kitchen items on the counter after she had baked some sweets the night before. I walk in the door when I get home and find the entire kitchen floor slash countertops covered in a white powder with paw prints everywhere. Our dog had ravaged a bag of powdered sugar we left out and it was everywhere. Back to the crate she goes. A few days later we come home and find her greeting us at the door somehow. This continues for a few days, so she somehow learned how to unlock the door from the inside. Fine. This padlock on the door should show her who's boss. And it did. For a whole week or so. Until again, we come home and find that she has now discovered how to somehow get out of the side of the crate without the padlock. All attempts to restrict the movements of this animal are futile. We've put gates up and she climbs over slash under them. We stack two gates up, and she figures out how to get over them still. She can open sliding doors by scratching the fuck out of them until they move. Luckily, she has now gotten older and doesn't destroy much anymore, so we leave her out. TLDR, husky sheets in crate, to get us to leave her out. Then learns how to escape through the door. Then escapes even while padlocked in. Smart as dog. I have a pet flap on the back door to the house, which leads into the dog's bedroom. I have to lock the flap at night, because this pup will bark at everything that moves and wake me up, so I keep her inside by slotting a cover into the slot on the inside of the flap. My dog seemed to manage to figure out that the cover slot was only hinged at the top corners of the flap. She chewed the slot off of the flap which then caused the cover to fall down. Held on only by the bottom slot leaving the flap open with the cover at a 90 degree angle to the door and got outside to bark and wake me up. So as soon as I get her back inside, I give out to the dog, push the cover back up and use the most flexible tool in the house and duct tape the cover onto the door again. So that's that right. Just duct tape the cover on each night and okay, but it gets weirder. At this point the dog knows that if she removes whatever's holding it from the top then the cover comes down. So after a few nights of full rest, she decides to try to tear off the duct tape. She doesn't get outside and barks and I go to bring her in and give out to her again. So I try now to practically vacuum seal the duct tape so she has no leverage to yank it off again. Surely, after a few nights, I'm tired and put the tape on sloppily as I put her to bed. The very same night I wake up to hear barking. I get out of bed. Put on my nightgown and slippers, go downstairs, unlock the door to the dog's room and find her in bed. Okay, I'll just check the flap, maybe she got out and came back in. But the flap was closed, but missing half the usual tape what the hell. I turn back around to examine the dog and find duct tape stuck to both her bed and her mouth. So I pieced together this, she managed to pull off the duct tape from the top of the cover causing it to yet again fall, being held only from the bottom slot, to then bark at a passing cat, or whatever it is one year old dogs bark at, heard me get out of bed to come back inside, nudge the cover back up, and sit back in the bed, to pretend that nothing happened. If you think I'm crazy for believing this then here's more evidence, I also own a cat and these two pets sleep in the same room together. Cats and dogs don't hate each other when they're raised together that same night after me being sure that both pets are locked in the room with the flap covered, I search for my cat to find only my dog looking guilty with duct tape in her mouth. TLDR, my dog escaped from the house to bark one night by chewing off the cover for the flap, came back inside and nudged the cover back on to look like she did nothing wrong. A few years ago we had two Czech wolf dogs. Huge dogs they were. They could stand on two legs and put their paws on my shoulders and in 5 quote 10, 178 centimeters. They weighed about 45, 50 kilograms each. Anyway I'd been over at my grandparents on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, with the rest of my family. I'd had a few drinks, so I was a little tipsy. I was carrying a load of leftover food, so I didn't lock the front door straight away I just closed it by lifting up the handle. Anyway they're both bouncing around me acting really interested in all the food I had. Nothing new there. However it was in a brief moment where it happened, and they seemed to work together in perfect unison. 
One pushed himself up behind my back legs side on and the other launched himself at me. I went flying over the dog behind me, and a series of food containers scattered everywhere. As I realized what's happened I hear the front door pop open down the hallway, and to my horror both the dogs bolt off screeching excitedly into the night. TLDR dogs worked together to trip me up as a pair like kids at school, opened the front door, and went for a midnight run. My service dog knows people aren't allowed to pet her, w slash o both my and her permission, when she's working, and will usually give the ugliest I'm gonna puke look when people pet her anyways. But occasionally she'll stand perfectly next to me, and give a stranger the sad eyes and little slow nub wiggle. This stranger must be far enough away they have to take at least a step towards us to reach her. If they do, I have to scold them, because laws and safety, and there's a big do not pet patch on the vest, and ffs rude, at which point she shows me her top teeth and sneezes, doggy laugh, while wiggling. I've tried to deter her from doing it, but it's made her sneakier. She doesn't do it to friends, she'll ask for permission to visit, or when we are seriously moving slash working, but she thinks it's really funny. She also sits and has loud fatchts on occasion. She often will check her own butt in surprise. She also is required by me to sit on the elevator at work. If anyone else is there, she will sit, rip a loud fatched, and whip her head in surprise to blame someone. She pulls a lot of pranks like this, and has a ridiculous memory. My tiny little ferret, Randall Flagg, is a devious genius, and he was ever, since I got him. He's rather small for a fluff noodle, so when I just brought him home, I had him in a large cage in a walk-in closet. It took him less than a week to figure out how to break out of the cage. So at that point, I cleared out the closet and turned the entire thing into his own room with sheet to climb on, boxes to hide in, and corners to pop in that are unfortunately not his litter box. However, he still preferred to be out in my room trying to bite my ankles and steal my keys and or wallet. So he figured out how to open the sliding doors to the walk-in closet within a day. So, I had to take a 10-pound little Fender guitar amp that I've had since high school and bar the door with that so he can't open it. He figured out that if he just managed to wiggle the rug underneath it bit by bit, he could move the amp and get the door to open. He doesn't do that as often because that takes more work, but he knows that he can any time he wants. The thing is, he learned very quickly that, if he spills his water on the floor, and makes it audible, that he's doing that, I open the door, to soak up the mess, and refill his water. So now, instead of going through the effort of opening the door himself, whenever he hears me get home from work, he picks up his water bowl, spills it all over the place and starts banging on the door with his water bowl, until I open the door for him, and then he ducks his way out of his room. Now, by ducks I mean the noise that ferrets make when they are excited. It sounds like tiny little high-pitched laughter. So you can imagine this tiny little fuzz tube banging on the door with a water bowl and then laughing his way out the room to go steal some more of my sheet. His older brother, my cat who passed away last May, was also a smart ass, so I think he'd be proud. So my husband and I had a beagle named Billy and a border collie named Jake. At the time of the story Billy was 7 years old and Jake was 8 months old. Now Billy was a sneaky clever little hound and so bossy. She would steal toys and treats from my brother's presicanario and get away with it. Billy was the alpha with every dog she met. Now border collars are the most intelligent dog breed, right? We used to give Billy and Jake these poor kaichus in the evening. Billy being a glutinous little lady wanted her treat and Jake's too. So she used to finish half of her treat and then glance over at Jake, who'd be merrily chewing his own treat, and Billy would jump up, run over to the front door slash back door, howling and baying. She would put on quite the show making it seem like there was an intruder. Poor Jake would jump up and start barking and be on alert because Billy was, and he was a baby and trusted her. So while Jake would be investigating the imagined sound, Billy would trot back over to Jake's abandoned treat take it, and then lay down on her own treat to hide it, and chew his treat. Jake would be so bewildered when he returned for his treat. This went on for years, Jake did catch on, and he would take his treat to investigate the Billy false alarms. 
Fast forward a few years, Billy passed away at the age of 12, Jake is 4, and we have a new Belgian Malinois puppy named Toddy who's almost 6 months old. Jake was grieving Billy for a while and didn't want his treats or to play. Finally one evening he started to chew on his evening treat and was coming around to Toddy. Toddy was merrily chewing her treat thinking her big brother loves her and feeling acceptance. Well. Jake does a little shifty eye towards Toddy and then he jumps up, barking and growling, and sprints around the house lightning fast. Toddy goes on the defense and is now running upstairs acting like a full grown mulligator. Lo and behold, Jake comes slinking around the corner of the kitchen, looking quite pleased, grabs Toddy's abandoned chew toy, lays down on his own chew treat, and begins to gnaw on it. Toddy comes downstairs with the pitifully familiar confused look as she is searching for her chew treat. It's hazing that has been passed down from Billy to Jake and eventually it will be given to Toddy for pups in the future. Don't worry, we'd take the treat back from the thief and give it back to the victim. With Billy and Jake and Jake with Toddy, because while it's hilarious, they don't get to be as holes to each other. TLDR, my old beagle used to haze and steal my border collie's food slash toys, and after she passed away, my border collie has kept the tradition alive by stealing my Belgian Malinois toys slash treats. When I moved into my old rental house, it had a large yard with a six foot wooden fence. Within a couple days my dog was getting out and running around the woods at the end of the street. The other end of the street was a large busy road, three lanes each way, right off a major highway. So, obviously I was concerned. I checked the perimeter and there were no holes she could escape from. I knew she couldn't jump it. I was completely perplexed. I went out with her every time, for a couple weeks, with no problems. Finally I let her out on her own again, but watched from the door. She didn't realize I was watching, went over to a specific section of fence, took a few steps back, and ran into it, backed up and did it again. The fence started swinging, and she timed her escape through the swinging fence. I have no idea how, in two days she was able to discover that one fence section out of many was not nailed securely at the bottom, and that by hurling her body at it, she could get out. Before I adopted her, she lived in a shelter as a pup and an apartment for a few months. Also the time she, she had diarrhea while I was at work. She refuses to go in the house. I think her former owner punished her for it as a pup. Unfortunately she did have an accident, but when I got home, I found that she had tried to bite through the door and the door knob was crushed. She realized she could open the door with the knob. My fat bastard cat Jenkins is a tyrant. If you ignore her requests for food or affection, she will knock things off the table. If you ignore her doing that, she'll start grabbing the paper towel with her claws and not shredding it, but pulling it down into a pile, which she then uses as a throne to look down on you from. But that's just scratching the surface of her intelligence. We have an old farmhouse and all the cats love hunting, which means ear mites make their rounds occasionally. Jenkins was experiencing a particularly bad case of it once. The cats absolutely hated the airdrop medicine and would fight to the death to free themselves from you if you tried to treat them. Because of this, it was usually my aunt's job, but on this particular day, she couldn't make it out. Not wanting to watch Jenkins suffer without trying anything, I grabbed the bottle and sat down next to her. I looked her in the eyes as she vigorously scratched her ear. When she stopped, I pointed to her ear, then pointed to the bottle of medicine in my hand. She continued to maintain eye contact with me, so I did it once more. With a knowing, pleading look in her eyes, she crawled into my lap, and no, she is not usually a lap cat. Slowly, I went to put the first drop in her ear, petting her as I went. My grandmother was yelling at me to hold her down, but I just shook my head and said. No, I think she gets it. As the first drop fell in, she did not run, instead burrowing her head in my arms and rubbing her head against me to ease the discomfort. When she was ready, she pulled her head back and revealed her ears. We continued this through all six drops in each ear. She didn't leave until I said, I'll done. In a smooth voice and gave her a few pets. We repeated this for the next few days. Her ear mites got better and the two of us have been closer ever since. My cat growing up was indoor-outdoor. 
He learned that when he wanted to come back inside, he could stretch out and reach the door knob and jiggle it. We had learned what this meant and would let him in when we heard it. Unfortunately, my babysitter was not familiar with this form of communication and heard it one night and freaked out. I calmly informed her that it was just the cat asking to be let in. Another cat was weirdly intelligent about drains. He liked to drink out of a dripping faucet primarily, but also seemed to understand how drains worked, perhaps after watching the faucet so much. One day, the door to the garage, where his litter box is, was accidentally stuck. My mom walked into the bathroom and saw him peeing in the sink. Also, found him peeing in the bathtub once. Third cat is kind of a diva. Very proper, very fastidious, not one to exercise for the fun of it. For months we would hear him meowing and running around downstairs around 11pm, nightly. Sometimes it would wake me up, right after I fell asleep. We thought he would just get feisty around that time, and tried to put away all his toys to avoid it. Then, one morning I walked down the stairs, and saw a dead mouse at the bottom. Turns out he was probably chasing mice around that would come out, right after we went to bed, and the meowing was to let us know there were intruders. My dog, I call her killer, for unrelated reasons, actual name is really, scary smart, also kinda messed up. She's the type of dog that pulls legs off of crickets, and then watches them hop in circles. One day, I hear a sound from the backyard, sounds like the movie The Birds Going On, so I head out, to see dozens of birds circling my yard, swooping low and de screeching like crazy. Killer had finally caught a birdie, a tiny little baby bird. We'll call this one baby bird. The motherly figure bird, we'll call her mama bird, was pissed and gathered up all the other adult type birds to save her little baby bird. Did I mention that baby bird was still alive and being tossed into the air and caught by Killer repeatedly? Killer was playing fetch with herself. So, about this time, Mama Bird and the other adult birds all begin to lower their circling until Mama Bird swoops straight for Killer. Killer dropped Baby Bird and bit Mama Bird right out of the sky. One quick shake of the neck and all the other adult birds beat sky feet out of there. This kills Mama Bird. Killer then consumes Mama Bird and goes inside, leaving me to shovel Baby Bird to death. TLDR. Dog tortures baby to lure in mother, eats mother and lets orphan baby survive, only to be murdered by the dog's servant. A little late, but this is worth sharing. My dog, then an adolescent puppy dog of about a year old, accidentally locked me out of the house. It wasn't the door locking part that was clever, it was his actions once he realized he was free to do whatever he wanted inside the house. It was a stinking hot Australian summer day and I ventured outside to take the dogs out for their morning business. My dog, the jerk, was dilly dallying, and I didn't want the cat to get out, so I shut the sliding door behind me, and the older dog, a 100% good boy. I went to open the door again for the younger dog, and realized he had stomped on the lock in his usual lunatic frenzy, and had successfully locked me out. It was over 100 degrees, I was in my bra and panties, couldn't call a locksmith and or ask creepy bogger neighbors for help, and it was only 9am. I panicked. Then I realized there was something else wrong. Deathly silence from inside of the house. That dickhead dog had opened the pantry, dragged his biscuits out to where I could see them, and was hoovering them up. Luckily there wasn't heaps of them left. He then proceeded to fetch three toilet rolls which he shredded in quick succession right in front of the locked door and he started wrestling with my old cat which is usually stopped immediately by myself because the cat was about 11 and no match for the 20 kg staffy slash kelpie mix. But away they went. Full on heavyweight bruiser vs ancient featherweight Burmese. A normal cat would activate fight or flight or at least pop their claws this guy just lay there and took it, making desperate eye contact with me whilst the dog trounced him. I yelled and banged on the door, but this only riled him up and made the dog stuck outdoors with me start to freak out. Tired of these novelties, the jerk hound then decided to do zoomers around the lounge. I watched horrified as he sprinted around the room, and then onto the couches, the coffee table, the backs of the couches and finally the top of the dining table where he proceeded to stare me down. He stood there and eventually fell asleep on top of the table, while I was trying to weave some palm fronds into a workable lockpick. I gave up after a few hours, and ended up smashing a window to get inside. 
I don't know if this is a shining example of my dog being really clever or just an amazing opportunist, but I know he felt absolutely no remorse for his actions, and it was probably his best morning ever. When I was growing up, our family dog was very unique. I joke that he was part cat because he used his paws so effectively. If you pissed him off, he would cheat in your shoes. One Thanksgiving we had a large family party with a bunch of shoes by the front door. My uncle wouldn't give the dog turkey from his plate. He tossed it in the trash, so the dog found my uncle's shoes and with smart bomb precision, landed a log inside his one shoe. Then the dog waited on the stairs for when my uncle was leaving to see him react to a foot and shoe full of sheet. Same dog had separation anxiety. If you left him alone, he would destroy things, sheet in front of your door, open cabinets and dig through garbage. Piss over everything. So we would put him in his kennel before leaving. He hated the kennel, so he would hide. He started to watch for people putting on socks, grabbing car keys, certain words, like grab the dog. He would hide. We would start talking in code, and he would pick up on the code. A few times we would have to leave, and he would come out. He learned to wait 5 slash 10 minutes after we left before coming out. So we would leave, drive away, and then come back 10 minutes later. Then he started to figure out how to open his kennel. He could unlatch metal ones and would chew through plastic ones. We put him in a mudroom where he would escape and then attack the door, which he got through one day. He also figured out how to climb a large metal kennel that we turned vertical. Yet with all of the above examples, he never figured out squirrels can run up trees. They confused him every day of his life. I have two incredible stories with my dogs. One is heroic smart and one is intelligent smart. The heroic story, I had a German shepherd named Baby when I was younger that was really parental. One day my cousin was riding a tricycle on the sidewalk and Baby was watching her through the screen door at a family event. Baby starts going crazy breaking, and before we could get to see what was going on, we heard the screen door break. As we get to the door, we see my cousin was in the street and a car was coming, and baby in full gear sprinting toward her. She grabs her by the back of the shirt, and drags her into the yard. I'm about 99% positive the car world saw my cousin and stopped accordingly, but that was still amazing to me. My girlfriend's dog now, a blue healer, legit watches TV. Like will get excited for certain shows and grumble at stuff she doesn't want to watch. Anyway she will 100% bark at any animal that comes on TV, grab her blankie, shake it furiously, etc. Imagine like a kid watching wrestling with a life-size doll imitating their favorite wrestler. It's like that. Anyway, one day she is going freaking crazy and there's nothing on the screen it's just two people talking. So me and my girlfriend are super confused. About a minute later a bat comes on the TV and she goes crazy and my girlfriend remembers that they watched this episode about 4 days ago. My girl's dog remembered that TV show and remembered the bat scene was coming up and barked preemptively. That sheet faked with me for a good while. TLDR. One story dog saves cousin. One story dog watches TV. I had 4 hot dogs in buns on a plate and was walking down to my basement bedroom to eat them in shame. My dog really wanted them. Really wanted them. She ran through my legs and tripped me and the goddamn beach ate all four hot dogs and buns in the time it took me to stand up. She accepted her punishment almost eagerly. Also she hated my brother, they had a weird relationship. He yelled at lot, not at her, and she was generally just scared of him I think. He laid out his back on the coffee table and went to wash his hands. He came back, I sheet you not, to a bun completely undisturbed on the plate except for the fact that the entire burger was missing. She was also known to steal cooked and uncooked meat off the counter when you weren't looking. The funniest thing ever though. The previous mentioned brother was playing sparks and yelling at people. My dog walked in front of the TV and I assume she did this knowingly and blocked his view so that he died. He started yelling at her and she ran into a room to hide. Next day we wake up, and the house smells like sheet. Eventually we found the source. Diarrhea laid out perfectly across those bucks, PS2, and a keyboard on the floor. Nothing on the rug. Okay so our dog is like an idiotic genius. 
I'm 100% sure he understands everything, but chooses to make stupid as decisions, because he wants to 100% of the time, when we put food out he waits to eat. Not a big deal, pretty sure it's a pack thing. But he takes the food in a mouthful and blags it up on the living room floor, where we are eating, to eat next to us. Still no big deal, right? We just cleaned our carpets and flooring like hardcore, because we're selling our house. We worked our ass off to clean the carpets. We put food in the dish and we hear him grab a mouthful and are just like oh no. That little faker walks his ass over to the rug the rug that's further from the spot he eats. He drops his food onto the rug and proceeds to eat. Continuing to do so until he's full. Carpets stayed clean. Like how did that cheat know not to drop his food on the fresh carpets? Was it the smell? Nap, cause we've cleaned them before, and he's had zero issues with eating on the carpet and he passed. I think that little bugger saw us working our butts off, and decided to give us a break. Edit by the way, it's been about a week and he's been eating his food on the rug strictly. Even treats, so likely knows something's up. Freya the cat is a very evil kitty. She's got world domination on her mind. Every night I use a watering can to fill the dog bowls with their dinner portions. Freya sits by the family watering bowl and waits for me to add a little to that, as well. She does this several times a week, making sure that she's there for me to add a little water, and then where I put the watering can. A week or so later, I come home to an empty house, everyone is aware of things, and the family watering bowl is in the middle of the kitchen. So I push it back against the wall in the kitchen nook, where it belongs. I go about my own dinner. I hear a sound, and go back into the kitchen. The evil kitten has pushed the family watering bowl back into the middle of the kitchen. So, I leave it alone, to see where she's going with this. A little while later, I hear a crash and the distinct sound of water spilling. I go and look. The watering can is on the floor by the family watering bowl and there is spilled water everywhere. I begin to clean up the mess. The whole time, she is perched, silently watching me. I get everything put back, and filled up, and go back to my chores, and when I come back in, the whole thing has repeated. This time, the kitchen sink is running. I walked around the house, to make sure no one was home, and then turned the water off. As I'm walking back to the den, I hear the water come back on. So I peek around the corner into the kitchen. Freya is sitting on the back of the sink pushing the handle to turn on the water. A few weeks go by and none of this happens again. I begin leaving the watering can empty, so she doesn't spill the contents. Then, a week or so ago, I found the watering can on the floor by the sink, the water running, and the family watering bowl in the middle of the floor. I have a developing genius on my hands. Back when my brother brought his girlfriend to live with us, she brought a little dog with her by the name of Yoshi. I'm not quite sure the breed of Yoshi, but he looked like a chihuahua mixed with a greyhound, small with long legs. Anyway, this thing was a petto to the extreme. Always wanted attention, and when you weren't giving it attention he's, was crying for attention. So my girlfriend and I were watching TV once, and we knew that Yoshi liked to jump on the couch and beg for pets. So my girlfriend and I were laying on the couch in a way that we covered the entire couch so that Yoshi would have to jump on us to get on. Which he never did because he'd get in trouble if he did. The only exposed parts were the arms of the couch, which we thought was too high and Yoshi would never attempt such a jump. We were wrong. After crying for like 15 minutes, he attempted to jump on the arm of the couch. His front two legs made it, but his back two were dangling off the side. He looked like Simba's father hanging on the ledge of the mountain and I played the role of Scar. I said long live the king and lightly pushed the little guy onto the floor. He started whimpering, and he limped around the couch, I instantly regretted everything. I was like oh no Yoshi, I'm so sorry picked him up, and started petting him. Then I went to go get him a treat, saying you want a treat. His ears sprung up, and followed me over to the kitchen. But he wasn't limping anymore in fact he was walking, like he'd never even fell. This little dingus somehow figured out that, if he faked an injury I'd feel so bad and cuddle him, and give him all the attention he wants. I respected him for it. Oh, my dog saved my life several times when pregnant. She is not normally an on top of you all the time lapdog, she's 70 pounds and just kinda chills out, unless you're playing with her. 
but for a couple days, when I was 5 months pregnant, she would not stay away from me, nudging my back constantly, whining, wouldn't leave my side. I was getting ready to take her to the vet, I thought there was something wrong with her. Two days later, I wake up in incredible pain from my kidney, go to the hospital, and it's a bad bladder infection. Spend a few days in the hospital getting treated. The dog smelled the infection, before I even knew what was going on two weeks later, it happens again. She's up my, but all day being whinny, and nudging my back. Then I start peeing blood. This time it was a full blown infection, and I was almost septic. She was trying to warn me again. I had a kidney condition which ended up causing frequent infections, 6 more, and kidney failure which I eventually needed 8 surgeries for. But after that second incident, as soon as my dog started acting weird, I'd go straight to the hospital, even if I wasn't showing symptoms yet. Every single time, I had an infection. She knew every single time. I'm convinced she saved my life. I've got a few examples, actually. I'm blessed to be surrounded by smart animals, some of whom have saved me from harm. I have Arabian horses, they're like the border collars of horses in terms of intelligence. I went to get one of the mares out of her paddock, and she was so psyche to be hand grazed, that she'd shake her head, and prance every time I tried to put her halter on. It got to the point, where I became frustrated and walked out the gate, to stare at her with crossed arms. I said you're making this difficult. You gonna behave. She immediately put her head down, and was a perfectly polite lady, while I slipped her halter on. She stayed polite too, even though she has the habit of being impatient. Another time I threw up from food poisoning around 3am at the boyfriend's house. One of his cats is quite sweet but very standoffish. Not the case that night. When I came out of the bathroom she was rubbing herself all over my legs and mewing. She even curled up next to me under the covers when I went back to bed. I told my boyfriend about this the next day, and he said oh, she knew you felt bad, and wanted to comfort you. Another horse won. I was riding my Appaloosa around at a canter in the arena, when she stumbled and launched me. I ended up landing right in front of her as she was scrambling to get her balance. She had the option of running me over while remaining on all four feet to catch herself, or holding herself up long enough for me to move then falling over. She chose the latter, and saved me from being crushed, even though doing so was very awkward and difficult for her. As soon as I was out of the way, she hit the ground with a big thud. There was also another time, where we were on a trail ride in a deep wash on a hillside behind a few other horses. One of the horses in front, started to slip backwards in the mud, and started a domino effect of horses slipping backwards, and crashing into each other. I was frozen in surprise, but my mare took one look at the situation, and decided it was time to move, before it reached us. She ended up vaulting out of the deep wash. Mind you, this was a narrow 4 foot deep wash with a 60, 70 degree slope. She had the dexterity and situational awareness to see an issue, and get herself, and her rider out of there. The fact she jumped actually stopped the domino effect, and gave the slipping horses enough space to regain their footing. Finally, my childhood cat growing up could always tell when I was upset. If I was ever crying about something, that cat would immediately come running and curl up with me and purr until I had calmed down. Best kitty. Years ago my wife and I had a wonderful little love shack we were renting in a backyard with a main house at the front. We had a futon because there was one main room, a kitchen and a bathroom. During this time we had adopted two kittens whom we were told were siblings, and they certainly seemed to get on well with each other, and we loved them dearly. One weekend, we decided to go to San Francisco for the day, and we had a great time. Of course we made sure that the kitties had a clean litter box, water, and crunches we get home, and they seem fine. We are unfolding the futon, and putting on the sheets. The boy hops up on the bed, and proceeds to take a massive bus right in the center. I nearly took his head off in my rage. He wasn't hurt, of course, and I should have known better to respond with such anger. It was such a crystal clear act of defiance. Oh, you want to leave us home all day and go have some fun of your own. Fuck. You. That little adorable Mithurfica. Mad props for having balls bigger than his whole little body. My black lab was a super sassy, super smart crazy hyper thing. 
I came home from work one day in college all excited to eat the leftovers from a Greek restaurant my roommate and I had gone to the night before. Roasted chicken, lamb, mint sauce, yum. Opened the fridge no leftovers. My roommate and I worked at the same office, drove in and back together, so I knew she hadn't eaten it. So confused I knew I hadn't forgotten them at the restaurant. Wandering back towards the front room, through the little used dining room, something white caught my eye from behind the ficus tree in the corner. I went to investigate and found a pile of empty containers. Butter boxes, not butter tubs, paper mushroom containers, the Greek restaurant container. My lab had been opening the fridge, browsing for something appealing, left the regular mushrooms, ate the portobellus, apparently ate between 1 and 4 sticks of butter at a time, closing the fridge door behind her, eating the fun fridge treats, and then hiding the evidence in the next room behind the ficus. Couldn't even be mad. My roommate and I laughed for about an hour, then fashioned a fridge lock from rubber bands and a twisty tie, tied the fridge door to the freezer door, which worked. Came home to the fridge door not quite closed a couple of times, but my lab gave up eventually. She calmed down at around age 5, and was definitively the greatest dog who has ever lived, even though she only made it to 8 and 1 half. Horrible aggressive cancer surgery and chemo couldn't save her. Miss that sweet crazy sassy girl. Best friend I've ever had. Not a personal pet, but a monkey on sale at an exotic pet store. My nephew was feeding this one monkey skittles, and it would grab a rope and spin around, and hold out its hand for another, then repeat the trick every time it was fed. The monkey in the next cage just sat there, then picked up an old orange rind from the bottom of the cage, and held it out to my nephew, and motioned with his other hand, to come closer and take it. Of course we were amazed at how human it was doing this gesture. So my nephew stepped forward to the cage, and that monkey pulled his hand out of reach, motioned for him to get even closer. My nephew was just about belly up to the cage when that monkey reached out, and grabbed his shirt and started screaming. My nephew started crying and freaked out. I pulled him away. The monkey went immediately back to being calm, and casually ate from the bag of skittles he just lifted off my nephew, as if he had his own bag the whole time. Funny thing was, the monkey in the next cage witnessed this, did a half-hearted trick with the rope, and held out his hand to the monkey in the next cage, saw that he wasn't getting sheet, and sat still in his cage. He looked at me, and my nephew with such disappointment, looked back over at the other monkey, and started freaking out again. That monkey with the skittles could care less, yeah, yeah, your monkey, your circus, my skittles beach. I had a wonderful cat when I was in high school. He learned how to open the sliding glass door to become a free roam kitty fairly early on. Tried to keep him inside for months and finally gave up. He would immediately take a massive crap in my sister's litter box as soon as she cleaned it. She would try to keep him out but it's like he knew what was up and hid close by and he was always there staring her down while doing his business when she got back from the trash can. The only time he'd use it, and it made her so mad it was hilarious. But the smartest thing he did, or at least the most interesting, was when he decided I could no longer feed myself properly, and started bringing me live animals to eat. At the time, I had been losing weight, because of a form of an eating disorder. I have had crazy anxiety all my life, and during this time it presented itself as me not being able to eat, if someone could see me, and with a new boyfriend who was over a lot, I only got to eat late at night, when I knew he was gone. My awesome cat must have picked up on it, because almost daily he'd get my attention, to come out to back door, which was actually inside, because the previous owners added onto the house. He would lure me out, and drop half dead moles, birds, mice, lizards, anything he could catch at my feet, to which I would panic, and try to scoop them back outside. He would just give me a disappointed look, as if his attempts to help me survive on my own were failing. It went on until I got comfortable enough to let the guy know I'm actually human and do it. And a few months later I moved out. He went outside, that morning like always. I came back to get him that evening, and he was nowhere in sight. I asked my parents to watch for him and call me, but he never came back. I don't know what happened to him, or if my leaving made him feel like I wasn't coming back, but that was the best pet I've ever had, and it was a huge blow that he was just gone. 
my dog knows how to unlock and open doors. Figured it out pretty quickly too. At first he could only open doors if they pushed to open, but he's since figured out how to pull doors open too. I also learned that he's figured out how to unlock doors when I came home from work and he was sitting in the hall of my apartment building outside the door waiting for me. The air conditioning in my apartment had stopped working and it was cooler in the hall, I guess. Little faker turned the deadbolt lock to get out. Oh, and he was in his crate that day. Somehow opened his crate and then the apartment door. He's also very good at picking up on my emotions. When my ex broke up with me, he would just sit beside me on the couch and nuzzle his head against mine if I started getting upset. He's the sweetest dog to all people, but he will go off on someone if he senses that I'm uncomfortable. Was taking him for a walk when a drunk guy came up and started talking to me. He was nice at first when I was just chatting with the guy, but when the dude started getting aggressive and stepped at me and my tone changed, my dog ran behind him, grabbed his shirt and yanked him down on his ass, then stood face to face with the guy baring his teeth and quietly growling. It is easy to train him, though. It only takes him a couple days to get new tricks down pat. Taught him to get me beer, bring me my phone, if I left it on my bedside table, etc. I've posted this in similar threads on reddit, I've been accused of making this up. I'm not. I was home alone watching TV. I skipped school that day because I was sick. My dad left for work around an hour before. I'm downstairs on the couch and pick up the landline phone to call my dad to ask him to pick me up something for lunch. I dial his cell number, put my ear to the phone, but I don't hear ringing. I was confused and made sure the phone was working, and it was. Then suddenly, I heard a whimper in the phone. Then I heard more whimpers, and I realized it was the sound of my dog. I'm totally confused at this point, but then I realize there's another landline upstairs in my dad's room. I run upstairs and see my dad's door is shut. I open the door, and I still can't believe what I saw. I saw the cord phone next to my dad's bed, knocked off the nightstand onto the ground, with the phone off the receiver. My dog was making whimpering noises into the receiver. Apparently when my dad was getting ready for work that morning my dog went into his room without him noticing. Then when he left for work, he shut his bedroom door behind him which trapped our dog in the room. If it wasn't for my dog making whimpering noises into the phone, who knows how long he would have been stuck in there for. I swear I'm not making this sheet up. My dog whimpering into the phone is what got him out of that room. I don't want to draw any conclusions from this about the intelligence of dogs. I got downvoted last time I did that when telling this story. But how incredible is that? If you're curious, the dog is a boxer. He was around 5 years old at the time. One time, I was chilling out on the bed reading a book, while my two dogs, now I have three, but at the time it was just the two boys, played with their respective toys. Now, my older dog, Prince, gets jealous and always thinks Ludo's toy is the better toy, even if both of their toys are the exact same. I've seen him try to steal Ludo's toy in the past and sometimes he's successful and sometimes he's not, but I had never witnessed this level of planning and resourcefulness from Prince before. So they were playing, and all of a sudden Prince gets up and comes over to me and starts barking. He only does this when I have a treat, which at the time, I didn't. I just had my book. He was pawing at my hands and barking and I was very confused. I kind of looked at him and was like, what is it? What's the matter? Then Ludo rushed over to investigate because he knows what's up when Prince makes that kind of bark. He was wagging his tail looking so excited, and I'm just as confused. In the meantime Prince skiddles, as soon as Ludo gets there, and makes a beeline for his, Ludo's, toy. Ludo kind of looked back for a second, then looked at me again expectantly, and I swear he did a double take, because he whipped around to try, and reclaim his toy once he realized what was going on but by then Prince had it, and had taken off. So I just saw my dog orchestrate a sort of lie, get my other dog's hopes up, by making him think treats were involved, and then take off, as soon as the other dog was distracted. I googled whether dogs could plan deceptions like that, and surprisingly there were a few articles saying they could. In the end I felt so bad, that I did find a treat for Ludo, and I got his toy back for him, so happy ending at least. 
My girlfriend came back from traveling and brought home a pie. I was still playing in my laptop when she went to bed, leaving the pie on the dining table. I vividly remember that when, after brushing my teeth, I walked past the dining table on the way to the bedroom, that I noticed the pie still sitting there. Knowing that that pie wouldn't be safe from our dog, I put the pie in the refrigerator before going to sleep. The dog was sleeping in the corner and didn't seem to notice anything in the world around him. The next day at work I receive a call from an angry girlfriend who accuses me of being so greedy because I supposedly ate the whole pie. I explain that the pie is in the refrigerator and that I didn't eat it. She calls me a liar because said pie is not in the refrigerator and nowhere to be found. This stupid pie, or rather its absence, made for a few tense days in a relationship that had seen better days anyway. After a few days my girlfriend was cleaning the house, lifted the pillows on the sofa, and discovered small torn up pieces of silver paper plate. The kind you would normally find under a pie. Having uncovered the evidence I was finally cleared off any suspicion, and our conniving dog was caught. He pretended sleeping when the pie was still on the dining table, knowing I was still in the living room. He pretended sleeping while I put it in the refrigerator. He waited until I was really asleep, opened the door of the refrigerator, then proceeded to eat the pie, shred the evidence and hide it under the sofa pillow, thus successfully making me the prime suspect. I had an Australian cattle dog who was the runt of the litter. She was shorter than normal, but the smartest dog I've ever seen. She lived for fetch and being held like a baby. One day on our farm we were trying to do some work on a tractor, but rocks and tennis balls kept being dropped on our feet. Literally dropped and balanced on our boots. After an hour or so we had a plan to distract her for a bit. Next to us was our manure spreader. A high wall trailer with a conveyor belt floor that pulls the contents to a large drum covered with iron spikes that rotates to fling the contents out the back. We toss the tennis ball inside the spreader figuring this will end it, or buy some time anyways. The pup does a full circle, and realized because of her size the only possible entrance is the one lined with spikes. So she got on her back legs, and leaned in the lower spikes and the drum rotated slightly. She then pushed the lower spikes repeatedly until there appeared a gap in the top spikes leaving a space just big enough for her to leap through. The whole process lasted less than 5 minutes, and we had a tennis ball back resting on our foot and a smug pup waiting expectantly for more fetch. Edit. Spelling. It's hard to tell whether the weirder events are intentional or not. I've had my cat sit on the couch and watch TV with me, Planet Earth. To be fair, the TV has all sorts of flashing lights and moving images. But one of the smartest things she has done is train us, rather than us training her. Mutual training, here's an example. She is an outdoor cat, but she likes to nap inside. My room is a second floor just above the deck. When my cat wants inside and knows I'm awake, she'll jump from the stove onto the deck, which creates a bump noise. After hearing this, I go to let her inside. It's funny, some days I'll turn on my light to read a book or something, and I'll hear the thud. So I'll go down and let her in. It's extremely useful, we live in an area where a cat door would probably bring inside too many unwelcome guests. She's the smartest cat I've ever had, she knows stepping on keyboards annoys us and avoids them with basically no training. She's not allowed on the counters, period. However when it's late at night, I'll sometimes catch her on the kitchen table. Only at night though. I won't get her off the counter unless she's after some food, so she's more relaxed around me to boot. Sometimes it's hard to tell when the moment she's been trained is. I snap my fingers. If she's going in for a drink that's not hers, she prefers to drink out of a tall glass rather than a bowl. But if I snap my fingers while she's looking at the glass, she'll realize it's mine and search for a different one, although preferably the one near her food. My auntie found two kittens in her backyard. She fed them until they were about nine months old. They stayed outside though. Eventually she had to find homes for these two brother cats, so my mom said she'd take them. They were very skittish. The one, hermit, wouldn't even come inside. The other, took, was in the house, but hid under the furniture. One day hermit went missing. We were sad, but not that surprised. A couple days later took also went missing. 
we were quite dismayed, but after a few days accepted that they were too wild to be pets. Well one day, about a week after Took went missing, we were outside on the front steps when my mom points to the fence and says look. We all looked over, and there's Took, and trailing behind him was his brother Hermit. Took must left to go find his brother, and then convinced him to follow him back home. We couldn't believe it. Hermit would still not come in the house. But I spent hours each day outside with him. Eventually he got comfortable enough with me to sit in my lap and warm his paws. Winter was coming, and it was cold. I did manage to get him into my bedroom once for a little while. We hung out on my bed and he purred and purred. Then a couple days later he went missing again. This time Took never did go looking for him. I think Took knew he was gone. I miss Hermit a lot. I still have Took though. He is 14 years old now and has always enjoyed the life of a house cat. He still likes to hide under furniture sometimes though. I'm probably way too late for this thread, but here it goes. My border collie caught the dude who was trying to break into my house. I was at band practice and my girlfriend was home alone. This drunk dude got into a fight with his grandma who lived next door. She wouldn't let him in the house because he was wasted. So he stumbles over to my house and notices my window lack unit sticking out. He gets the bright idea to try and pull the window unit out to get into my house. My dogs start freaking out and so does my girlfriend. She calls the police. The police had already gotten a call from the dude's grandma. They were en route. Two officers show up in different cars. They spotlight and the dude takes off running. One officer knocks on the door to talk to my girlfriend while the other pursues the would-be thief. The guy takes off down an alley that's hard for the cop car to get down so the cop, a bigger guy, gets out and chases him to the best of his abilities. The guy ditches the cop. As the officer is talking to my girlfriend and questioning her about what happened. My border collie is by her side this entire time on the front step. Suddenly he freaks out and takes off towards the street. The officer walks over to find my dog snarling and growling with a guy cornered against a vehicle. It was the goddamn thief. He tried to circle back around and casually walk up the street to his apartment, which was down the street. The officer arrested the guy and took him to jail. My goddamn dog did the cop's job for him. He knew that was the guy that was trying to break into his house and he wasn't having any of it. By and large the smartest thing my dog has ever done. He passed earlier this year, but my wife and I believe that our cat Jiggy could understanding English. When Jiggy was about 8 years old, we got another pair of kittens, both boys and littermates. All our cats are indoor outdoor cats, we lock them in for the night around 6, and whomever gets up to make the coffee first lets them out. Anyway, it was getting on towards 7, and the twins, or as we called them at the time, the little boys, hadn't come inside yet. Jiggy was walking by and my wife jokingly said, Jiggy, go get your brothers. Jiggy tore out of the house. We laughed until about 5 minutes later when two very harassed looking kittens came bursting in through the cat door, followed seconds later by Jiggy, who came over near us, sat down and looked up with what can only be described as an anything else look on his face. When our oldest granddaughter was just learning to walk, we had her in the backyard with us. There is an alley on the side of the house that you use to access the backyard from the front, to mow the lawn, etc. that was covered in road mix gravel. Not something you want a toddler to fall down on. As we were setting up, my wife said, God, I hope Lucy doesn't fall back there. We got distracted for a few seconds a few moments later and sure enough, Lucy had headed towards the alley. We went to grab her, only to find Jiggy purposely sprawled in her path. Making it so she couldn't get around him or over him, at the mouth of the alley. Jiggy was one special cat, man. We have a bunch of smarty pets. Our old man cat, who passed away a few months ago, would come and glare at you and lick his lips when he wanted wet food. We couldn't leave it out because the other cat sack of vultures would devour it and leave Mr. Toothless hungry. He also was so good at taking his meds, we used a pill popper and you would tell him to open, and he would squint, open his mouth, and start twitching his tongue, I'm guessing he was swallowing or trying to get ready to. Our blue front Amazon heard me curse in pain, I don't remember what happened, but I said ouch, 
He laughed this maniacal laugh ha 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 this is the same butt head that bit my lip for singing. And now I'm actually a very good singer. P he is also very good at responding with the correct thing in the correct inflection at the right time. If either of us say OWW he asks what happened. Currently we have a flame point Balinese, long haired Siamese, and corgi slash beagle mix that race to steal my spot, whenever I get up, if I'm in bed typically one is on my spot, before I have slide off the edge of the bed lol I look at them, and they both give me a look like what I was here the whole time, what's your problem? When our Scottish Terrier was about 8 months old, Ratatouille has just come out on DVD, and we were sat watching it. At the time we had hamsters, and had one not far from the TV. Our little man sat for about 10 minutes watching the movie, before he started looking from the TV to the hamster cage, making the connection that they were the same. It was the weirdest thing. After that he'd watch TV a lot. Another thing he'd do, is he'd remember any adverts that had dogs in them, and after seeing them a couple of times he'd remember the music, and would come running, barking the whole way from the other side of the house, and wait for the dog to appear. One last thing. In the intro of Boardwalk Empire, there's a seagull, that takes off about 30 seconds in. The first season we watched he caught on, and would be sat on the end of our bed waiting for it. We always laughed about it, and then the year after, when the next season came on we were sad watching it again. He was asleep on the end of the bed, and as soon as the intro music started he sat right up, and looked at the exact point on the left of the screen, where the seagull takes off from. How the hell did he remember it a year on? After that we'd put it on periodically, just to keep it fresh for him. A cat led my girlfriend and I a long way to her kittens who were struggling. My parents feed a handful of cats that live on their back porch in a very rural area. Several years back one of the females got pregnant, and we expected her to have the kittens under the porch like she usually did, but one day she showed up no longer pregnant, and we had no clue where the kittens were. We looked briefly, but didn't worry too much. Maybe a week later my wife, then girlfriend, and I were walking outside, and the mother uncharacteristically was whining for attention. She normally kept her distance, but this time she would rub your leg and meow a lot. When we would approach her she would walk away like 20 feet and meow loudly, and wait for us to get to her before walking again. We thought how funny would it be, if she was leading us to the kittens, but that seemed really unrealistic. Fuck me though. She repeated this process for maybe one quarter of a mile off the property, and to a barn nearby. At this point we were so shocked, that we broke into the barn and all the way in the back under a bunch of junk in a box where three live kittens, and one that had clearly passed very recently due to its comparable size with the others. She wasn't able to sustain the kittens so she came, and found us, and very effectively led us straight to them, so we could bring them back to the porch for water and a cleaner place to sleep. The cats are still around today. So I have a cat, that has been known, since she was one as a tabby terror. Her actual name is Chell, and she was abused as a kitten. As such she attached quite firmly to me, and has been incredibly defensive of me, since she was little. When she was two I got a roommate. I'll call him Kevin. Chell did not like Kevin. She thought Kevin was an asshole. So she began plotting her revenge. It started with her non-stop watching him. Creepily and insistently almost constantly. When Chell wasn't eating or sleeping she was watching Kevin. She would sit at the end of his bed and watch him. She would follow him into the kitchen. Weeks of watching apparently taught her two things. Kevin was incredibly ridiculously fussy about everything, despising being unclean, or around unclean things and Kevin was not very observant when he was absorbed in something. So she taught our other cat Peen to steal his sandwiches whilst he played video games and together they would neatly assemble the sandwich into its parts usually, bread, cheese, ham, lettuce, bread and eat a little from each pile. Then when he grew wise too, that she moved to phase 2. She would get up extra early in the morning, get in the shower and cheat in the corner. Kevin was always the first one up and had to shower twice a day. She would make sure that every time he used the shower she had cheat in it. When we locked the bathroom door, unless someone was in there she stepped it up. She would wait until he opened the door and gone to get a towel sneak in and cheat in the corner in the few minutes he was away. When he started closing the door, whenever all the time she went to her final phase. 
First she waited until me and Kevin wear out the flat and she would sneak into his bed, pull up his duvet and then pull it back. When he started checking the duvet she shat under his pillows. To round it all off Chell was notoriously not okay with visitors. She would attack strangers unless I introduced them to her and then she was just twitchy and would only attack if they harassed her or got too close. So she would act like she was okay with Kevin's guests and then freak out mid-visit. Kevin was not great to me for months before she began her campaign of terror. By the end he couldn't stand being around her and suddenly moved out while I had her with me elsewhere one night. Sneaky, yes which I suppose shows a certain amount of thought. One of my cats. She wasn't much of a hunter but always wanted to impress. She would bring in socks crisp packets, leaves, anything she could find in the neighbor's garden, and bring it home to me, dead proud, tail in the air, snug in the satisfaction, catisfaction, of a job well done feeding her human. I would praise her of course, she made the effort and at least it wasn't anything messy. Until one day, I was just gazing out into the garden, watching her as she was in her full stealthy hunter pose hiding by some bushes. She was watching the neighbor's cat who was after some birds. The neighbor's cat caught the bird, upon which my cat sprang out, cuffed the neighbor's cat around the head, grabbed the bird and ran off. A moment later I heard the crash of the Venetian blinds in the kitchen, I left the window open for her to come and go, and the sound of frantic, excited meowing. I went to see what was up and there she was, as proud as punch, tail bolt upright, and twitching at the tip. Look what I caught. And the same bird on the floor. Another cat of mine used to like stealing food, in particular bacon, fish, sausages and so on. His trick was that he could steal the bacon from a toasty, but still leave the two pieces of toast on top of each other. I never actually caught him in the act, just that I'd make myself a nice toasty, turn my back for a moment, then see the cat doing a runner with something in his gob, and two pieces of toast placed perfectly on top of each other. I think I posted this before but it's relevant. My dog Rusty is a big idiot most of the time, but we rescued him from the pound, so we've always kind of thought he was special and meant to be a part of our family. One weekend, I was home alone with Rusty and my brother's unruly dog Dixie. Dixie was a black German shepherd who loved to jump the backyard fence and run around our neighborhood before coming back and pawing at the front door to let us know she had returned. So I'm sitting on the couch and Rusty comes around to the back window and just stares at me. He was known to do this sometimes for treats, but he was doing this thing where he would stand at the window and run to the side yard and then run back to the window. Kind of like he was trying to show me something. So I get up and look outside and notice that Dixie isn't around. I wasn't shocked because she liked to escape, but it worried me that Rusty seemed concerned. I went out back and around to the side yard and saw that she was indeed gone. Now normally she'd show up on the front porch, but I didn't see her anywhere. She had actually run further down into the cul-de-sac where it backed up to open hills, meaning she could have easily gotten herself lost or gotten into an altercation with another animal. We had coyotes and mountain lions in the hills frequently. I basically had to haul Myers down to the cul-de-sac as fast as possible and make a fool of myself to get her attention as she had, indeed, made her way into the hills. I could see her but just barely. Luckily she came running back, but I was always astounded by how well Rusty seemed to communicate that something was wrong. My childhood golden retriever saved my mom and little sister's life. At around 1am my dog started barking a lot. He usually only barked when he had to go to the bathroom, and it was usually one bark every 3-5 minutes until we took him out. But that night it was constant and loud. So my mother got up and went downstairs to check on him, and when she got downstairs she started to notice the smoke. Apparently right before my mom went to bed she put her laundry in the dryer and the boiler, right next to the washer slash dryer, picked up some lint, and started a fire in the basement. It only got to 30% of the basement by the time my mom noticed so lucky the house didn't burn down. But my mom was able to call 9 double one and get her, my little sister and Hudson, the good boy, out. Hudson usually slept in the living room on the first floor, washer slash dryer was in the basement and my mom and sister's room was on the second floor. 
If he didn't wake her up she wouldn't have noticed the fire till it had reached the second floor and would have been too late. He passed away at the age of 13 and he was the best dog ever. Our dog Gabe was a really smart terrier mix and we knew this, but even so, he surprised us sometimes to the point of being a bit weirded out. We lived in an apartment for a while and Gabe would let us know when he had to go out. My husband being a smartest would say teasingly I can't go out without shoes, bring me my shoes if you want to go out. He never gestured at the shoes or made any attempt to show Gabe how to do this. He just said it to be a smartass and procrastinate on taking the dog out. Well after a few months of this, Gabe asked to go out and got the same response. Well go get my shoes. So Gabe turns around and walks over to the mountain of shoes, grabs a sneaker and drops it at my husband's feet. We all chuckle in surprise and husband says well one is no good, go get the other one. So Gabe goes back to Shoe Mountain, digs out the matching sneaker, and drops it next to the first. Then looks at husband, like they you happy. Let's go already. Couldn't argue with that, so he got up, and took him out. Next day Gabe came to me, and asked to go out so, just for fun I said well go get my shoes. He went and got me a matching pair of my shoes. Creepy. My parents put our dog's bed in the office whenever she'll have to be home alone. A bit of background, we can't leave her out in the backyard she's a rescue and was found on the streets, so the idea of being shut out scares her or the family room because it's carpeted and she's had a few accidents which are a pain in the ass to clean up on carpet. We decided to start putting her in the office. It has hardwood floors, so cleaning up would be much easier if she had her accident, and it has a big window that she can look out and watch the car go by, so she doesn't feel boxed in. Anyways, she eventually figured out that putting her bed in the office equal being home alone. She really doesn't like this, and she'll resist when we try to move her in the office. Like, she'll dip her nails into the couch and won't move if we tell her to my mom even said she's had to literally drag her a couple of times. Just being painfully stubborn in general. I don't know if she thinks resisting will make someone stay, but she doesn't understand the concept of having to go to work slash school slash running errands. But we'd love to be with her if we could. TLDR. My smart dog figured out that moving her bed into the office meant she was gonna be alone, so she used it to her advantage and won't go in the office and thinks it makes it us stay. I'm not sure if this counts, but I will go. Growing up, we raised Bavias. Not all at once, but we would have one or two at a time. The very first one Duffy had an amazing personality, for better or worse, and was gargantuan, like 150 number. Perhaps not creepily but definitely funny intelligent think was that he loved ice cream. Which trust me, is not always the best thing for a dog, but he loved it. So after a couple family birthdays he came to realize that the happy birthday song meant he would get ice cream and he would go insane. So after that you could mess with him, and being 13 with my buddies, of course we'd have to just start humming the song simply, to see him start jumping and dancing. It reached a point, that after a while we had to put him on the porch for real birthdays, but as we sang the song we'd hear the thump each time his body hit the floor and the emergence of his face in the window each time he jumped up. It was damn funny. He was also an alcoholic. My dad would pour a scotch, and walk away, and notice it was empty. For a while he thought he himself was the alcoholic and didn't recognize how much he was drinking until he saw the dog dead drunk knocking over furniture, then passed out in a corner and finally hung over as hell the next day. He also ate my dad's cigar once. Maybe it went well with the scotch. His best friend was also a cat who would sit between his front legs as he licked its head. For hours. Best alcoholic, obese, drunk, diabetic, dog ever. My childhood cat, Moon, loved the shower. Absolutely adored it. When you turned it on he would run in first and sit near the spray and just look so damn happy. Then when you'd get out of the shower he'd go back in and lick the water off the wall. Never before the shower, always after. It was strange, but that was Moon. Anyway, 
he figured out what time I needed to get up to go to school, and he'd pull my hair until I got up, and then he'd run to the bathroom, sit on the toilet, and meow until I turned the shower on. This worked fine for him until summer break came around. He'd try to get me up at the usual time and I'd refuse, so he'd go into the bathroom and yell. When this didn't get the desired result, he'd hop into the sink, open the cabinet, where I kept my Mac Yoop, and slowly and deliberately knock one item onto the floor. Then he'd wait, meow, and if I still hadn't gotten up, do it again. Lather, rinse, repeat. One summer I guess he got tired of this game, so he somehow figured out how to turn on the shower by himself. You'd hear it turn on by itself in the middle of the night, and there was moon basking in the spray of the water. We finally just let one of the showers constantly drip, so he could sit and do whatever he did as much as he wanted. He was ridiculously happy for the rest of his life. I miss that magnificent bastard. The kicker though, I adopted a kitten of my own and Moon taught her about the shower routine before he died. So I had two wet cats for about a year. Except Navi is a massive idiot and she forgot it after he died, so there's no more hilarious shower hijinks. Now she just sits there and pokes my shoulder when I'm taking a bath. My previous dog was a shepherd mix and smart and floppy happy. One day I was doing yard work and had the outside door locked, but the door to the sun porch opened so my animals could hang out and watch. My dog kept getting out somehow. I went in and made sure the door was closed and even locked it with the deadbolt. Then I went outside, waved at him, and watched from the side. The faker learned to unlock the deadbolt and open the door with his paws and teeth. He also learned names for each of his toys and retrieved whichever I would ask for. Oh and he figured out how to get on our counter and into the cabinets to steal food. That was annoying. Currently I have two dogs, another shepherd mix and a staffy slash pitbull. My shepherd has allergies and has to take meds twice a day. I will hide his pill in all kinds of foods, but he has learned to eat around the pill and spit it out. I don't understand how. He will also take all the toys and sleep on them so my other doggo gets nothing to play with. Our pity is a smart little girl though. She will bark at the window to make him get up and investigate, and then she will take what he had, whether it be his spot in the couch or a toy. One time the neighbors behind us kept telling her to get her parents. She kept running back and forth from us to the deck trying to get us to follow her. We did and scored some pumpkin wontons. Thanks kid. She also freaks out about the fire alarm and will wake us up or cling to us. I'm convinced she's going to save our lives one day. She's so sensitive and lets us know if something is off. My furry dirty kids are just the best.